What's up, guys? It's yo boy on the sensei back with Reborn as Jitsaya Shiba in DXD. Part 5. If you enjoy my content, consider subscribing to the channel. Like the video, share, and leave a comment. This really helps with the algorithm. Remember to check out the author of this fantastic fanfic. Link in the description. Also, I have set up a Patreon account, consider joining to support the channel. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. The whole room was completely silent everyone in the room even Tetsaya's group was scared of the look in Tetsaya's eyes. Tetsaya who noticed it reduced a coldness in his expression but was still glaring at Zenovia. After he relaxed his expression a bit all of them feel a bit relaxed as well. Zenovia now also glared back at Tetsaya and said, why are you siding with the witch? Tetsaya got angrier and said, what right do you have to call her a witch? If she isn't a witch then what is she? For a person referred to as saint, to side with the devils. She even has the powers to heal devils and fallen angels. Oh then what about you, do you mean to say that your oh so great holy sword can't hurt a person who is a follower of God? At this Zenovia gritted her teeth and then said, that's not what I mean to say, what I meant was that she used her powers to heal a devil while she was a saint. It was not her fault that she healed an injured person that came in front of the church she was staying in. The higher ups from your church has never taught her about how to differentiate between races. And just tell me, how can a devil enter the headquarters of the church, and you exorcists just let them roam freely? In my opinion all the fault lies with you exorcists who allowed a devil to get away, and instead of accepting your faults, you all just banished her from the church. Not even a single one from your pathetic bunch came forward to help her. Zenovia got agitated when she was called pathetic and said, she was a saint, she don't need help from anyone, she don't need any friends. She can just live on her faith in God. If she just wanted friends then she should have never become a saint in the first place. Tetsaya's glare intensified and he said, Oh, so now you are saying that saying that she don't need help because she was a saint. Looks like you are misunderstanding something here. Asia never asked to become a saint, she was made a saint, and do you know why? Because the higher ups of your pathetic bunch didn't want to let go of her after seeing their ability. They gave her the title of the saint not because they thought that she was blessed by God. They gave it so that they can get hold of her. Zenovia gritted her teeth and said, she have suffered because her faith in God of fake and must be banished because of the same reason. Oh now you say because her faith in God was fake, then why did you people labeled someone whose faith was fake as a saint? Zenovia was then left speechless. She didn't had any way to retort to him and just stayed silent. Tetsaya who saw that smirked and said, and even if I say that I believe you that her faith was fake, do you think that the church will take claim of you, if I report that two of the church officials and holy sword wielders at that were found in a devil territory without any prior permission? Because seeing that the church only sent two people to claim their precious holy swords, I can only guess that they sent you to not be in any kind of suspicion. Hearing that Zenovia gritted her teeth and said, there is no way that the church would do something like that. Tetsaya smirked again and said, do you think that a person who is capable of stealing the holy sword from right under the nose of the church would be someone weak to be dealt by only two people of your level? It's obvious that they don't want to take any risks and send you here on a do-or-die mission. They must have said some crap like, only an Excalibur can fight against an Excalibur, or even if you are not able to retrieve the sword, make sure to destroy them so that they are not left in the hands of devils and fallen, right? Zenovia was shocked on hearing what Tetsaya said as these were the same words that the church officials said to them before sending them on the mission. Tetsaya who saw her remain silent said, looks like I was correct, the church indeed said those words. Honestly how pathetic of you to actually believe in them and take this kind of mission. The church dare to call of a good and pure person like Asia a witch, when the people who are having the authority there are monsters. Zenovia was now very angry and pointed her huge sword which was still covered in bandages at Tetsaya and said, you, just what are you to Asia? Tetsaya put a hand around Asia's waist and pulled her close to him making her blush and said, I her friend, her family, and the one who is going to protect her from the church and people like them who are taking advantage of her kindness. Just lay a hand on her and see how I fuck you up. As he finished that the girls from Tetsaya's group said, you do look cool, but you forgot the I am the one who will marry her in future part. Tetsaya looked back at them and said, that was not needed here, and then looked back at Zenovia and said, yeah, and what they just said now as well. I will be marrying her in future. At that moment Tetsaya could feel Arena releasing killing intent at him, but he ignored her. Zenovia who was still glaring at Tetsaya said, are your words directed only to us or you are making a declaration against the whole church? She then smirked thinking that Tetsaya will feel scared. 
But opposite to her expectations Tatsaya simply smiled and said, This is neither directed to you or the church, it is directed to the whole world, and don't think that I am just feigning it. If I were to get serious believe me none of the so-called factions will be in existence. He said the last part in a cold voice making all of them shudder in fear, except for Asia who was in a pure bliss while being in Tatsaya's embrace. Zenovia then looked at Gremory and said, How can you let a mad person like him live in your territory? Tatsaya chuckled making Zenovia glare at him and then said, You seem to not know this, so I will tell you. It is not Gremory who is letting me live in her territory, it is me who is allowing her and the Citri heiresses to live and supervise the town in my stead. At the sudden information both Zenovia and Arena were shocked. Tatsaya then said, You know I was willing to let you do your work in the town, but now I think I should just report you and let you get banished from the church. And gave a sincere smile full of amusement. But to Zenovia and Arena his smile looked very dangerous. If it was before they couldn't have thought that the church could banish them, but after hearing Tatsaya's reasoning, they thought that there was a possibility of getting banished. Tatsaya who was looking at Zenovia with a confused expression, suddenly felt a tug on his clothes and turned his head to see who was asking for his attention. When he turned his head he saw Asia who was still in his embrace looking up at him. Tatsaya forgot all about the argument that he was having with the exorcists and hugged her tightly and said, Oh, Asia you look so cut. Just when Tatsaya hugged her, Asia's blush deepened and then fumes started to one out of her when he called her cute. Asia then compassed herself and said, Don't report them and get them banished, it will hurt someone who have faith in God, a lot. I know this from experience, it feels very bad to be asked to stay away from the only thing that you have been taught for your whole life. Miyuki then came closer to him and said, and even though I don't like her, she is still a friend I guess, while pointing at Arena. You won't want her to go through trouble right? Hearing both of them Tatsaya sighed and then said, just go and do what you want, but remember this, you even try to harm someone close to me, you will live a life that will make dying look pale in comparison. Hearing that both Arena and Zenovia looked at Tatsaya and said, thanks a lot. Zenovia then looked up and said, but the conditions are still the same, don't interfere or we will kill you. Tatsaya and his group snorted at her and said at the said time, like you ever could. Hearing them Zenovia gritted her teeth but controlled herself and said, we should be taking our leave then. Arena then came near Tatsaya and hugged him and said, sorry for all this trouble. Tatsaya hugged her back and said, it's okay the church has just made both of you narrow-minded. Arena then separated herself and pinched Tatsaya's waist and then said, don't badmouth the church, I will not forgive you, even if you are the person I like. Suddenly Arena remembered something and asked, by the way I just heard earlier that you are going to marry Asia-san, Tatsaya just said, yeah, Arena continued to smile and said, then what about Miyuki, are you not going to marry her? This time Miyuki came forward and said, did you hit somewhere or what? Of course Ani Isama will marry me. Arena then looked at Tatsaya and said, how many girls are there that you are going to marry? The girls from Tatsaya's group then said, about 20 for now and the numbers are still growing. Tatsaya looked at the girls and twitched his lips. Arena who heard that was shocked and said, you have become way too corrupted Tatsaya. For all the time I left you here alone you became a bad person. Seeing her dreadful expression Miyuki smirked and said, oh just so you know, Ani Isama and I did the things that husband and wife do after marriage. Hearing that Arena snapped and said, unforgivable, unforgivable, you come out right now, I will purify you with my holy sword while pointing at Miyuki. Who just laughed and seeing her expression. Seeing them Zenovia said, Arena just leave them, we have more important things to do. Arena glared at Zenovia and said, Zenovia, right now this is the task of utmost priority. Zenovia sighed and said, seriously you want to fight them. Kiba who saw that there was a chance to fight against the Excaliburs came forward and said, why not I take you up on the challenge. With his killing intent fully set into the Excaliburs. Zenovia looked at Kiba and said, who are you? Kiba just smirked and said, you're senpai. Right now all the people who were inside the orc club were outside in between a forest for the unofficial duel against the two exorcists. On one side were Arena and Zenovia with their cloaks still on and on the other were Miyuki and Kiba, with Miyuki smiling and Kiba radiating his killing intent. Riaz and Akeno looked at the situation in front of them with a worried look on their faces and asked, is it alright to have a duel against the church exorcists? Won't there be any serious circumstances later? Tatsaya looked at them and said, don't worry there would be no problems as I said earlier the church is ready to get rid of them the moment they are caught by the higher ups. The ones who are in a bind are them, not us. Hearing him both of them relaxed a bit and then looked back on the four standing in the middle. Zenovia looked at the group in front of her and said, now then shall we begin. And both Arena and Zenovia removed their cloaks and revealed to be wearing skin tight clothes which looked anything but holy at all. Tatsaya looked at both of them intently and then said, looks like the church is earning extra money from some unholy ways as well. 
Miyuki looked at Arena and then said, is that your uniform as an exorcist? Arena smiled and said, why yes. You must be enchanted by the holy me, right? Miyuki smirked and said, yeah you are looking so holy that if you walk in the neighborhood wearing this the men will assault you just to get you holy radiance. Arena who heard her was confused and seeing that Asami said, she is saying that you look like someone who works in adult videos. Hearing that Arena became red and said, you, you dare make fun of such holy clothing? Zenovia let's beat them real quick. And both Zenovia and Arena brought out their swords. Zenovia holding a huge sword in both her hands and Arena holding a katana. Seeing the holy swords Kiba started to laugh maniacally and said, finally, I finally got the chance to destroy these swords. And then formed a lot of swords around him, and seeing that Zenovia started to say her knowledge about the holy sword project. Miyuki ignored her and also brought out her sword and said, don't worry I will try to not freeze you to death. But just as she said that Tetsuya said, Miyuki no magic allowed, it will be too unfair. Hearing that Miyuki looked at Tetsuya with a pout on her face and said, you are too stingy on Isama. Well whatever. He church slut you just got saved from being skewered by an ice spike, do remember to thank Ani Isama. Arena looked at Miyuki and said, oh please like you can do that. Tetsuya looked at Arena and said, don't underestimate her Arena she has made a girl run around a mansion, barely dodging the spikes while being completely naked. You could have been her next victim. Just when Tetsuya mentioned that Ria's shuddered and said, that was one of the worst experiences that I ever had, and I definitely don't want to go through that again. Arena then looked at Miyuki and said, I will definitely purify you with my holy sword. Amen and jumped at Miyuki. Miyuki smirked and said, let's get this over with, and then immediately vanished from her spot making Ria's and her peerage, except Asami, and the exorcists got surprised when when she vanished. Arena was looking around trying to find Miyuki, but suddenly she heard, where are you looking at? And her body got stiff. All of them looked at the scene in front of them with S-U-R-P-R-I-S-E except for Tetsuya and his group and Asami. Miyuki was pointing her sword at Arena's neck and said, throw your sword away and yield. Arena gritted her teeth and said, I yield and threw her sword away. Miyuki smiled and then hit Arena with a fist, only to make her suffer some pain. Arena who was thrown away said, hey what was that for? I already gave up. Miyuki just smiled and said, oh, my hands were just itching for a while. Arena grumbled in pain, but Tetsuya used his magic to heal her and then lifted her up. He then picked her sword and said, here you go and gave it back. Arena took her sword back and looked at Tetsuya and said, thank you Tetsuya just smiled and said, no problems, Miyuki then came towards Tetsuya and said, Ani-sama how did I do? Tetsuya bonked her head and said, you overdid it. Miyuki looked at Tetsuya with a point and said, Ani-sama mini. Tetsuya smiled looking at her pout and then patted her head, alright alright, you did well. But don't defeat someone so easily, this can shatter their confidence. Only do a one side annihilate when you want to crumble the enemies to dust. Show no mercy to those kind of opponents. Shatter their pride, break their bones. And if someone sexually harries you then crush their balls. Miyuki smiled brightly while being in bliss on being patted and said, yes, Ani sama everyone around them were looking the sibling pair with a weird look in their eyes and thought, how can they such things with a smile on their faces. Meanwhile on the other side, Kiba was having a tough time against Zenovia. Even though his body has become strong and durable because of Tetsuya's training, he was still a devil and a major disadvantage against the holy sword. Kiba looked at Zenovia with an angry expression and said, let's see which destruction sword is better, your holy or my devil, and formed a huge sword and rushed towards Zenovia. Zenovia looked at Kiba with calm expression and said, you lost the one thing that was great about you, she then swung her sword and shattered the sword that Kiba was holding and said, your speed. And then hit Kiba's gut with a bit of force, just to make him give up the match. Kiba then fell on the ground and clutched his stomach. Zenovia then looked at Tetsuya and said, wanna have a go against my sword or are you scared now? And smirked after taunting him. Tetsuya looked at others and said, do any of you want to fight or is it okay for me to defeat her? This made Zenovia glare at Tetsuya, but he just ignored her. The rest of Tetsuya's group just motioned to go and said, just defeat her and get this over with. It's already getting late. Tetsuya nodded and then went towards the field and stood in front of Zenovia. Zenovia glared at him and said, I will show you the power of my Excalibur destruction. Tetsuya looked at her seriously and then said, okay then I will show you the power of my personal, he then paused making all of them look at him intently. Tetsuya noticing their gazes smirked and then said, spoon and took out a spoon from his storage, making all of the people fall down dramatically. Zenovia then stood up and said, are you here to joke with me? Tetsuya just smiled and said, no no I am not joking at all. Look here my name is also carved on this spoon. This really is mine. Zenovia became more pissed and said, don't look down on me and then jumped at Tetsuya. 
Tetsuya just sighed and said, starting the match with such a huge blunder. Sai I am very disappointed. He then took a casual stance and said, well whatever here goes nothing. Zenovia who was reaching close to Tetsuya said, are you giving up already? Sorry but it's too late now you will not get away from my sword. Tetsuya looked at her with a deadpan expression and thought, bitch please I can make you blow away with my sneeze. Tetsuya then moved his hand to the side. Zenovia, whose attack was about to hit him smirked, but just when the sword was a hand's length away from Tetsuya, he swung his spoon making contact with the sword and said, full counter lazily. Immediately Zenovia was thrown away with a lot of force crashing through a lot of trees. All of them except for Tetsuya's team were shocked by the sudden display and were awestruck. Tetsuya then said, now you should always remember this, never mess with a person who have a spoon in the hand. And put his spoon back in his storage. All of them looked at him with a deadpan expression. Tetsuya looked at them and said, what? Hearing that all of them twitched their lips but didn't said anything. Miyuki then said, Ani-sama what about not doing total annihilation that you just told me about? Tetsuya looked at Miyuki for a while and then said, just consider it an exception. Miyuki and the others looked at him with an expression which said, really? Tetsuya looked back at them with an expression which seemed to say, do you think that I give a damn fuck to what you think? Seeing his expression everyone was twitching their lips but were brought out of it when Arena said, don't you think that we should take her out of that rubble of trees before she die of suffocation? All of them looked at the trees and saw a hand coming out of the logs. Tetsuya then said, you still alive Zenovia? And the hand twitched a bit. Tetsuya then looked at others at D said, you should hoe and help your friend. She can die there. All of them looked at him and said unanimously, who do you think is responsible for this? After Zenovia was taken out of the rubble Tetsuya used his magic to heal her, and after a bit she stood up and lifted her Excalibur, and wrapped it in the bandages. She the looked at others and said, thank you for taking your time and help us. She then looked at Tetsuya and said, and I will beat you the next time. Tetsuya just smiled and said, sure, next time I will use a fork. Zenovia gritted her teeth but remained silent. She then put on her cloak and then looked at Arena and said, let's get going Arena. Arena nodded her head and looked at others and said, well then see you again, amen. As they were leaving Tetsuya looked at them with a serious expression and said, I guess that you both have already been told this, but you do know that you are up against a cadre, right? Making all of them shocked. Both of them stopped in their tracks and looked at Tetsuya and asked, how do you know that? Tetsuya just shrugged his shoulders and said, don't forget that it is my territory I at least know that if there are some major events going on in the town or not. Hearing his answer Zenovia thought that it was justifiable, and Zenovia nodded and said, yes, we are already mentally prepared for what we are going to face. So don't interfere. Rias who was listening to their conversation curiously asked, that means both of you do know who was the one who stole the swords, right? Zenovia looked at Rias and said, it was one of the leaders of Grigori, Kakabiel. Hearing his name all of them except Tetsuya were shocked. Rias now understood why Tetsuya asked that question and said, are you really prepared to fight a cadre, we can cooperate if we want to deal with him. Tetsuya looked at her and thought, even if all the supernaturals of the school except for me and my team group together then two Kakabiel can defeat them easily. Zenovia shook her head and said, no we can handle our problems on our own. Miyuki looked at Arena and said, I already knew that you were stupid, but do really have to prove that by taking on this death mission. Arena looked at Miyuki and just showed a helpless smile and said, don't worry I came here only after being prepared to deal with what we are going to. Miyuki who was not satisfied with her answer asked, does Taoji-san and Grace-san know that you have taken this mission? At this question Arena became silent and looked away. Both Tetsuya and Miyuki looked at Arena, and Tetsuya said, do you not really feel anything on taking this mission without even telling them? Arena just became more depressed on hearing that. She then looked at both of them and said, it doesn't matter, they would be happy if I completed this mission and come a step closer to God. Tetsuya narrowed his eyes and said, and what about if you are unable to fulfill this mission, what will happen then? What if you die on this mission? Arena who was looking away said, then I will die while doing something that the God wishes. Tetsuya got angry by her answer and was about to say something. But before he was able to Miyuki walked towards Arena and slapped her and said, did this open your eyes a bit? Miyuki then grabbed her shoulders and said, do you really believe that both of them will be happy on hearing about your death, even if it was for your god? Arena teared up a bit and then freed herself from Miyuki's hold and looked at Zenovia and said, let's go. And both of them walked away. All of them looked at both of them go, and then Kiba also stood and was about to follow them. But Tetsuya stopped him and said, are you really set on your path or are you going to follow the way we talked about yesterday? Kiba looked at him with a conflicted expression and said, I don't know, I cannot decide right now. At one time I think that what you were saying is the correct way, but whenever I see think of those swords I think that what I am doing is correct. 
he said and then left the group behind. Seeing that Kiba was leaving without telling them, Riaz was about to stop him, but Tatsuya held her off by raising his hand and said, let him cool off a bit. His mind is in a mess right now. Riaz then sighed and complied with what Tatsuya told her, and then left with her peerage. Tatsuya then looked at his group and said, you all go back first, there is something that I need to discuss with Sona. All of them nodded their heads silently and started walking back except for Miyuki who remained standing. Tatsuya went towards her and hugged her and said, don't worry, everything will be fine. I won't let anything happen to her even if I don't like to meddle this much. Miyuki slowly nodded her head and then snuggled closer to him while he just silently caressed her back. Soon she separated herself from Tatsuya and said, if you really want to help her then do it, but just so you know I don't care about her. Tatsuya just sighed and said, you know it's bad to not tell your real feelings, Miyuki. Miyuki looked away and said, I don't know what you are talking about, and then started walking back home. Tatsuya looked at their direction for a while, and then looked at the setting sun and said, looks like I am getting my hands dirty in this case, and stretched Hua body. He then took out his phone and called Sona, Sona, it's me Tatsuya. You see there are some important matters that I need to discuss with you so, are you free right now great, we'll meet you in the student council room in a bit. Tatsuya then put his phone back and then started walking towards the student council room. After walking for a while he reached the student council room and knocked on the door and entered before the people inside could have replied. Once inside Tatsuya saw Sona and Tsubaki in the room, and Tsubaki came towards Tatsuya and gave him a peck on the lips and said, liked it? Tatsuya just smiled and gave her a peck as well and said, very. Sona looked at both of them with annoyed gaze and said, Tatsuya don't you have manners to not enter a room till someone says you to. What would you have done if either of us were changing their clothes? Tatsuya looked at her with a serious expression and said, then I would have taken responsibility for you and would have married you in future. At this Sona blushed and looked away and said, how can you say that with a straight face? Tatsuya just walked towards her and whispered in her ear, because I am serious about it. Hearing her whisper Sona shuddered and looked at him, but just as she turned Tatsuya kissed her on the lips, making her blush deeper. Tatsuya looked at the blushing Sona and said, you look very cute when you feel embarrassed, so tan. Sona who heard the nickname was red to her ears and covered her face with her hands. Seeing that both Tatsuya and Tsubaki laughed, but after a while Tatsuya said, well keeping that aside, I have something to discuss with you, and this matter is quite serious. Hearing him both Tsubaki and Sona became serious, and Sona looked at Tatsuya and shifted her glasses and said, is it related to those church people that came to the town recently? Tatsuya nodded and said, yeah. And then started explaining them about why those two came to the town. After Tatsuya was done telling them about the purpose of the exorcists. Sona started to think and said, this can turn into a major problem. Tatsuya nodded his head and said, it has already become, just think about this. The fallen stole church's holy swords and are now in a territory which belongs to the two devil heiresses, who are also sisters of Amayu. What do you think will happen if the situation takes turn for worse? Sona and Tsubaki's expression turned grim, and Sona said, it might lead to a new war among the three factions. Tatsuya nodded and said, yeah it most likely will, and I think that's what the Fallen are aiming for. Sona nodded her head and said, but if their plan is to start a war from the beginning, then it would be correct to say that they have already gathered an army of sorts to initiate their plan. Tatsuya looked at her and gave a small smile and said, not having one will be nothing but plain stupid dot or the person we are going to face must be quite a powerhouse. Sona then began thinking and asked, what do you think that we should do about this? Tatsuya looked at her and said, we should start by informing the leaders of the three factions first to prevent any major dispute in future. But we have a problem there as well. Most likely this mission is carried out by the church without the instructions of the heaven. So we cannot contact heaven. Sona became slightly worried, but soon calmed herself down. She then massaged her temples and said, let's leave it for now. How are we going to inform the other two? I can inform my sister, even though I don't want to, but I understand the importance of this mission. Now how are we going to contact the leader of the fallen angels? Tatsuya patted his chest and said, leave that to me. He then took out his phone and called Azazel. Soon his phone was picked up and hello Azazel here ahhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhh
Seraphil looked at Sona and got happy and said, My Sotan finally called me on her own. What is it? Did something happen to you? Or you have realized your feelings of love for one each chan and want to do ecky things together? But sorry so tan you are too late now, I do love you, but I have decided to do those things with Tetsaya chan now. But don't you worry so tan I will ask Tetsaya chan to let us do those things with him together, and while we are at it, you can fulfill your fantasies of having fun with me as well. Tetsaya and Tsubaki who were out of sight of Seraphil, were clutching their mouths, and were trying very hard to not let their voice leak out from laughing. Sona who heard her sister was totally embarrassed and covered her face with her hand and said, Wani sama it's nothing like that. What I want to discuss with you is a very serious matter. So Tetsaya and I decided to discuss it with you. Seraphil who heard Tetsaya's name got surprised and asked, Tetsaya Cha is there as well. Tetsaya then came in her side and said, Hey Sarah, how are you doing? I hope that you are fine. Seraphil smiled brightly and said, Hello Tetsaya Chan, I am totally fine. I am a magical girl after all. How have you been? Tetsaya smiled and said, I am fine as well, thanks for asking. Seraphil nodded and said, so what is it that Sotan said that you want to discuss with me? Hearing that Tetsaya became serious and so did Sona. Tetsaya then said, how should I put this? Hearing his tone Sona looked at him and thought, the matter is very serious. Even Tetsaya is finding it difficult to explain the situation to them, as they have entered a devil territory without any permission. Tetsaya then looked directly into Seraphil's eyes and said, Sarah, I think that this information will be too surprising, but try not to freak out too much. Sona nodded and thought, yeah it might be too much for her, as it involves a possibility of leading to another great war. Tetsaya then sighed and said, apparently Sona is pregnant with my child. Sona nodded and said, yeah Wani Samawa what the hell did you just say? While she looked at Tetsaya with a deep red blush on her face. Seraphol blanked out for a while when she heard what Tetsaya said. Sona looked at the projection in front of her and saw a lifeless Seraphol there. She looked at her with worry and said, no, Wani Sama what Tetsaya said is not true, we haven't done anything, just as she was about to continue, Seraphol snapped out of her stupor and said, why did Sotan gets to have sex before me? Sona looked at Seraphol and shouted, you were worried about that, not that I did it, but because I did it before you. Seraphol looked at Sona and shouted, of course, I have to maintain my dignity as the older sister by either doing it before you or doing it together with you. Tsubaki then shifted her glasses and her glasses were reflecting the light falling on them, making them shine and then said, and of course I as a queen, have to make sure whether what you would be doing will be safe for you or not, and have to test it before you. After all it's my duty. Sona and Seraphil, projection, looked at Tsubaki and shouted together, duty my ass, and then the argument among the three girls started. Meanwhile Tetsaya who was looking at the three of them thought, I should not have have said that, well, whatever this is interesting as well. He then sat on the sofa in a relaxed position, and then took out popcorn from his storage, and then began enjoying the scene in front of him. After all three of them calmed down Tetsaya then discussed about the real problem with Seraphil, and Seraphil said that she would discuss with the other mass first. Tetsaya then left and went to Azazel's place to discuss the matter, and he said that he would send Vali to take care of Kakabiel, once he returns back from a mission. He and the other cadres could not come because after receiving this information, they now had to check the Grigori Thruli for spies and other traitors like Kakabiel. Tetsaya didn't say anything to him as he knew that it was important as checking the whole faction will take too much time, and they that was the thing they couldn't afford to lose at the moment. After completing all his work Tetsaya went to his home and discussed the matter what all he did with his team. While talking Ingvalds and Tetsaya's gaze fell on Asia who looked a bit troubled, and both decided to ask her later. After everything was over all of them decided to go back to bed, but Ingvald and Tetsaya looked at Asia and said, Asia, wait. At the same time. Both of them then looked at each other and said at the same time, you noticed it as well. And both of them then chuckled. Asia looked at both of them with a confused look, and both of them looked back at her with a smile, and Tetsaya said, let's go to my room first. Ingvald nodded and both of them held one of Asia's hand and pulled her towards Tetsaya's room. Once they were in Tetsaya's room both of them released Asia's hand and looked at her and asked, what were you thinking a while ago? Asia's face changed its expression for a bit, but then turned back to normal and said, what are you both talking about? I am completely fine. Tetsaya looked at her for a while and then flicked her forehead. Asia then touched her forehead and said, it hurts. She looked at Tetsaya and said, why did you do that? Tetsaya moved his hand and flicked her again. This time Asia had tears in her eyes, and Tetsaya said, does this bring you back any memories? Hearing that Asia stopped crying and then began remembering. She then said, oh I remember now, you flicked my forehead even the first time we met in Vatican. 
Tetsuya nodded and said, yeah we met each other then apologized, and I flicked your forehead then after all those mess when you finally decided to join my team. Tetsuya then looked at her in the eye and said, and at that time I promised that if you are in my team, you are my family, and I will not let you get hurt. But how am I going to help you if you don't tell me what is the problem? Hearing that Asia looked down feeling guilt and embarrassment and seeing that Ingvald placed her hand on her back and said, look we are here for each other, and no one will feel that you are bothering them in any way. If you have a problem then we can deal with it together. Asia then started to tear up and seeing that Tetsuya hug her and said, look Ingvald you made Asia cry. Ingvald looked at him and said, I didn't do anything to her. She must be crying because of your forehead flicks. Tetsuya then said, you should not put the blame on someone else for your mistake. Ingvald twitched her lips but decided to let that be. Soon Asia stopped crying and said, I am sorry for letting you see me like that and making you worried. Both of them shrugged their shoulders and said, it's fine, now tell us what is the problem. Asia nodded and said, you see the things that those exorcists said to me about me being a witch and me being expelled because of the lack of faith in God. Somehow those words make me think whether what were they saying was true or not. Is my faith really fake? Ingvald and Tetsaya looked at her and said, of course not, you are one of the few pure people that I know, how can your faith be fake? And let's just say that your faith is fake. But does it really matter? Hearing his question Asia looked at Tetsaya and said, what do you mean by that? Tetsaya said, just remember the times when you were in the church and healed someone what would they do after the treatment? Asia thought for a while and then said, they would usually thank me and smile at me. Tetsaya nodded and said, yes, and did you feel happy when they would thank you and smile at you? Asia again nodded her head, and Tetsaya said, then does it really matter whether your faith was fake or not? All those people were happy and smiling at you not the god and I think the work of a saint is to heal the injured and bring a smile on their faces and not having the greatest faith in god. Asia looked at him for a while and he smiled and seeing that Tetsaya and Ingvald smiled as well. Tetsaya then leaned closer to her and said, and if your faith was not fake, then how would you have been here with us? Asia just smiled and nodded her head. Seeing her face so close to Tetsaya Asia blushed and then looked down in embarrassment. Tetsaya smirked and said, what happened? Feeling embarrassed? Asia's face blush intensified when she heard what Tetsaya said. Tetsaya then smirked and said, well you asked me at the party to let you accompany me at the night, right? Let's do it. Asia who was taken aback by surprise looked up and was immediately pulled into a kiss by Tetsaya and whitened her eyes in surprise, but soon melted in the kiss. After a few minutes they still continued to make out and seeing both of them enjoying themselves for a while, Ingvald got annoyed. After she finally lost her patience she said, how ling are you both going to do that? I want a turn as well. And pulled Tetsaya away from Asia and smashed her lips on Tetsaya's. Asia who was in a momentary daze and had a flushed face because of the kiss, soon came out of her stupor. Tetsaya then grabbed Ingvald's breast and started to slowly fondle them, and seeing that Asia came closer to Tetsaya and pulled him away and started kissing him once again. Ingvald was moaning in pleasure and looked at Tetsaya and started to take his shirt off and blushed on seeing his body. Tetsaya who noticed her taking of his shirt, decided to do the same as well, and took both Asia's and Ingvald's clothes off leaving them only in their underwear. Tetsaya then made them lie down on the bed side by side, and then looked at them who blushing furiously. Seeing their embarrassed expression Tetsaya gulped his saliva and said, it's going to be a long night. And then used his magic to make a sound barrier around the room. He looked at both of them and said, ready? Both of them shyly nodded their heads and seeing the look on their faces, Tetsaya finally gave in to his urges and then started doing them. The next morning after waking up Tetsaya felt some weight on both of his arms. He turned his head and saw Asia and Ingvald sleeping on his arms with a peaceful expression on their faces. Tetsaya smiled as well and then gave a peck on their foreheads to each of them. He then used his psychic powers to lift their bodies a bit and then moved his hands away and then placed them back softly. He then went out of the room and did his daily workout and got refreshed after that. All of them then had their breakfast and then went to school. In the school Tetsaya could see that the atmosphere around the heiresses were quite tense. Rhea's worried about her night and Sona worried about the talk that they had yesterday. Tetsaya then sighed and said, things are pretty tense for all of us, I guess. Sigh which bastard decided to entrust the Excaliburs to the church. They could have simply kept them in heaven. This would have saved them from being stolen and all of this would not have happened. During the break Tetsaya and his group along with Asami were talking to each other and Asami then said, hey do you guys have any information about Kiba? I am starting to get worried a bit now. Tetsaya shook his head and said, I have not seen him since then. But I am planning something to do about both Kiba and the situation somehow. Tetsaya then noticed Saji walking by and then said, Saji, come here for a bit. 
Saji who heard Tatsaya's voice looked at him and immediately started running towards him with a trail of dust cloud rising behind him. He then stopped in front of Tatsaya and then gave a salute and said, You asked for me Tatsaya and Iki? All of them looked at him with a weird expression and then Tatsaya said, There is something that I want your help with. Are you free after school? Saji nodded his head and said, Yes Iniki I am free after the school is over today just tell me the location where I have to come. Tatsaya nodded and then said, Don't worry about that I will send it via text. Saji nodded and said, Yes Iniki. And then went back. All of them looked at Saji's back and Asami said, That dude sure is your lackey. Tatsaya just shrugged his shoulders and said, Well he treats me that way, I think of him as my friend. Let's go back to the class and Miyuki make sure to tell Kaneko to come as well. And tell her not to inform anyone about it, not even Ria's and Akeno. Same goes for you Asami. Asami nodded and said, Don't worry I will not tell a single soul about it. Tatsaya nodded, and then all of them went back to their classes. Later that day after the school was over all of them went to a cafe, and then waited for everyone to come. Once everyone was present. Tatsaya then said, Since everyone is here now, let's begin. The reason I called you all today is because of the recent events that have been taking place in the town, you all must have heard about them, right? All of them nodded and then Tatsaya said, since you all know about the situation, you all must also be knowing how critical the situation is. One wrong step and then a new war starts. We cannot take any reckless steps if the situation turns into a war. All of them then became serious and nodded their heads. Tatsaya nodded his head as well and said, so we should take as many reckless steps as we can before it turns into a war. He said that making all of them fall dramatically. Tatsaya then said, because without those reckless steps the war is inevitable. All of them turned serious again, and then Tatsaya said, What I am planning is to cooperate with the church and help them collect the Excaliburs before Kakabiel could do anything. All of them were shocked, but the ones who were shocked the most were the devils. Tatsaya nodded his head and said, I know that some of you are unwilling to cooperate with them, but it is the most efficient way for us to deal with the situation. Kagura who was confused by that asked, What do you mean by efficient? We have already enough people to search for those swords. Tatsaya shook his head and said, No we don't, because the ones who are going to search for them would be the devils, those exorcists and Kiba. You along with the others will be working on protecting the town. There may be an army of stray fallen and start exorcists in the town, and we need to deal with them, or there will be a lot of people who would be in danger because of them. All of them then nodded, and then Saji raised his hand and said, Tatsaya and Iki, not being rude, but why am I involved in this as well? Tatsaya looked at Saji and said, You were the only reliable person left in the school who can work with us, and didn't you listen, the only thing that we are lacking is numbers to search and deal with the enemies. Saji was a bit sad by his answer and slumped his shoulders. Tatsaya seeing that said, But it does not mean that you are not useful Saji. You said it yourself that you took four pawns to get reincarnated, so you must show them your true worth. Hearing that Saji became a bit spirited, but then he realized something and asked, but won't we get in trouble for taking such aggressive actions? There is also the case of President punishing me. Tatsaya snorted and said, there would be no problems, this is my territory after all. If they have guts to raise their voice and hand against me in my territory, then I will tore them away. And regarding your punishment that is none of my business just say something like I made you work for me by force or something, and you would be safe, with a whisper, I guess. Saji looked at him with a wary expression and said, Still, you are asking me too much. There is a chance of losing my life in the mission. Aniki, please show a bit mercy. Tatsaya nodded and said, Yeah I know that there is the possibility of dying in this mission, but think about it Saji. Tatsaya then placed his hand around his shoulder and then waved his other hand and said after placing a sound barrier around him and Saji, Once you successfully complete this mission, you will become famous among the devil society for resolving a matter of this importance. Fame, money are one thing many young female devils will also come close to you and would want to have your seed. Do you still want to let go of this opportunity? Saji looked at Tatsaya with year in his eyes and said, Aniki, I couldn't believe that you will think so much for me. I am touched, I will forever follow you. Forget me even the children that will be born from those devils. I will teach them to follow you as well. Don't worry I will make you a lot of followers, you just have to wait. Tatsaya looked at him and thought, just a small push and he liked this now. Sigh well whatever as long as he helps, I don't care whether he fucks a devil or Miltan. It is up to him. Meanwhile the girls who couldn't hear what Tatsaya was telling to Saji, looked at both of them, and Himari asked, what do you think that both of them are doing? Asami then started rubbing her chin and said, seeing how big of a devoted lackey he is, he must be asking Tatsaya to either fuck him or being fucked by him. All the girls looked at Asami and thought, really that's the first thing that comes to your mind? 
Miyuki suddenly turned serious and said, then let's cut his filthy prick and seal his ass before he is able to violate Ani Isama. All the girls except Asami looked at her and thought, and you actually believed her. Suddenly Saji who was talking to Tetsuya, felt a sudden chill pass through his body and thought, why do I have a feeling that something bad is going to happen to me? After it was decided what everyone will be doing Tetsuya said, well the first step is done now let's go and find those two exorcists. Tetsuya then looked at his group and said, all of you return back and start your preparations, we all have to start the operation tonight. All of them nodded leaving behind the devils and Tetsuya. Tetsuya then looked at the other three and said, well let's start searching for those two. All three of them nodded and the search for the exorcist started. They all started searching and while walking Asami asked, isn't it going to be difficult to find those two in the whole town? I mean even though they do stand out because of the robes that they wear, but still Asami was about to continue, but Tetsuya interrupted her and said, found them, and pointed his finger towards a direction. All of them looked where he was pointing and saw two white robe cladded people asking for money from others, while saying things like, blessings on the lost lamb, and we are pitiful compared to you, oh lord please have mercy on us. Tetsuya looked at Asami and said, you were saying something? Asami sighed and said, just forget it. Tetsuya and the others then walked towards the two of them, and then Tetsuya said, are you both even trying to find the swords? Both of them then looked at Tetsuya and were surprised to see him there. Zenovia then said, it's none of your business, how we do our mission. Now if you are done just leave already. Tetsuya smirked and said, oh, and here I thought that both of you were hungry and didn't have any money on you, and thought to give you a treat, but it seems like you both are trying to find the swords. You both are very diligent, I see. When they heard Tetsuya speaking about not having money, both of them felt a jolt pass through their bodies. They were happy when they heard that he was going to give them food, but when his sentence proceed both of them became stiff, and not had the will to ask for the food. Tetsuya looked at them and said, hey both of you if you have time then stop your lost lamb business for a bit. I need to discuss something with you. Hearing that Zenovia was about to agree, but Arena butted in and said, hey, how dare you talk about our lost lamb like that. It is considered a holy thing among us. Apologize to the lost lamb. Tetsuya just shrugged and said, see, I don't have that much time, like I said there is something that I need to discuss with you too, I am even willing to offer you food. Hearing that both of them were tempted, but before Zenovia could agree Arena said, there is no way now that I can take the food from you, after you have badmouthed the lost lamb. Tetsuya was a bit annoyed and said, come on just forget it, Arena shook her head and said, no we are not going. Tetsuya twitched his lips and said, looks like you haven't changed a lot since the last time we met. Still the stubborn personally I see. Then how about we make a bet? Tetsuya said that and smirked and looked at the two of them. Arena and Zenovia looked at him with a confused expression and said, what type of bet? Tetsuya just smiled and said, just like you are asking money in the name of Lost Lamb, I will do something like that as well, and let's see who can get more money out of the two of us. If you earn more, I will apologize. If I earn more than both of you are coming with me to talk. Hearing the deal Arena smirked and said, deal Tetsuya just smiled and said, I hope that you do not cry later. Tetsuya then took an echo with him and started discussing something with her. Soon both of them came back and Tetsuya said, we have one hour to see who wins. Both of them nodded and then Tetsuya said, the time starts now. Arena and Zenovia started their lost lamb stuff, and still people paid them no attention. Both of them started to get a bit depressed, but suddenly they saw everyone looking at them and were running towards them. Seeing that both of them got excited and Arena said, looks like they finally came to realize how great the lost lamb is, they kept looking at the crowd approaching them, but then something unexpected happened, and the crowd went past them and started gathering around Tetsuya. Both of them got surprised and decided to see what was happening, and somehow managed to cut through the crowd, and what they witnessed left their mouth open in shock. Tetsuya was standing along with Kaneko and held a banner which said, help the lost cat, and then Kaneko who was standing with her usual cold expression, put a pair of cat ears on her hand, and smiled a bit, and said while tilting her head to the side, please anion all the men who saw that held their chests tightly and shouted, don't worry we will help you. And started putting money in the basket placed in the front. Seeing the money pile up Tetsuya smirked and said, never underestimate the power of cats. They are very dangerous very very dangerous. He then looked at the church duo showed them a mocking smile. Both of them gritted their teeth, but now they knew that they lost their bet. Both of them sighed and looked at Kaneko who was now imitating a cat, and was showing to use her hands as paws. Tetsuya looked at the money which keep on piling up and thought, I should ask her to act as a mascot sometimes in the restaurant. After the hour was over Kaneko stopped acting and turned back to her cold expression. She then looked at Tetsuya and said, that was really tiring. Tetsuya looked at her who was still wearing cat ears, and immediately hugged her, and started rubbing her cheeks with his. 
Kaneko who saw that immediately blushed but didn't said anything. Tatsuya who was was enjoying the moment was suddenly pulled out of it when he heard, if you are done with that, I guess you have to discuss something with us. Tatsuya stopped rubbing the cheeks but was still holding Kaneko in his arms making her blush and said, yeah, let's go somewhere else and talk there. This is no place to discuss something important. He then lifted Kaneko up and started walking back. Seeing that all of them looked at him with a sweat drop but still followed them. Kaneko who was embarrassed by all the states that both her and Tetsuya were receiving asked, Senpai can you put me down? Tetsuya didn't even wait for a second and answered immediately, no Kaneko turned her head and looked at him and asked, and when will you put me down? Tetsuya looked at her with a determined expression and said, till I am satisfied. Kaneko blushed a bit and then asked, and how much time will it take for you to get satisfied while holding me? Tetsuya smiled and said, Kaneko-chan if I it were up to me then I can hold you like this for my whole life. You are too cute for me to leave you. Kaneko's blush intensified and then said, TT then you have to TT take responsibility FF for the NNNYAA hearing that Tetsuya felt that an arrow pierced his heart and thought, Kaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwaiwai
That decision lies with Kiba, after all he's the only one who want to destroy those swords among us. Zenovia glared back at him and gritted her teeth, but still nodded her head. Seeing Zenovia nodding her head, Irina became shocked and said, Hey what are you doing? How can you let these non-believers and devils cooperate in our mission? Zenovia looked at Irina and said, I know that but remember that our chances of returning back are very less, and the higher-ups sent us fully prepared to sacrifice ourselves for this cause. Irina nodded and said, I know that but isn't that the only thing that we the believers yearn for? Zenovia shook her head and said, My faith is not that deep I agree that I do believe in God, but before that I am a swordsman, and I definitely don't want to die before I can take my revenge from him. And pointed at Tetsaya. Tetsaya was surprised by that and said, Ho, oh, I am impressed that you still have the motivation to fight against me after that defeat. Zenovia gritted her teeth and said, Just you wait, I will defeat you soon. Tetsaya just waved his hand and said, Sure sure, whatever. He then looked at both of them and said, Now then since we have agreed then let's start the operation. He then took out his phone and called Kiba to confirm his location, and at once all of them went to him. They all met in a park, and after everything was discussed all of them started the operation with Tetsaya's team responsible for guarding the town and the devils and exorcists, along with Tetsaya as the tracking team. Later that night the exorcists separated from the group, and so did Tetsaya, who went his own way to find the Excaliburs. While searching he came across many stray exorcists and fallen angels, who only fell into the hands of total annihilation. Tetsaya didn't show any mercy to them and killed them without second thought. He had enough of these kind of trashes invading his territory, and if the devils are not sufficient for the cleaning he decided to do this on his own. He was very angry to see that most of them had made permanent hideouts in the town, which only showed how inefficiently his territory was managed. He was very enraged by this, but what angered him more was that these hideouts were also being used to do many shady businesses, quite often making it sure that the devils were not doing their work properly. Tetsaya who saw the records that he gathered from these hideouts, decided to give both of them a chance, and if the results were to be the same, then he would reclaim the rights that he had over his territory. He did not care whether Serzages would be pissed by this act, or if Sona will start hating him. He had enough of them playing ruler, and now he was not going to keep enduring all these things in his territory no matter what. Soon he received a message from Kaneko that they had found an Excalibur. Hearing that Tetsaya stopped his extermination and teleported to Kaneko's location. Seeing him teleport there all of them stopped and looked at him, and once his figure was clearly visible, Freed pointed his sword at him and said, Ah. It's the distracting dog shit human cun. Tetsaya looked at him and said, Nice to meet you again you priest of shit. Hearing his mockery Freed laughed maniacally and said, Ah. You are still the same. Annoying as hell. I will kill you first with my new baby. And showed his new sword to him. Tetsaya looked at him and said, What happened to the old one, you dropped it somewhere? Freed looked at Tetsaya and said, most probably someone took it. We are not able to find its exact location. Suddenly he realized something and said, hey don't ask such questions to me, I am not allowed to give you such answers. Tetsaya looked at him with a smirk and said, and who gave you those orders? Freed showed an evil smile and said, Master Kakabiel and suddenly many Freeds appeared around him making all of them surprised. Tetsaya immediately activated his Sharingan and saw that all the Freeds disappeared only leaving behind one of them. Tetsaya then thought that must be Excalibur Nightmare able to create illusions and nightmares to people. Freed smirked on seeing that all of them were shocked on seeing that all of them were surprised on seeing the illusions. He then saw Kiba slashing through the illusions and smirked and jumped towards him to attack. But just as he was about to slash him Tetsaya said, Kiba the one behind you is the real one. And Kiba immediately slashed behind him making Freed block the attack. Freed gritted his teeth and jumped back and looked at Tetsaya and said, you really piss me off. Tetsaya just smiled and said, I know that. Ain't that fun. Freed then glared at Tetsaya, and then raised his sword and said, I have decided now you will be the first person this sword will fuck up. Tetsaya shook his head and said, sorry that is not possible. Freed then pointed his sword and said, why you, you think that I am not able to attack you? Tetsaya looked at him with a neutral expression and said, that too and also I like to be the one who fucks not the other way around. And smirked. Freed who saw the smirk on Tetsaya's face got annoyed and said, I will wipe that smirk of your face. Tetsaya just continued to smirk and said, you are free to try. Hearing that Freed jumped while shouting, take this human. He was approaching towards Tetsaya, but Tetsaya just remained standing at his place. Freed looked at him dot I in anger and said, why you, Atlas be scared, there is no fun in killing you like this. Tetsaya ignored him and looked at his side and nodded. Just as Tetsaya nodded Saji who understood what to do made a black colored dragon gauntlet appear on his hand and shouted, absorption line, and a blue colored shining rope launched from the gauntlet and entangled Freed in it. 
Freed looked at the, the rope restrained him and said, What is this? Titsaya looked at him and said, Oh nothing, I just thought that you would like some bondage play. I hope that it is to your liking. Freed glared at Titsaya and said, No way in hell can I like something like this. Titsaya looked at him with an astonished expression, and then smacked his hand with his fist and said, Oh, I know this much must not be able to satisfy you. He then looked at Asami and Kiba and said, Hey Asami give a boost to Kiba and Kiba used that energy to help our friend here to relieve himself. Slash him, cut him, pierce him with your swords. Do that till he is satisfied. I don't care whether you stick your swords in his ass, just make sure that he is completely relieved. Hearing that all the devils looked at him with a weird expression, and Freed looked at him and said, Hey what the hell do you think you are doing? I am not into that. Tetsaya just smiled and said, But don't you always say things like that to others, so why not try it for yourself? You never know what can make you feel relieved. Just try it, who knows that you find a new path to your life. Freed who saw his expression on his face, knew that Tetsaya wasn't kidding. He was seriously planning to do what he just said. Freed then got panicked and started attack the rope with his sword, but all that effort was in vain. Seeing that Freed has started attacking the rope Kiba and Asami got serious and did what Tetsaya told them. Kiba don't want to lose the opportunity that Tetsaya and Saji has created for him, and was now ready to attack. The Sami finished boosting up and transferred energy to Kiba. Transfer after that Kiba felt a surge of energy in him and smiled and said, Thanks, I will use this energy to the fullest. He then pushed the sword in the ground and shouted, Sword birth, and a number of swords started to appear from the ground around him, and slowly and slowly started emerging in Freed's direction. Freed who saw that cop panicked and stopped attacking the, the tongue tied on his hand, and started to destroying the swords around him. While he was busy in destroying the swords around him, Tetsaya felt someone nearby and said, Won't you come out and join us? As he said that all of them got attentive and started looking around to see who was there. After waiting for a while when the man did not came out, Tetsaya glared in his direction and said, Come out while I am still being nice. Seeing the glare the man shuddered and immediately came out of hiding. Tetsaya then stopped glaring and became neutral making the man sigh in relief. Everyone then looked at the man wondering who he was and then Freed said, Valper Gigi hearing that all of them were shocked, except for Tetsaya who now looked at the scene in front of him. Kiba glared at Valper and said, Valper Galilee with venom in his voice. Valper looked at him and said, The one and only at your service, and I see that you are one of my test subjects from that time. Sard birth a truly great sacred gear indeed, but nonetheless you were still unable to wield Excalibur. Kiba gritted his teeth and then looked at Valper with an angry expression. Valper then looked at Freed and said, And why are you suffering against a bunch of kids? Freed who kept on destroying the swords, pointed at his tied hand and was about to say something, but Tetsaya interrupted him and said, Oh we were just going to do something kinky, don't mind him. By the way I have a question for you shaved Santa-san. Valper then looked at Tetsaya and said, And you there you are still a human, yet your aura is still more refined than most of the supernatural beings, you will be a very good test subject. Oh I can't wait to dissect you. Hey tell me what ability do you have? Do you have some sort of sacred gear? Tetsaya just laughed lightly and said, Sorry I am not interested in my body getting touched much less dissected by an old man like you. He was about to say something, but Asami interrupted him and asked, Where is Coco Bowls? All of them looked at her with a confused expression, and Valper asked, Sorry, but who is Coco Bowls? Tetsaya then said, I will do you one better, why is Coco Bowls? And yes, where is Kakabiel? Valper just started laughing and said, Do you really believe that I will tell you where Master Kakabiel is? Do you think that I am an idiot? Tetsaya didn't even wait for a second and said, Yup making Valper sweat drop at that. Valper then coughed and said, Anyway leaving that aside, Freed pass your aura through the sword, and then try cutting. Freed nodded and then then passed his aura through the sword, making it glow which made all the devils around him feel a bit nervous because of the holy aura. Freed then smiled and said, oh, shiny, and then he slashed the rope, cutting it without any problem. He then looked at the sword and said, oh, yeah I like it, he then looked at the others and said, shitty devils and annoying human, let's continue the cutting. And then launched at Kibbut and slashed at him only to be blocked by another sword. All of them were surprised by the new sword that blocked an attack, and looked at the person who blocked the attack, and saw Zenovia standing there. She then glared at Freed and said, Freed Selzen, the heretic priest who even killed his allies, truly a despicable person. Freed then showed an embarrassed expression and said, Oh, don't say that, it's making me blush. Zenovia then gritted her teeth and pushed him away making him fall back. Hi, you called for us? All of them turned around to Sliarina in her skin-tight uniform. Asami looked at her with surprise and said, How did you know that we were here? Kaneko then said, I called them, it was the plan after all. Asami looked at Kaneko and said, Good job Kaneko-chan. 
Valper who now saw two more holy sword users got worried and said, Freed Freed, then looked at Valper and said, What now Gigi? Valper then said, Your job was to take care of the spies of the church, but now that more Excalibur users are here let's get away. Freed looked at him with a disappointed expression and said, So soon, but I wanted to slice some of them apart. Valper then narrowed his eyes making Freed sigh and said, Fine Gigi, let's go. He then looked at the others and said, See you later shitheads. And then threw a flash bang on the ground, eloping both him and Valper in a blinding light, but before they were able to get away, Tetsayat again took his sword and stored it in his storage. Once the light died down Kiba and the exorcists gritted their teeth and ran away searching for them. After Kiba and the exorcists were gone Asami and the others were about to follow them, but suddenly two magic circles appeared, and the kings and queens of both the peerages appeared there. All the devils who saw them got surprised and were a bit scared by them. Both of them then looked at their peerage members and said, My, you all are such naughty children. All of them then went inside the building, and both the kings were about to scold and punish their servants, but before they were able to start Tetsaya came forward and said, Just stop it's not their fault I am the one who made the plans. Sona and Rias along with their queens, looked at Tetsaya and Rias said, Even though you were the one behind it, they are still my servant, before she was able to continue Sona interjected and said, Is it related to the the thing that we discussed yesterday? Tetsaya ignored Rias as well and looked at Sona and said, Yes it is, I am sorry for taking Saji without your permission, but it was urgency, we needed numbers and that too quickly. Waiting and discussing the whole matter with you would have taken too much time. Sona nodded and said, I understand but don't take my peerage members without my permission next time. Tetsaya just smiled and said, No promises, that depends on the situation. Rias looked at their interaction and got a bit annoyed and said, Hey don't ignore me, and what is the thing that you discussed with her yesterday? Sona and Tetsaya looked at Rias and gave an annoyed sigh. Sona then shifted her glasses and said, It was something related to the things that are happening in the town recently, the things are not that small that you are imagining them to be. Rias who when saw both of them sighing got angry which only increased after Sona finished talking. She looked at both of them and narrowed her eyes and said, If the situation was too dangerous, then it seems to be then why wasn't I included in the discussion you two had yesterday? This is my territory as well. At this Sona got a bit panicked and didn't know how to explain the situation to her. She then looked at Tetsaya and saw him look at Rias intently and thought, No, Tetsaya don't do what I think that you are going to do. Tetsaya who heard her thoughts through telepathy looked at her with an expression which said, I don't give a fuck about that. He then looked at Rias and said, Even if we have invited and explained the situation to you, what would have you done about that? Rias looked at Tetsaya and said, I would have solved the problem in my own way. Hahaha <laughs> Tetsaya started to laugh making Sona and the others more worried, but Rias only got angrier by that. After laughing for a while Tetsaya calmed himself down and said, Solve the problem in your own way, huh? He then glared at Rias making her flinch and said, Just like you solved the problems with the fallen angels, by allowing them to do whatever they wanted to do in the town. At this the entire atmosphere of the room got tense. All of them were shocked to see Tetsaya say that to Rias, but they couldn't do anything after all what he was saying was true. Rias glared at Tetsaya and said, My actions at that time were correct if no Tetsaya raised his hand and stopped her from talking and said, Don't spout the bullshit about you not harming them, because it could have lead to friction in between the factions and would have started the three-way war. He then put his hand down and glared back at her and said, That is the only the excuse that you keep on saying to neglect your duties. A person entering your territory without any permission and do whatever he wants couldn't be harmed because it could lead to another war. If so why did you kill the group of fallen in the church, wasn't it going to start your so-called war? Rias and the others only remained silent with Rias glaring at Tetsaya. Tetsaya then snorted and said, some devil you are to say that you are also the governing this territory. When it comes to duties you are the least involved, and when it comes to taking advantages you are the first person to come up. Those fallen angels were destroyed by Asami because I was the one who ordered her as a part of her training, to let her gain real combat experience, and yet all the credit for it was taken by you. Rias only gritted her teeth but couldn't utter a word. Tetsaya continued to glare at her and said, But do you know because of your actions, you have gained one thing. Do you know what? Tetsaya then looked at Sona and said, And this time you are somewhat involved in this as well. Both Sona and Rias got confused and looked at Tetsaya. Tetsaya just looked back at them and said, Because you let those fallen and exorcists live in this territory and do whatever they wanted, they have sent enough information about the territory to their leader, so now it has already come to a situation that can turn into war. Congratulations. Tetsaya said that and started clapping. This only made them more and more depressed and guilty, and somehow both of them felt like crying. Tsubaki and Akeno looked at Tetsaya and were about to ask him to stop, but before they were able to Tetsaya glared at them and said, I am not done yet. 
Both of them flinched and immediately backed down. They could feel that Tetsuya was really angry now and didn't want to mess with him. Tetsuya looked at both Sona and Ria's and said, During tonight's operation I was on patrol around the town, and you know what I came across a lot of shady supernatural groups who have made this town fire headquarters and were conducting a lot of illegal business. Why do I have to take care of these groups when you are the ones who have asked to govern over the town and are officially the ones to do that? Weren't you the ones who wanted to live in this territory while governing it, so why is it that there are so many unauthorized people here in my territory? He said the last part with a clawed voice. All of them flinched at the coldness in Tetsuya's voice, and immediately sewn about her head and said, I am sorry about that it will not happen again. All of them were surprised to see Sona bow her head, and Tetsuya looked at her and said, I expect the same as well, don't expect that I will show leniency towards you, if you are in a relationship with me. If you have taken this duty then make sure to fulfill it. Sona looked up and nodded her head. This was the first time that she had seen Tetsuya become angry, and knew that the matter is quite serious to make him angry. She knew that it was mostly Ria's fault, but she didn't want to take any chances to make Tetsuya angrier. Tetsuya then looked at Ria's and said, do you have to say anything in your defense? Ria's looked at him and said, I didn't even knew that there were those types of groups in the town. How do you expect me to take care of them? Hearing what Ria's just said Tetsuya snapped and have her the coldest glare he possibly could, and unconsciously released a bit of his aura, which made all of them feel suffocated. Tetsuya who noticed that soon controlled himself and said, I am sorry, he then looked back at Ria's and said, so you didn't knew that there were such shady groups in the town? I highly doubt that, you who is technically a high class devil, is not able to feel the presence of other species. If that is true then I think that you are worthless. But let's just keep that aside. Sona here has also been clearing many such groups in the town, you know that? Hearing that Ria's got a bit annoyed to see that Tetsuya called her worthless, and that he knew that Sona did cleared some of the groups. Tetsuya then said, but still she was unable to clear all of them, and that is also not what I am pointing to. What I want to say is that, if Sona who actually knows about the groups was unable to clear them all, then wouldn't it be natural that she will discuss this problem with her fellow ruler to ask for help? At this Ria's fell silent and didn't say anything. Tetsuya then said, let's even keep that aside too. Tell me what could you have done even if you knew about these groups? Doesn't the result would have been same? Ria's looked at him and said, what do you mean to say? Tetsuya continued to look at her with an expressionless face and said, I mean didn't you did the same with the situation you knew about years ago, but still didn't do anything about it. Ria's narrowed her eyes and said, which situation are you talking about specifically? Tetsuya just smirking and said, your marriage contract with Riser of course. You knew about that since a long time, but what did you do that to come out of it, other than ranting about your situation? Ria's glared at Tetsuya and gritted her teeth. Tetsuya who saw that said, what the truth hit you hard? Ria's continued to glare, and then Tetsuya said, in the whole raiding game, you couldn't even defeat a single opponent. Not only that you even hindered the others by acting recklessly and put them in danger. Do you seriously think that if Asami was not able to achieve her balance breaker any of you would have survived? Riser could have easily injured you pretty badly, if not burn you to ashes of your peerage would not have saved you. Ria's continued to grit her teeth and glare at Tetsuya, but he completely ignored her and said, you didn't even train when you were finally given the opportunity before the raiding game. Do you seriously think that you are that strong? Tell me do can you hold yourself against Freed while he is wielding a holy sword? No, you can't, but you know Kiba held out against him, and twice too at that. I will say it bluntly Ria's, you are the weakest person in your group, and if you continue to be the same you will hold back the others. He said that and then sighed. He then looked at her and said, stop being a spoiled princess, the world is not that peaceful and kind that you have experienced till now. You can die anytime if you are not strong enough. It is also not only about you but also the people who are under you and following you. He then released his aura and to make them feel pressurized and said, take example from the situation we are currently in. If you were to die in the current scenario of events it will directly lead to the war. What would you do then? Ria's was about to say something, but Tetsuya stopped her and said, and don't say that you can hold yourself on your own. Do you have confidence to hold against a cadre when you were unable to hold against even Riser? This made her silent and she looked down in guilt. Tetsuya then calmed down and said, I will be helping you this time because this involves the town which is my territory, but how long do you expect someone to save your ass? Grow up Ria's or you will die in this world. Also I am taking back the ownership of the town from Ria's Gremory. She and her peerage are allowed to stay and attend the school, but all the powers that you had about the decision making of the town and authority, have been taken from you. This made all of them shocked, and Ria said, you cannot do this. Tetsuya looked at her with a glare and said, I most certainly can, you are still not worthy of taking care of a town. You have put the lives of not only the supernaturals, but also the normal humans as well. 
The enemy is aiming for war, he most certainly would be having an army, and if the war actually occurs, then many more innocents will die. He then gave her a final glare and said, I am done with you playing ruler in my territory. He said that and then teleported back to his home, leaving behind a group of speechless devils. After Tatsaya teleported home all the girls came out to greet him, but were immediately stopped by Kurumi, who noticed the chaotic feelings welling inside him. Tatsaya just looked at the girls and said, please don't disturb me for a while. With the calmest tone that he was able to use at that time and then went to his room. Once he was gone Kurumi looked at the others and said, let's just do as he said, he is currently very angry about something. The girls looked at each other and then all of them said at the same time, let's ask Asami or Sona about this. And immediately contacted both of them, and a small projection of the girls appeared in front of them. The girls when saw the pale faces of the girls, now knew that something definitely happened, and asked both of them about it. Sona and Asami also didn't hide anything from them because even though they were shocked by how Tetsaya acted today, they knew that Tetsaya's reasons for acting like that were correct as well. They also wanted to know how Tetsaya was feeling as well because they were worried for him. After they were done explaining the room went silent, and then Kurumi said with a sigh, so he finally endured all of his limits, huh. Well I was expecting this to happen sooner or later. Even if it looks like he doesn't care too much, he still cares for his territory. The territory certainly has worsened after he stopped maintaining it, but to think that it has turned this worse. Sona along with TSUBAKI projections, felt guilty and once again bowed and said, we are sorry about that. Kurumi who saw them apologizing shook her hands rapidly and said, no no no, I am not blaming you because of this, I already know how much you work for this territory, if you work any more you will become sick, and that it will only make him worry. Hearing that Sona and Tsubaki lifted their head and sighed in relief. Asami, projection, who was silent till now said, but what will happen now? By how it looked to me Tetsaya was certainly serious about taking back the authority from Prez, won't it cause troubles with the devils, Serzich's specifically. Kurumi then snorted and said, she should have thought about this before acting like a spoiled bitch, and if it is about conflict with the devils, it should be Serzich's who should worry if Tetsaya is not too pissed, because if that happens, even the original Lucifer would not be able to save his sorry ass, along with the rest of the devil faction. Hearing that Asami, Sona and Tsubaki got surprised and asked, is he that strong to be a threat to the whole devil faction? This time Miyuki looked at the projections and said, even if all the three great factions were to come at him together, he can easily wipe them from the face of the planet. Suddenly Asami's sacred gear appeared on her hand and Drake then said, what they are saying is certainly true. I have experienced his power firsthand and trust me I don't want to experience that again. Even the great war was pleasant compared to that fight. Drake then paused for a while and then said, Citrieris at this Sona got alert and said, Yes Drake Sama, the gem on the gauntlet then glowed and said, Your sister is a Mayu as well, right? Contact her and explain the situation to her as soon as possible, and make sure to tell her to discuss it with the other mass as soon as possible, because we don't know what the Gremory girl could do right now, she can even spout made up nonsense right now. Tetsaya smashed her great who to pieces, she must not be in a proper state of mind. Sona nodded at this and decided to do that as soon as possible. She knew what the Drake was saying might be possible, and she didn't want to deal with what could happen after that. Tiamat who heard what Drake just said looked at Asami and said, I didn't know that a shameless and selfish dragon like you can do something like this. Why are you trying to save those devils? Drake remained silent for a while and then said, it is not for the devils but for me. If the devils were to go on a war against him, then my host will be put on the battlefield as well, and there is no way that I am fighting him. All of them looked at the gauntlet with a sweat drop, and Tiamat said, how can a dragon stay away from a fight? Drake didn't wait for long and said, I know that a dragon cannot stay away from a fight, but here this clearly a battle against him is not a fight, but a total one-sided annihilation, you hear me a total one-sided annihilation. He said the last part while shouting. Drake then calmed down and said, you too must have felt his power, right Tiamat? Otherwise there is no way that you will become his mate. Tiamat nodded her head and said, yeah I have felt that power, and I know how scary that power is, but the most dangerous part is that he is able to have such great control over it, that we cannot feel it, if he didn't show it. We dragons too cannot measure his power, but we can feel that it is dangerous. Drake nodded inside the gauntlet and then said, by the way, has he come down since then? Hearing that Kurumi spread her senses and felt his emotions and said, he has calmed down a bit and is currently sleeping. He must be too stressed because of the war and all. Drake then said, why is he so much worried about the war, it's of like you will be entering the war or so, you are not a part of the three factions, and even if he somehow gets involved, can't he get out of the situation pretty easily. Kurumi looked seriously at the gauntlet and said, if Tetsaya wanted something like world domination do you think that he was unable to achieve it? 
He simply wants to have a peaceful life with his loved ones. But if this war takes place there will be many people like Sona, Tsubaki, Asami, Sarah and many more, who is related to him somehow and will be in the war. And thus it would be better for him if the war doesn't start in the first place. At this Drake sighed and said, I too don't want another war, I have faced plenty of them now, and my only desire is to face off against Albion. Tia smirked at that and said, where, on the bed? At this Drake got panicked and said, don't tell me, Tetsuya told you. Tiamat just continued to smile and said, I think we should go back to sleep as well. Hey Tiamat answer me. Did he tell you don't ignore me yo, before he was able to continue Tiamat cut the connection, and both the projections vanished. She then stretched her body and said, well I am going to accompany him, he must be pretty worried. And entered Tetsuya's room, and soon one by one everyone was in his room. The next day after Tetsuya woke up he felt some weight all over his body, and saw that all the girls were lying either on top or around him. He then sighed and let them sleep for a bit more, and got out of there carefully without waking any of them. He then got down and made some coffee for himself, and then sat down and slowly sipped on it. Tetsuya then began to think about what happened yesterday, and then gave a tired sigh and thought, looks like I let my inner thoughts out yesterday. But it was not my fault, she was the one who is not taking care of my territory correctly, even though they were the ones who asked for it themselves. And because of my anger, I even gnashed out at Sona and Tsubaki, even though they work so hard to maintain the territory. He then started to feel a bit bad and then said, I will apologize to Sona and Tsubaki later at school, but first I have to talk to Amaterasu to take back the rights that Ria's had over the territory. He then made a magic circle and called Amaterasu and said, Hey Amy, sorry for calling you this early, were you sleeping? Amaterasu who saw Tetsuya got happy and said, No, not at all I was just about to go to my workplace. So what happened to make you call me this early? Tetsuya looked at her with a serious expression and said, Please take back the deed that Gremories had over the town back as soon as possible. Amaterasu who heard that got shocked and said, What? Are you serious? Tetsuya nodded and then started explaining about why he was asking such a thing, and once he was done Amaterasu too was very angry. Amaterasu then said, she have some nerve to let such things happen in my territory. I mean one can be irresponsible, but still there is a limit to it. Amaterasu then calmed down and said, but even so, you do know that it will cause some friction between the devil and Shinto factions, right? Tetsuya nodded and said, I know that and I take full responsibility for it. If you were to go at a war with the devils because of this then I will join your side. Amaterasu then smiled and then said, Okay then I will inform the others immediately, but still are you sure about this? Tetsuya nodded and said, Just explain the reasons and say that I was the one who observed the territory and ask you to do it. This will surely make the deal go much smoother. Amy the smiled and said, Anyways, are there any plans of you visiting me, or should I come there? Tetsuya shook his head and said, right now I am too busy and this town is not safe, even though me and my team and you can easily survive the people in this town will surely not, so how about once the things are finished you come her, and then we can go on a date? Hearing that Amaterasu smiled which made Tetsuya blush and he then said, you are looking very beautiful right now. Amaterasu just smiled and said, foo foo foo, I am glad to hear that, you too look very good without your shirt. Tetsuya just gave a tired sigh and said, the girls took it off at night. Anyway, how are Tsukuyomi-san and Susanoo-san at this two young men came came in the projection and said, we are fine brother-in-law. How are you doing? You have plans to come here? Tetsuya just gave a wry smile and said, not at the moment, I am still busy with a lot of stuff in the town, but once I am free, I will try to come there as soon as possible Susanoo-san. Then the other man moved forward and said, you should refer us as brother-in-laws, and I hope that you are fine. Tetsuya looked at the man and said, I am fine Tsukiyo brother-in-law. Tsukiyomi smiled and said, so why did you call her, if you are not coming here? Was it for an important business or it was one of your private talks? Sorry if we are interrupting you too. Amaterasu who was looking at her brothers blushed and said, it is nothing like that we were discussing a very important topic before both of you came. At this both Susanu and Tsukiyomi laughed, but soon calmed and then turned serious and asked, what matter? Tetsuya and Amaterasu then started explaining what they were talking about, and Tsukiyomi and Susanu went into deep thinking. Soon both of them opened their eyes, and then Susanu said, Okay, we will do what you want us to do, but don't turn back on your promise to help us. Tetsuya nodded and said, Don't worry, I will not go back on my word. Tsukuyomi then said, Also let's make the marriage contract between you and my sister official. Hearing that Amaterasu blushed and said, Hey, isn't it too soon? Tetsuya haven't even graduated from high school yet? Tetsuya then said, But I have graduated from my virginity. Amaterasu's got even redder after hearing that and then remained silent. 
Susanoo and Tsukuyomi then started laughing, and then Susanoo said, yeah, you should at least get engaged. In my opinion the two is still late. I clearly remember that one of my wives was even younger when we were married. He said with a prideful voice and then closed his eyes and started remembering those days. Tetsuya looked at Susanoo with a deadpan expression and said, then doesn't that mean that you are a pedophile? Susanoo did an anime fall and said, hey, how dare you call a god like that? Tetsuya looked at Susanoo and said, I am very sorry, Susanoo then nodded and then was about to say something, but Tetsuya suddenly said, I am very sorry you are not a pedophile. You are a god of pedophiles. Susanoo's brows then twitched and said, you have gotten bolder, huh? Just don't let me catch you otherwise, Tetsuya interjected him again and said, sorry I only accept to be your brother-in-law, even though you are a pedo god, I am still willing to have that relationship with you, nothing more than that, I have no interest in males. Tsukuyomi and Amaterasu were laughing loudly at their brother, while Susanoo kept on getting angrier. Susanoo then said, just come here and I will fuck you up. Tetsuya then looked at him with a disgusting expression and said, now you are a gay pedophile, sorry, but I have no interest in you. Susanoo got even more pissed, but Tsukuyomi then came forward and said, stop it brother did you forget how badly you were defeated last time? Susanoo grabbed his butt and said, how can I forget that embarrassment? I still have problems when I try to sit. Why the hell did you use you thousand years of death or whatever? Tetsuya just shrugged and said, you were being an asshole, so I just attacked there. All the three gods looked at him with a deadpan look and thought, that's reasoning make no sense. After talking a bit longer with the Shinto gods Tetsuya ended the call, and soon the other members of the house woke up and came down, and once they saw Tetsuya, all of them went towards him and hugged him. Tetsuya was surprised by that, but soon sighed and said, sorry for making you all worried. They didn't reply, but still kept on hugging him. Tetsuya looked at their antics but let them do what they wanted. Soon the girls let him go, and then Tetsuya looked at them and said, once again I apologize for worrying you all. The girls looked at him and then Kurumi said, don't worry, about it. We came to know what happened out there. You must have been pissed off too much to even scare your cute little Sotan a bit. She and Tsubaki along with Asami and Kaneko, probably are a bit gloomy after your outburst yesterday. Make sure to apologize to them. Tetsuya sighed and said, I already know what I have to do, you need not to remind me. Kurumi just chuckled and then said, so, have you decided to take away the authority from the redhead? Tetsuya nodded and said, yeah, I have already asked Amy and his brothers to do so as soon as possible. I guess soon the authority over half the town will come back to me. Ingvald then looked at him and asked, but don't you think that the devils specially Serzages will be kind of upset about it? Tetsuya looked at her and then said, they can fuck themselves about it for all I care, and the possibility of Serzages taking aggressive actions about this matter are quite less. He may be a cis con. He knows quite well about who not to mess with, though the other devils in the council might take actions about it, as it was in a way their territory in a place which is not underworld, hence making it easy for them to take actions, but that too is very less probable, as Sona still has some part of the territory. So only those who true to butter up the gremories will be a pain to deal with. Himari then asked, and what will you do to those who try this? Tetsuya looked at her with a smile and said, the first time I might leave them with a simple warning, but if they keep on pestering me then his expression then turned dark, and he then said, I will drown them in holy water, and then electrocute them to death with holy lightning. If they still remain alive then I will again drown them in holy water, electrocute them with holy lightning, and then burn them with the Matarasu, and if still they remain a live Sinan, then put her hand on his moth and said, fine fine, I understand, you will kill them. Honestly just throw them in the dimensional gap and they will die without any trace. Tetsuya then looked at her with a weird expression and then said, where's the fun in that? All of them looked at him with a deadpan look making him twitch his lips. Miyuki then came forward and held Tetsuya's hands and then said, don't listen to the Mani Isama, I will support you, and will help you skewer those who come seeking trouble. We can marinate them in the holy water first, and then I will skewer them, and you can electrocute them with holy lightning as seasoning, and then we roast them in your flames. Tetsuya looked at her and then said, nice idea. And both of them smiled looking at each other. Meanwhile all the others looked at the Shiba siblings and thought, I don't want to imagine what will happen to Thode who will become the ingredients for their dish. Shizuka, then came forward and said, leaving all that aside, you said that you will be getting your authority over the territory soon, right? I will help you manage it whenever you are busier at school. You need not worry about it. Tetsuya looked at her and asked, are you sure about that, it will be very hectic, and sometimes it may be dangerous as well? Shizuka nodded and said, of course, no problem with that, and even if the things were to go south, I can contact any of you immediately. Tetsuya looked at her for a while and then said, fine, but just don't get in trouble. 
He then turned serious and then said, Okay, all of you listen we need to work on patrolling the town tonight, I think that they are going to take actions tonight. All of them then turned serious, and Karen asked, Why do you think so? Tetsuya looked at Karen and said, When I was clearing out those groups last night I came across a lot of documents as well. He then took out the documents from his storage and put them on the table. He then looked back at the others and said, and after going through them I learned that they were going to take action soon, but after my encounter with the one who started the Holy Sword project yesterday. I am certain that they will be taking actions either today or tomorrow, because there is no way that they will let someone with that importance in the town, before their plan is about to start. At this all of them narrowed their eyes and asked, and why do you think that this person is an important asset to them? Tetsuya looked back at them and said, just think about it, they have stolen the holy swords which cannot be wielded by anyone who the sword don't use worthy, and yet that freed guy was able to wield two of them. How do you think that it is possible? All of them then got shocked and now understood why Tetsuya was saying that they might attack today. All of them nodded and looked at Tetsuya with determination. Tetsuya looked back at them and gave a nod and said, I have already told you this before, but this tea the stakes are very high, so make sure to find and kill each and everyone who is set on to start the war. They too gave a knot and and then started to discuss how they were going to operate tonight. After an hour or when they were done all of them looked at Tetsuya who looked back at them and asked, what? All of them shook their head and said, nothing it's just that it's time to go to school, it are you willing to face them after yesterday's incident? Tetsuya who heard that sight and said, I cannot remain hidden in this situation when we are almost at war, and I also have to apologize to Sona and the others. Also I don't regret whatever I did yesterday, what I said was true, and it is certain that I don't feel bad about that redeed. Simply said, get ready soon we are already late. All of them smiled and nodded and then immediately went to change their clothes. When Tetsuya and his team reached the school the first thing that they noticed was that there were a lot of monofluctuations coming from the orc. They all looked at each other and then said in unison, yup, the redhead is pissed. And looked at Tetsuya. Tetsuya just snorted and said, good for her, she might do more damage to the enemy if she is angry. Karen then said, but won't she become a problem if she jumps in a fight recklessly? Tetsuya looked at her with a deadpan expression and said, Karen I think that you are forgetting that she is Rhea's Gremory we are talking about. She will do the same even if she is not angry. All of them became speechless and then said, you do have a point. Tetsuya nodded and said, well anyway you guys go to the class. I will go to the student council room first. They all nodded and then headed to their classes. Tetsuya then started walking towards the student council, and after reaching there he knocked on the door. Soon he heard Sona giving the permission to enter, after which he opened the door and entered and saw that only Sona and Tsubaki were there. Both the girls were shocked on seeing Tetsuya there, and were slightly hesitating to talk to him. Tetsuya who saw their expression sighed and then bowed his head and said, I am sorry about what happened yesterday, I shouldn't have snapped at you both, but I was really angry at that time. You were not to blame and I still did that, I am very sorry. Both the girls looked at the Tetsuya for a while and then sighed and said, just raise your head up. Tetsuya raised his head and looked at the girls who were looking at him as well. All of them kept staring at each other for a while, and then Tetsuya said, so am I forgiven? Both the girls looked at each other, and then Sona said, what should we do Tsubaki? Should we forgive him or not? And smirked. Tsubaki who saw the smirk on Sona's face smirked as well and then said, I don't know Sona, what should we do? He scolded his girlfriend so much when it was not even their fault. Isn't he too cruel? Sona nodded and said, indeed he is. She then looked at Tetsuya and said, so what should we do now? Tetsuya who now knew that he was being teased twitched his lips and then said, what can I do to make up for snapping at you two my lovely girlfriends? Both Sona and Tsubaki looked at Tetsuya with an amused expression on their faces. Tetsuya who saw their express was somewhat regretting to come there. Sona then said, you want to do something to make up for your mistake, huh? But what should I make you do? Make you my butler for a day? Or make you carry my things on shopping? Just when Tetsuya heard the second option his body trembled. Seeing his reaction Sona chuckled and then said, You don't need to do anything it was somewhat my fault as well, so I apologize once again for that. Tetsuya looked at Sona and smiled. He then said, Thank you but seriously you really don't want me to do anything? Sona shook her head and said, Yes, I don't need, and I think even Tsubaki Adger Sona was unable to finish her sentence when Tsubaki said, Then let's have sex after all this is over. Sona looked at her queen with a betrayed expression and said, Hey didn't you said that you will not do something till I am officially engaged to him Tsubaki looked at Sona with a confused expression and said, Huh, who are you? Soma became annoyed and said, Don't who are you me I am your king. Tsubaki nodded and then said, Never heard of you. Don't get in my way now. She then looked away from Sona and then started walking towards Tetsuya, but soon Sona grabbed her and said, Hey, you promised me that you won't do that. 
Tsubaki looked back at Sona and placed her hand on Sona's shoulder, she then shifted her glasses in such a way that the light was reflected from them, and made the lens shine. She then said, listen here in life you will get various opportunities where you may have to make your decisions with keeping your priorities in mind. Sona then looked at her and said, and your priority should be me your king, right? You said that you will always help me when you became my queen. Tsubaki nodded her head and said, yup and I am doing just that. I will check first that how it feels to do that. Is is painful or is it harmful? I will check it first so that you don't suffer in the future. Sona then said, if that's the case, then it should be me who should test that first after all I am your king, I can't push you to do something before knowing how dangerous the situation is. And then tightened the grip on Tsubaki's shoulder. Tsubaki and Sona then started glaring at each other, but then they were brought out of it when they heard a voice, Ano, President, Vice President what are both of you doing? Both of them then turned around and saw the rest of the peerage standing there looking at them with a confused expression. Both of them looked around the room and then asked, where is Ditsaya? Saji then said, oh Iniki, he just left the room and told me to inform both of you that meet him, once both of you have come to a conclusion, and also T said that it is not the time to discuss such things, do it after the situation at hand is over. Both of them then moved their hands back, and Sona said, let's discuss it later. Tsubaki looked at her and said, what's there to discuss I have already decided to do it. You are just standing in the way. Sona glared at her which Tsubaki responded with a smirk and said, my king let's not waste time the classes are about to start. And then left the room leaving behind an angry Sona and a confused peerage. Soon Sona calmed down and said, okay, everyone go back to your classes, but be alert at all times, the situation of the town is very dangerous, we cannot be reckless or death is for certain. All of them became scared but still looked at Sona with seriousness and nodded their heads and left for their classes along with Sona. After the school was over all the supernaturals of the school went to their respective groups and started their duties. Tetsaya looked at his group and said, you know what to do. Now let's split up. And then all of them nodded and then started moving in different directions. All of them started to search for any stray exorcists and fallen angels in the town, and killing them in process slowly decreasing the number of enemy forces. They kept on doing that when suddenly all of them felt a strong presence in the town. All of them contacted each other through their telepathic links to discuss what to do about the situation. You guys felt that too, right? Yep, this certainly must be their leader he seems to be a cadre class. So what should we do now? Gang up on him and kill him? No, this will make him alert, and he might order the rest of the subordinates to cause ruckus in the town. So what shall we do? Wait for him to set everything up, and then when he is about to execute his plan, kill him. Nah, waiting that long isn't worth it. You all keep on doing what you are doing and increase the pace a bit. Most of the town is clear just a few groups are left. Kill them and come to the location. I will go to make sure that no one tries to bite more than they can chew. Roger, we will come soon. Don't get scared out there alone. Ha 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 very funny. Now continue what you were doing. And all of TH then cut the connection, and Tetsaya teleported to the location where he sensed a presence from, while the rest of his team kept on doing the extermination. Soon Tetsaya appeared in a barrier enclosed area and felt multiple presences around him. He then started walking towards the direction he felt the presences from, and soon reached an area where he found the Gremory group, minus Kiba, along with Sona and Tsubaki. He then looked up and saw a fallen angel with five pair of wings with black hair and pointed ears which he thought should be Kakabial. He then started walking towards the group alerting the people there. A-H-H. Shitty human cunt is finally here. Now get ready to get sliced apart. Tetsaya then looked at the person who called him and saw Freed standing there smiling maniacally at him and was shocked. Not because he didn't saw him earlier, he had already sensed Freed was present there by his magic. What surprised him was that, Freed was holding two swords in his hands, and from their aura, he guessed the sword to be Excalibur Mimic. Tetsaya then looked around to see an injured arena lying in Tsubaki's lap with most of her clothes shredded apart. He then immediately rushed towards her and started to check her condition, and found that she was still alive. He then healed most of her wounds and covered her with a blanket which he took out from his storage. His expression then turned cold, and he started releasing his aura, making the people around him feel suffocated. He then looked at the group present there and asked, which one of you bastards were responsible for her condition? All of them who looked at his gaze shivered in fear. All of them then gulped their saliva, but still no one answered him because they were scared by the aura he was releasing. Tetsaya got annoyed by that and gritted his teeth and said, did you all not hear me, who the hell among you was the one responsible for her injuries? Kakabiel who was looking at Tetsaya was drenched in cold sweat and thought, shit 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 shit, I didn't know that there was such a powerhouse in this town? I do heard Azazel talking to Vali about someone strong present in the town, but to think that someone of this power is in this town. If I go against him then I will definitely die. 
What should I do? Should I run away? No, all the preparations that I have done will go down wasted. I cannot turn around now. Not without starting the war in the least. I should kill one of the sisters of the Mayu, and that will be enough to ignite the flames of war. Tetsuya then glared at Kakabiel after hearing his thoughts and said, don't even think about it. Kakabiel who heard him got shocked and was now completely scared of Tetsuya. Tetsuya who noticed that asked, are you the one who is responsible for her injuries? Kakabiel gulped his saliva and was cursing himself to not get the detailed information about the town. He then decided to maintain the brave front and said, and what if I wa before he was able to finish the sentence half of his wings disappeared and were seen falling down the sky. Ah my wings did Saya who was now behind Kakabiel said in a cold voice, then you can count on this that your suffering will be worse than hers. Kakabiel who was now panting heavily glared at Tetsuya and said, you, you filthy human, how dare you do that to me? And fired several light spears at Tetsuya. Tetsuya who saw the spears coming towards didn't even move and used his psychic powers to crush the spears themselves, making Kakabiel shocked. Tetsuya then looked at Kakabiel with a cold expression and said, finished already? Kakabiel glared at him and gritted his teeth. He himself knew that he cannot beat Tetsuya, but his ambition to start the new war made him unable to run away. He then started a lot of light spears and swords around him, and started firing them at without even aiming. Tetsuya looked at Kakabiel and thought, so he finally lost the ability to think rationally. And started to dodge the spears and swords, while also sending some of his attacks in Kakabiel's direction. Kakabiel also started to dodge the attacks, but was not able to dodge all of them, and was heavily injured and severely bleeding. He then looked at Tetsuya with a glare, but suddenly his glare turned into a smile. Seeing his smile Tetsuya got confused but immediately understood what happened and frowned. He then turned around and saw a lot of attack heading towards the devils. He was not that much worried about the devils as they were able to dodge the attacks or run away, but the thing that worried him was Arena who was still unconscious. He immediately teleported in front of the group, destroyed a light spear heading towards Akeno, and formed a barrier in front of him blocking the attacks. He looked at Akeno and asked, are you fine? Akeno, whose eyes were shut with fear, slowly opened her eyes and blinked in surprise. She then looked at Tetsuya who was looking at her and blushed and immediately said, yes, I am fine, thank you for saving me. Tetsuya nodded his head in response and then looked at the devils and said, what the hell are you all still doing here? Just run away. Sona was about to answer, but Rias beat her to that and said, we are not going we will fight him as well. If he succeeds then the whole town will be destroyed. Tetsuya looked at her and said, just run away you will only get in the way. He then walked towards the unconscious arena, and then held her in her arms, and then moved towards Kaneko and said, take her and make sure that she remains safe. Kaneko nodded and took arena from Tetsuya's hands. Asami then came forward and said, is there anything that we can do? Tetsuya looked at her and said, just run away for now and if possible clear any stray fallen angels and exorcists in the way. All of them nodded and Tetsuya looked back at Kakabiel, and immediately his eyes widened in shock only to turn into a glare, that idiot all of them who saw that got confused and looked in the direction, and Sari is flying in the sky attacking Kakabiel with her power of destruction. Kakabiel who saw that smirked and thought, I just need to kill her, and my work is finished and fired a huge light spear towards Rias which pierced through the power of destruction she fired easily and started heading towards Rias. Rias who saw that the spear coming towards her got shocked and thought, my pride still came in the way. And closed her eyes waiting for the spear and her life. The spear was getting closer and closer to Rias, and Kakabiel was getting excited by each second. But just when the spear was a meter away from Rias Tetsuya came in front of the spear and slapped it away. Rias who didn't feel the pain she was expecting opened her eyes and saw Tetsuya's back. She was about to say something, but Tetsuya turned around and slapped her making all the people who were watching the scene surprised. Rias who was holding her cheek which was now red was surprised as well, and then slowly turned her head to look at Tetsuya. Tetsuya looked at her with an expressionless face and said, you do know why I slapped you, right? But Rias didn't say anything and just remained silent. Tetsuya's expression didn't change at all and he then said, if not then let me tell you. That guy is here to start a war, and the only way that he would be able to will be killing one of the sisters of Amayu. Rias still silent and didn't say anything. Tetsuya looked at her for a while and then said, stop being a bother and just get away from here. The war is the last thing that I want to happen. Think about your faults later. He then cast a Jinjutsu on her and made her unconscious. Tetsuya then took her and put gave her to the others and said, get her out of here as well. They all nodded and then took Rias away and stood somewhere in the back. Tetsuya then heard some noise and saw Kiba and Zenovia fighting with Freed, who was holding a sword which he thought to be the combination of the two holy swords. He also noticed that Kiba had awakened his balance breaker and was holding the holy demonic sword, while Zenovia was holding the Durandal. 
Tetsuya looked at Kiba and said, so you finally made the decision. Kiba who heard him turned his head and looked at him with a determined expression and said, yes, I will not let the strength that my friends have given me go to waste. Tetsuya gave a small smile and said, slice him apart. Kiba nodded his head and said, ah, don't worry about that I am in a much more hurry than you to do that. And then launched towards Freed. Tetsuya then looked at Kakabiel who was now barely recognizable, but he could feel immense killing intent aimed at him. Seeing that Tetsuya smirked and said, is that all? You were going to start a war with only that much strength? Kakabiel gritted his teeth and was about to say something, but before he was able to his right hand and leg were cut off. Ah Tetsuya who was now in the air, was holding his missing hand and leg then said, now all your left side is blank. No wings on the left, no hand on the left, no leg on the left. You are now a completely right person. And showed an innocent smile to him. Kakebi who saw his smile glared at Tetsuya and said, why the hell I, a great fallen angel, is being humiliated by the likes of a human. Tetsuya looked at him with a wondering expression and said, ho, you think that you are superior to a human. Then Mr. Superior what if I give you a chance. Kakabiel looked at him intently and asked, what chance? Tetsuya then said, I will ask you a question, and if you are able to answer it, I will no longer torture you, and will give you a painless death. Kakabiel who heard the deal wanted to tell it him, but thinking about his condition, he gulped his saliva and asked, and what if I am unable to answer it? Tetsuya looked at him with a cheerful expression and said, I will heal you back to your original condition, and will again make you a right person. Hearing the deal all the people looked at him with a deadpan look, and all had the same thought, damn sadist Tetsuya then said, now let's begin. Here is the question. All the eyes were set on him, and they were wondering what question Tetsuya was going to ask. Kakabiel was also worried and silently sent a signal to call his troops. Tetsuya who noticed that didn't do anything as he knew only a handful of them were left in the town, and they would be soon killed by his team. Tetsuya then gave a fake cough and said, so my question is there is a person whose eyes are covered by hair, tell me what role is he playing? Your options are a mob character, a hentai protagonist or a person who is enraged because the enemy pissed him off. There was complete silence in the surrounding no one was making any movement and were staring at Tetsuya with a surprised expression on their faces, with their mouths open wide. Tetsuya noticed that the surrounding around him suddenly turned silent and looked around. He then noticed their expression. Even Kiba whose sword was piercing through Valper's stomach was looking at him with the same expression. Tetsuya then looked at Kakabiel and said, hurry up and answer. I don't have all day. Kakabiel was twitching his lips when he heard that and was looking at Tetsuya with a hateful expression. The devils who were looking at him also twitched their lips and thought, he is very shameless. After Tetsuya said that all the eyes were at Kakabiel and noticing all the gazes at him, Kakabiel started sweating and got nervous. Kakabiel then lowered his head said hesitatingly, I I it's oh oh one of those PP protagonists in those animated videos who do that, and covered his face with his only hand with a blush on his face. Seeing him acting like that all the people who saw him were grossed out and had an unpleasant look on their faces. Tetsuya somehow regained his calm and said, WW what is the answer say it clearly, and stop acting like a maiden Kakabiel who heard that became even redder and started shivering and said, LL like I said, it's one of those animated videos in which the guy does SSC ah. No don't make me say such vulgar words all of them got creeped out and then took a step back. Tetsuya placed a hand on his chest and started taking deep breaths and start admiring, calm down Tetsuya, just think that you never saw that. Just imagine yourself surrounded by your girls wearing cat ears yeah, just cars them them and pat them yes just do that. Tetsuya them again got calm somehow and said, listen if you are going to answer vaguely, then I will give you the punishment right now, and you will die. Hearing that Kakabiel got scared and looked at Tetsuya and said, hey I answered you, I said that it is the protagonist of those animated videos. Tetsuya then said, animated videos is the ones called an I'm. Kakabiel immediately refuted and said, no no no, the protagonist of Anime don't have such eyes. Their eyes are clearly visible and they become strong by poking on breasts. Hearing that Tetsuya's eyes widened and he became silent. He got shocked by the thing that Kakabiel just said and didn't know how to respond to it. Seeing that Tetsuya was silent Asami came forward and said, that's no Anime, that must be some sort of hentai there are no protagonists in Anime who become strong by doing that. This time Tetsuya looked at Asami with a weird look on his face, and then thought, if only you knew Asami, if only you knew. He then gave a tired sigh and said, well uh, before he was able to finish speaking Zenovia interrupted him and said, quit wasting time and just kill him. And jumped at Kakabiel with her Durandal in her hand and slashed at Kakabiel. Tetsuya who saw that looked at her with a deadpan expression and said, and here goes the muscle head. Kakabiel who saw the girl coming at him, got alert and caught her sword with his hand and glared at her and said, do you think that I am at that level that you can defeat me? 
Suddenly an evil grim formed on his face and said, well anyway thanks for buying time for me. You were at least somewhat helpful. He then took out a vial filled with some green liquid inside it and thought, I don't want to use it, but this is my only choice. And then opened the lid and then drank the contents in it. Tetsuya who saw him bring out the vial was somewhat curious to know what the thing was and didn't stop him. Once Kakabiel drank that vein started popping out on his body and his muscles started enlarging. Zenobia who saw that jumped back and said, what is happening? Tetsuya who was looking at Kakabiel nonchalantly said, Kakabiel is going to mega evolve to mega Kakabiel, all of them looked at him for a while and then looked back at Kakabiel. Soon Kakabiel started started screaming at the top of his voice and started to emit some sort of light. Again Zenobia said, now what is happening to him? And this time too Tetsuya nonchalantly said, now he is turning into Super Saiyan 3, all of them once again looked at Tetsuya once again, but soon looked back at Kakabiel. Kakabiel who was done with his shouting and all soon stopped emitting the glow and was revealed to the others with a major change in his appearance. His whole body was now completely black with three eyes on his face, one being at the center of the forehead, and his severed limbs were now regenerated somehow. Tetsuya looked at him with an uninterested gaze and asked, so what was in that vial cause I can feel some devil energy in you now. Kakabiel looked at Tetsuya with a wide grin on his face and said, it's one of results of the experiments that some of my underlings were working on. It consists of the DNA of many of those shitty devils. Tetsuya who was still looking at him with a neutral expression said, so you decided to rely on some devils when you were in deep shit. Well pretty low for someone who wants to start the war with the three factions. Kakabiel snorted and said, don't spout nonsense. I am the one who is grossed out the most. To think that I, Kakabiel who fought the great war would have to rely on the devils. This is very humiliating for me. He then looked at Tetsuya and said, but given the circumstances that I am in, this is the only way by which I can survive to start the war. Tetsuya looked at him normally for a while when suddenly a grin appeared on his face and he said, do you think that you can defeat me with that? Well you are free to try on Bulke Coco Bowls. Kakabiel's grin widened and he said, oh I will kill you, but before that he suddenly blocked Zenovia again, who tried to slash him with her to Randall and said, you should not interrupt men when they are talking to each other. Tetsuya snickered and said, says the one who was acting like a maiden just a second ago. But Kakabiel ignored him and said to Zenovia, you truly are brave. To fight me even after your master is dead. Truly admirable. All of them who heard then got surprised, and Zenovia said, what do you mean by that? Kakabiel who heard that question said, oh, how could I do such a mistake, to let it slip out? Well whatever it doesn't matter. The truth is just as he was about to say anything further a bram of energy was fired at him, and half of his body was immediately destroyed. All of the people got shocked and looked at the source of the attack and saw it at Saya whose hand was aiming at Kakabiel's direction and then he said, don't go ahead and spread information that is not needed. But soon Kakabiel's body erupted in flames and he started healing. Kakabiel that grinned maniacally and said, the power of the Phoenix clan is really great. He then looked at Tetsuya and said, so you already know huh, well don't you think that it is unfair to not let the others know about the things that we do. He looked at Tetsuya with the same grin and started laughing, <laughs> all the people then looked at Tetsuya and then asked, what the hell is he talking about Tetsuya? Before Tetsuya was able to answer Kakabiel said, what I am talking about is, during the Great War, it was not only the Satans who died, but the God of the Bible died as well. And again started laughing. All the people there except for Tetsuya, Miyuki, Kurumi and Asami got shocked. They were not able to believe what Kakabiel said and were completely speechless. Suddenly all of them heard a voice and turned their head only to find Asia on her knees who was being supported by Miyuki. Seeing the shock on their faces and Asia's condition, Kakabiel started to laugh even louder, but suddenly stopped when he felt a huge amount of pressure on his body, and so was the case with the others. All of them then turned towards Tetsuya and saw him looking coldly at Kakabiel while he was unconsciously releasing his power. He then looked at Kakabiel and said with a cold voice, I guess you don't understand it the easy way, and suddenly Kakabiel was blown away by some invisible force. Tetsuya then suddenly appeared behind Kakabiel and grabbed his head and said with the same cold voice, the be prepared to learn it the hard way, and I promise it will make you feel that death would be a boon, and crushed his neck with his bare hand. Just when Tetsuya started to unconsciously release his energy a lot of distortions started to take place in the nearby areas. Suddenly the barrier surrounding them broke and a person clad in white draconic armor with giant blue wings appeared. But none of them cared about the person as all of them including the person himself, were focused on Tetsuya. The person then landed beside Tetsuya's team and was then noticed by the others. The people who didn't know him got shocked and immediately went to their battle stands, but the person didn't even look at them and asked Tetsuya's team, what happened here to make him go this serious? 
The girls in Tetsuya's team looked at the person in the armor and said, Ah Vali Kun, nothing special he just got on his bad side after hurting one of us. Vali then looked at Tetsuya and Kakabiel for a while and said, He is a goner. Tetsuya's team nodded their heads and looked back at him and saw Kakabiel screaming while his body was covered in black flames. His team had a sweat drop and said, From the looks of it, he is determined to torture him instead of killing him. Hearing them the others had a sweat drop as well. Suddenly Asami's gauntlet materialized and said, Are you forgetting about me white one? Making Asami surprised. The wings on Vali's back suddenly glowed, and a voice was heard which said, Oh, so you have been awakened Drake. It has been a long time. The gem on Asami's gauntlet glowed as well, and the voice said, Yes, it has been a long time. So are you here to fight? Hearing his question all of them looked at Vali as it was getting a bit nastier to look at Tetsuya's battle as it had turned into a bit gruesome. Vali, who was still covered in the armor shook his head and said, No I came here to neutralize Kakabiel, but I don't think that will be needed anymore. All of them nodded and then suddenly a magic circle appeared near them and Tiamat came out of it. She had a serious expression on her face, but once she saw that the others were alright, she sighed and became normal. She then looked towards Tetsuya's direction and saw him beating Kakabiel ruthlessly and then healing him to beat him again, and while doing that, he had an amused smile on his face. She then turned towards the others and pointed at Tetsuya and said, What happened? The others then told her what happened, and she looked back at Tetsuya for a while and said, He is a goner. All of them again nodded their heads, and then Tiamat looked at Vali and said, Oh, the white jerk is here. The wings on the back of Vali again glowed, and Albion said, And I see that the brute hag is here as well. So how old are you know before he was able to continue Albion felt a sudden killing intent which was coming from Tiamat. Tiamat still had a smile on her face looked at the wings and said, what happened go on? And raised her hand before turning it into a claw. Albion immediately got silent and said, I was saying that you are looking young as ever. Tiamat continued to smile and turned her hand back to normal and kept it down and said, oh, thanks for the compliment. All the others sweat drop at that, and Rake muttered, aggressive hag but immediately regretted that when he felt some killing intent aimed at him. Soon Tiamat calmed down and a smile came on her face. She looked at Albion and said, You know Albion, recently Drake is having dreams about dominating and paused for a bit. Hearing that some of them who were there understood what Tiamat was going to talk about, and Drake felt that G started sweating. The gem on the gauntlet immediately glowed and said, Hag, stay silent I beg you. Tiamat looked at Drake with an amused smile on her face and said, Drake Kun, why don't you calm down for a bit? Don't you see that I am talking to Albion? Vali's wings then began to glow and Albion then said, What is wrong with that since he represents dominance, it is right for him too before he was able to finish Tiamat interrupted him and said, Let me finish first, what I am saying is that Drake is having dreams about Drake again interrupted her and said, I beg you don't say that, but Tiamat ignored him and said. Dominating you Albion was again about to say that it was no problem as both of them were rivals and have been fighting for years, but Tiamat didn't allow him to say anything and said, in bed that is, the surroundings turned completely silent, and everyone who didn't knew about it before looked at the gauntlet with a weird expression, except for Rias and Arena, who were still unconscious and sent back along with Tsubaki respectively. Drake, who felt the gazes aimed at him, started to feel a bit awkward and said, Um. Albion who came out of shock after hearing the voice remained silent for a while and said, Sorry Drake, but I don't swing that way. Drake who heard that felt got a bit pissed and was about to say something, but Asami interrupted him and said, Don't worry Drake, this might be the first time that you have been rejected, it must have hurt a lot. Don't worry, we will find a new man. Male dragon for you. And started careezing her gauntlet. Drake who now had enough of all that got agitated and the gem on the gauntlet started to glow, and the voice shouted, I told you that I am not interested in males. The only wish I have is to fight with Albion. So don't misunderstand and get in between us. Hearing that Tiamat came forward and said, what he means to say is that, he is not interested in other males, and only wants to fight Albion, in bed that is. And he is a Yandir so if you come between his love he will tear you apart. Hearing that all of them sweat dropped and looked at her with a weird expression. But Asami nodded her head and said, hmm. Jis feelings were so deep, somehow I feel a bit sorry for him. Dre was about to refute, but suddenly felt another hand on the gauntlet, and stopped he then looked at the person who touched the gauntlet, and found it to be Miyuki, who was looking at the gauntlet with a helpless smile and said, I know how you feel Drake. The feeling of wanting to destroy anything and killing anyone who gets close to the person you love, I really understand you. Don't listen to them, kill all of them who come in between you and your beloved person. Now all of them including Tiamat, were looking at the two girls with a dumbfounded expression, and Tiamat said, they actually bought that nonsense. ALL except Asami and Miyuki, looked at her and thought, so, you knew what you were saying was nonsense. 
Suddenly another magic circle appears near them, and a twin-tailed magical girl came out with a cheerful expression on her face and asked, Hey everyone, what is happening here? All of them looked at her, and before they could say something the gem on the gauntlet glowed and all of them heard, You AI they all are bullying me you all are big meanies at this all of them sweat dropped, and the only thought that they had was, Why the hell are you talking like Seraphil? While everyone was bullying the magical Gurkhoff Kof Dragon of Domination, Tetsaya was fighting the Mega Evolved Fallen Angel. Kakabiel whose neck was snapped by Tetsaya, suddenly got covered in flames, and his neck was regenerated. A wide grin appeared on his face and he said, Hahaha not even such lethal attacks can affect me now. I am starting to like this power. He then glared at Tetsaya and said, Now let's see how long will you survive. Tetsaya who was looking at him coldly then said, Do you seriously think that I can't kill you because you have some chicken's power? Kakabiel smirked, Of course you can't because unlike those disgusting devils, I am not weak against holy element. And it is not like I have a mindset to get overwhelmed by this kind of situation. I survived the Great War, do you really have any chance of beating me? Tetsaya looked at him coldly for a while, and then an evil grin appeared on his face, and he said, then it only means that I have to test till what extent your mind can bear. And immediately activated his Sharingan and said, Amaterasu and immediately Kakabiel's body was covered in black flames which started burning his body. Kakabiel who saw the flames first snorted thinking that the flames will not affect him, because he had the phoenix bloodline in him, but soon he noticed that his regeneration was not able to keep up with him, and he started panicking. He then looked at Tetsaya and said, You, what have you done Tetsaya who saw the look on his face only smiled and said, Don't worry it is just a beginning. And then formed a lot of lightning spears around him and covered them with the Amaterasu, and fired them at Kakabiel. Kakabiel who saw the spears flying towards him, got panicked and immediately formed a sort of portal in front of him, and the spears entered the portal without harming him. Tetsaya who saw the spears getting sucked in the portal, looked at him and said, Abdon's power of the hole, ha huh, suddenly an idea came to his mind, and a bright smile appeared on his face, and he asked, hey, do you like to do it from the back? Kakabiel who was still being burned by the flames, looked at Tetsaya with a weird expression on his face and said, what does it have to do it with this situation? Tetsaya continued to smile and said, nothing, I am now also going to use the power of the hole, and casted a Jinjutsu on the fallen angel, suddenly a something penetrated Kakabiel from the behind. Ah Kakabiel turned around to see who was the one to do that to him, and saw a very huge man wearing magical girl costume behind him. The man gave him a wink and said, how is my magical stick Kakabiel who saw the strange creature behind got shocked and said, who are you and how dare you pp put ttt that thing inside. The man who the question said, I am the magical girl Mil Tan, and did a pose. Kakabiel who still had the magic stick, got shivers all over his body and shouted, Ah don't move suddenly he was embraced by someone from the front, and looked up to see another one of the creature who was behind him and said, Now who the hell are you? The man gave a wink to Kakabiel and said, I am the magical girl Mil Tan too. And do the pose. The man then looked at Kakabiel and then at the person behind him and asked, So shall we begin? The man behind Kakabiel nodded his head and said, yes, let's start. Kakabiel then looked at the two men back and forth and asked, begin what? Both the men then smiled and said, the three-way war and then both of them starts moving closer to the fallen angel. Kakabiel who saw them coming towards him wanted to run away, but for some reason his body was not moving. He looked at the two creatures with evident fear in his eyes and said, and then no stay away from me. No stay away from me. Stay away from me. But the men did not stop and kept on getting closer to Kakabiel, and once their bodies were touching, both the men came closer to his ears and said, SHHHH let's start the war, and who knows we can do the four-way war after this. Kakabiel who heard them got scared and shouted, Noo. Tetsaya who was watching his body burning with the black flames, kept on healing him when he was at the point of near death, to let him fight the war for a long time. And while he was doing that he also kept on piercing his body with lot of spears covered in magic, which corrupted his body from the inside. Soon he noticed a lot of people looking at him, and he turned around and saw the others looking at him and asked, what? Seraphol came near him and then pointed at Kakabiel and asked, what happened to him? Tetsaya looked at her for a while and turned towards Kakabiel and said, he is fighting the three-way war. Hearing that all of them got confused and looked at Tetsaya for answers. Tetsaya looked at them for a while and then said, Do you really want to know? I am warning beforehand the answer may make you unable to sleep for nights, and even make you puke. So do it at your own risk. Hearing that all of their thoughts wavered but still two brave dragons, Tiamat and Vali, along with the magical girl Seraphol nodded their heads and came forward. Tetsaya looked at them for a while and then said, Down don't blame me later. And then sent the image of what was happening to Kakabiel inside the illusion to their brain. Just within a few seconds all three of them fainted with some foam coming out of their mouths. 
Tetsuya caught Seraphol and Tiamat, while Vali crashed on the ground with him s armor getting deactivated. Tetsuya then looked at Vali and said, even a heavenly dragon was defeated by the sight of the three-way war. He then landed and came near the girls, and made both Tiamat and Seraphol lie on the ground. All of them were about to ask some questions from him, but before they were able to Tetsuya said, want to see what they saw? At this all of them became silent and didn't say anything, but yet again a brave dragon came forward, and the gauntlet on Asami's hand spoke, I wanna know? I want to see what sight can make even Albion unconscious? Tetsuya nodded and then sent the image to Drake's mind, while making sure that Asami did not see anything. Soon some sparks came out of the gauntlet, and the dragon inside the gauntlet stopped speaking. Tetsuya looked at the gauntlet and said, yet again another heavenly dragon lost. After everyone was once again conscious they all sighed thinking that what they all saw was just a dream, but once they noticed Kakabiel, whose body was devoid of any movement in the sky with black flames all around him, all of them became stiff. Seraphol then looked around and then immediately latched onto Sona and started sniffing and touching her all over. She then looked at Tetsaya and said, there is no way a magical girl can be like that Tetsaya who currently being hugged by Tiamat and was patting her head said, oh, you have yet to see a whole lot in the world Sarah. That person is one of the regulars in my restaurant. Vali who was looking at the motionless body of the fallen angel thought, how can someone be so cruel, Albion how long was I passed out for? The heavenly dragon sighed and said, I was unconscious as well partner. The scene shocked me as well, and since I heard Drake dreaming doing those things with me, the effect was much more worse. Both of them kept looking at the dragon for a while, and then thought at the same time, let's look at some butts once we go back home. He will be looking at some butts once he goes back. Tetsaya then looked at Vali and asked, so what are the orders, kill him or take him back alive? Vali came out of his thoughts and looked at Tetsaya while thinking, how can he talk normally after making someone suffer like that? He then sighed and said, Azazel told me to take him back alive for interrogation. He then looked back at the fallen angel and said, but I don't think that he will be able to answer anything after that. All of them looked at Tetsaya who averted his gaze and said, well let's bring him back to his senses. He then went towards Kakabiel and make him snap out of the Jinjutsu, and made his body back to normal as it was before he mega evolved. The magic he used to corrupt his body destroyed the contents of the vial, making him turn back to normal. Once Kakabiel came back to reality he didn't move the muscle for complete 10 minutes. Seeing that he has no intentions of moving, Tetsaya used some lightning and electrocuted his body. When the electricity passed through his body, his eyes whitened and he said, oh wwwwww that hurts who the hell did that? Tetsaya looked at H with a smile and then said, so how was the three-way war, when Tetsaya mentioned the war Kakabiel grabbed his butt, and then hugged Jis own body, and started shivering and said, don't talk about that, there is no way that a war can be that brutal. Even the old war was much better than that. Tetsaya then looked at Vali and said, here is your little old cocaballs. Make sure to lock him up real tight. Vali then sighed and made a transport circle, and was about to teleport Kakabiel away, but before he was able to Tetsaya, immediately cut all of his wings, making blood splutter out of his back. But Kakabiel who was now completely used to the pain, didn't felt anything and kept on shivering while hugging himself. Tetsaya who saw that clicked his tongue and said, he is already broken ha, huh? well send him away. All of them looked at him for a while, and then Vali sent Kakabiel away. Vali then turned towards Asami and said, Red Dragon Emperor Empress it seems out confrontation has to wait for a while. I hope that you give me a good fight in the future. Suddenly Tetsaya put a hand on Vali's shoulder, making him turn around only to find a smile on Tetsaya's face. Tetsaya looked at him for a while and then said, You see I don't have any objection if your fight extends only to a spar, but if the spar turns into anything serious, I will make sure that what happened to Kakabiel will only looks like a warning to whatever will happen to you. In return I am promised to fight you every once in a while. Hearing the first part the only thing that all those who knew what happened to Kakabiel gulped their saliva, but after Tetsaya said the second part of the sentence, Vali smirked and nodded his head, and then flew back to Azazel. Tetsaya then looked at others who all sighed and said, so all of this is finally over. Finally we can relax now. Tetsaya then smiled at them and then said, start working on fixing the area around here. We don't want the normal people to notice the destruction here, now do we? All of them have an annoyed sigh, but still nodded their heads and started maintaining the area around them. Tetsaya, who was sitting under a tree supporting the bodies of Asia, Tia and Sarah because of the shock they just received, though only Asia was seriously shocked, while Tiamat and Serafal were just making an excuse to laze around and cling to Tetsaya. Seeing them the other girls were sort of jealous of them, but let them do as they pleased. They were worried about Asia who learned about God's death, and they also didn't know what the other two saw about the three-way war, but one thing was for sure that, they were not willing to know about it. Tetsaya then turned his head and saw an unconscious red-headed girl lying beside her. 
He looked at Rias for a while and then said, Ah, I forgot to release her out of the Jinjutsu. And then did so and a few minutes later Rias started to wake up. Tetsuya then turned his head and started careezing the heads of the girls, who were using him as a support while sleeping, which made all of them smile unconsciously. Soon Rias got back to her senses and started looking around, and then noticed the others working on maintaining the area. Tetsuya then without even looking at her said, if you are awake then go and help the others. Hearing the voice Rias got surprised and turned her head, only to find Tetsuya and the three girls lying near him. She looked at him for a while and then without saying anything stood up and started helping the others. Tetsuya who saw her walking away from him nodded and thought, so, the princess can be understanding and obedient as well, hopefully she will start taking things a little bit more seriously from now on. And closed his eyes. Once they were all done all of them gathered near Tetsuya, who after checking that everything was done, dispelled the barrier around the area and said, well let's go back and rest. There was a whole lot of mess we had to face today. All of them nodded and were ready to go back to go back home, but then noticed that the girls were still lying on Tetsuya. Tetsuya was about to use his telekinesis to lift their bodies without disturbing them, but before he was able to Kurumi came close to him and kicked Tiamat off him and said, wake up lizard hag, time to vote back. Tiamat who was suddenly kicked by Kurumi with a small force behind the kick, immediately woke up and then hatefully looked at Kurumi, who only gave a bright smile to her. Seeing that Tiamat gritted her teeth and then stood up while clutching her stomach and was about to launch at Kurumi, but both of them immediately stopped when they experienced a huge pressure on their bodies and looked at Tetsuya who was also smiling at them. Seeing his smile all of them shuddered and then immediately stood straight. Seeing that Tetsuya stopped releasing the pressure and said, good, now let's go back for real all of them nodded, and then Tetsuya lifted both Asia's and Seraphol's bodies with telekinesis and opened a portal to his home. Tetsuya then looked at Sonan and asked, so are you taking Sarah back oh, before he was able to finish the magical girl said, of course I am staying with you tonight, I need to hug you a lot to get over the war incident. Tetsuya looked at the magical girl and said, so you finally decided to stop pretending to be sleep huh? Well whatever, you coming as well Sona, Tsubaki. Both of them then nodded and then entered the portal along with the others, leaving behind the Gremory Peerage, along with Zenovia. Tetsuya and the others then appeared in his house, and the first thing that came in his sight, was an unconscious Arena who was lying on the sofa. Tetsuya looked at Tsubaki and asked, did you bring her here directly earlier? Tsubaki shrugged her shoulders and said, you once said that your house defenses are the best in the world, so I thought that it would be the safest place to keep her. Tetsuya nodded her head and then stretched his body and said, well do whatever you want, I am going to take a bath. And then walked away. Soon the others came in as well, but Tetsuya didn't have any problem with that, as he was used to seeing them naked. The only ones who were shy and blushing were Sona and Arena who was now awake. After that Tetsuya and the others went back to their respective room, and the others were placed in the guest rooms, and all went to sleep. The next morning after waking up Tetsuya went downstairs and noticed Arena wearing a formal coat and pants with a briefcase in her hand. He walked towards her and said, so you are leaving, huh? Arena turned around and with a helpless smile on her face nodded her head. Tetsuya and Arena kept looking at each other for a while, and then Tetsuya said, come back soon. Arena cheerfully nodded her head, but suddenly both of them heard a voice, well I will appreciate if you never come back. And both of them turned around to see Miyuki walking towards them. Miyuki then stood beside Tetsuya and with a smile on her face said, so, you are going, I feel so sad. But the smile on her face indicated otherwise. Seeing the expression on Miyuki's face Arena's brows twitched and she said, well, if you feel so sad then I will come back as soon as possible. Miyuki elegantly shook her head and said, no no, you should not trouble yourself for our sake. Arena was about to say something, but Miyuki interrupted her and said, and I cannot be near some trash for long. With the elegance as earlier. Both Tetsuya and Arena looked at her for a while, and then Arena said, how can you say something like that with such elegance? Miyuki then placed a hand on her cheek, and then once again with her elegance said, Oh, seems like I forgot that a rowdy person like you cannot format understand such a way of speaking. Hearing that Arena was enraged and was about to lash out at Miyuki, but before she was able to Miyuki took out something from her storage ring. Miyuki then had a small rectangular box wrapped in some gift wrap in her hand. Tetsuya looked at her and smiled. Arena who saw the gift in her hand was surprised, and then pointed her finger and herself and said, For me? Miyuki nodded her head and with a smile on her face said, I cannot let you go back empty-handed, right? Arena took the gift immediately from Miyuki's hands and then hurriedly started opening the gift. Seeing her antics Tetsuya chuckled while Miyuki only HMPH apostrophe D and looked away. Once Arena had opened her gift it revealed a photo frame with a picture of all the people who were at Shiba residence the night before. Seeing the gift Arena smiled and then hugged Miyuki and said, thank you. 
Miyuki hugged her for a while, and then immediately pushed her away and said, don't take advantage of the situation. But this time Arena didn't get angry at her making Miyuki click her tongue. Tetsuya then took out a box as well, and then gave it to Arena and said, these are some cookies and recipes for Tauji and Grey-san. Please pass them on and tell them I said hi. Arena took the box as well and then said, I will do it. And then left the house after the taxi that she called for came in front of her house. Once she was gone Tetsuya looked at Miyuki and said, you were surprisingly good to her this time. Miyuki only smiled and then went inside the house. Seeing the smile on her face Tetsuya got a little suspicious and used his telepathy to listen to what Miyuki was thinking, and soon sighed and said, she will never change. And then went inside the house as well. Later that day all of them then went back to their original lifestyle, with Serafol going back to the underworld and the others back to school. After the school was over Tetsuya and the others as usual went to the orc and were greeted by a blue-haired girl wearing the Kuohai uniform. Tetsuya smirked and said, so you became a devil as well, Zenovia. Zenovia then came forward and slightly bowed her head and said, it's just as you said, I became a devil as well. And then spread her wings. Riaz then came forward and said, she is now my knight alongside Yudo. Tetsuya gave a thought about it and then said, I think a rook would have been better since she relies on brute strength rather than speed. Well whatever it is not my problem. Hearing what he just said all the people in the room fell silent and gave a thought about it. Soon Riaz sighed and then said, why didn't I thought of that earlier? Tetsuya ignored what she said and then asked, did you get the notice? With seriousness in his voice. Riaz turned serious as well and then said, yes, I did. She then turned towards her peerage and said, from now on I, Riaz Gremory does not have any authority over Kuo Town. Though we have the permission to live and continue our education just as we were doing earlier. The whole Gremory group fell silent, but soon all of them nodded their heads. Zenovia who was confused about what was happening there was being filled up on the situation by Asia, whom she had apologized to earlier. Once she got notified what was going on she nodded her head and thought that what happened was completely logical. Tetsuya and the others then left the orc as they had nothing better to do, and soon Tetsuya's phone rang, and he saw Azazel was calling him. Tetsuya looked at his phone for a while and then picked it up. Hello, hello Tetsuya, Azazel here. Are you free right now? Yeah, I am free. What happened? Good, can you come at my place for a while? There are some matters that I have to discuss with you about the incident. Fine. See you later. Tetsuya then ended the call and looked at the others and said, Azazel has something to discuss with me, you all can go on ahead and do whatever you want. All the girls nodded and then decided to go to a cafe to celebrate of Zenovia joining their group. Tetsuya was about to teleport, but then decided to walk towards his destination. Soon Tetsuya came to Azazel's apparent and then entered the house without knocking and opening the door with his magic. Azazel who just came out from the shower and was covered in a bathrobe, looked at Tetsuya with a deadpan expression and said, don't you think that it's rude to enter someone's house without knocking? Tetsuya shrugged his shoulders and said, stop talking like a teenage girl and get to the point already. Azazel laughed and said, what's the hurry come in and let's drink and play some games for a while. Tetsuya thought for a while and then agreed with his decision. Meanwhile at Arena's location. Arena was currently sitting in front of her father, who was scolding her for taking such a dangerous mission without even informing him, while Grace was also looking at her, while scolding her from time to time. Soon both of them stopped and then sighed, and Tauji said, you are not allowed to take any missions from now on without telling us beforehand. Do you get it? Arena then sighed and said, fine. But the parents looked at their daughter for a while, and then Grace said, but to think that both Tetsuya Chan and Miyuki Chan were related to the supernatural and were this strong. Taoji then nodded his head and said, yeah, but I am glad he was there, or else I don't think that this idiot daughter of mine would have come back. Soon all of them started discussing about the siblings, and then Arena remembered about the gifts that they gave to her. She then took out the boxes and placed it on the table and said, Tetsuya gave some cookies and recipes for both of you. Both the parents then smiled and then opened the box of cookies and started eating, and were immediately captivated by the taste. Soon Tauji's sight fell on the photo frame, and he took it in his hand and asked, who are all these people? I can identify Tetsuya and Miyuki, but who are the others? Arena sighed and then said, they are Tetsuya's girlfriends. Hearing then both Tauji and Grace got shocked, and the frame fell from Tauji's hands. Grace then started chuckling and said, I did think that he will turn out to be such a person, but to think that he will have so many girls. Arena then shook her head and then said, there are more of them, but they were not there at that time. Hearing that Grace again started chuckling. Tauji who saw the number of girls that Tetsuya had thought, why is life so cruel? Why he have so many beautiful girls and I get this brute? Suddenly Tauji felt a shiver run down his spine, and he turned his head saw Grace looking at him with a smile on her face. 
Seeing the smile on Grace's face Tauji gulped his saliva and said, Honey, is something wrong? Grace continued to smile and then said, I will see you later. At that moment the only thought that Tauji had was, I am done for. He then careezed the sofa he was sitting on and then thought, We will spending the night together, partner. Arena who saw her parents' antics, sighed and then picked up the photo frame, but immediately some tick marks appeared on her face. On the back of the frame was a message written by Miyuki which said, My dear Miss Trash, there is something that I want to tell you hahaha <laughs> you are still not in a relationship with Ani Isamayu single, virgin loser. Arena immediately punched the table and then shouted, That damn bitch. Back in Kuo town. At the Shiba residence Miyuki suddenly sneezed and then said, Looks like she really liked my gift. While Tatsuya and Azazel were having a gaming night with some drinks and snacks, the girls were having a party of their own, along with Asami, Kaneko, Sona and her P.E.R.A.G.E. except Saji. Tatsuya and Azazel were having a match, and when Azazel lost the game, he threw the controller on the floor and shouted, Fuck this shit how the hell are you able to win continuously Tatsuya silently placed a controller down and said, Look I guess. Azazel the pointed on the screen and said, That's fucking 150 games in a row did you fuck Lady Luck herself to get that kind of luck. There is a limit to that Tatsaya took a gulp of his drink and said, Well calm down, and I guess we should discuss what you asked me to come here for. Azazel then sighed and after a while he calmed down and said, Well let's do that I am tired of losing to you for so long. Tatsaya waved his hand and said, Let it go man, say how about I let you use astral projection form for an hour. Hearing that Azazel perked up and immediately bowed down in front of Tatsaya and said, Oh great one, bless this lowly being with the radiance of astral form. Tatsaya then said, Ho, this great one accepts your request you lowly crow. Hearing that Azazel immediately sat straight and shouted, Hot springs here I come. Tatsaya just laughed at his antics and turned serious and said, So, shall we begin? Azazel turned serious as well, and then started asking questions about the incident that happened in the town. After talking for a while Azazel was massaging his temples and said, So you mean to say that there were a total of about 700 fallen angels involved with him, and not only that nearly a thousand of stray exorcists as well. Tatsaya who had a glass in his head took a sip and said, Well nearly about that, I am not going to count each and every person that I will kill right. These numbers are the ones written in the documents I got from various hideouts around the town. And then took out those documents from his storage and placed it in front of Azazel. Azazel then took the documents in his hands, and then started to go through them, and after going through them for a while he sighed and said, I guess I have to match up this list with the one we have at the headquarters to check if there are some traders left or not. He then looked at Tatsaya and asked, can I get a copy of them? Tatsaya then snapped his fingers, and then immediately a similar bundle of documents appeared on the table. Azazel checked the new bundle for a while, and after confirming that there were no mistakes, nodded and then stored them. He then turned towards Tatsaya and said, thanks a lot. You don't know how much these documents are going to help me in the upcoming meeting to prove that Grigori was innocent in this matter. Hearing that Tatsaya looked at Azazel intently and asked, what meeting? Even though he knew that it must be the peace meeting he still pretended to not know about it. Azazel showed a smile, and then started to tell him about the meeting between the three factions, and the possibility of forming a peace treaty in the same as well. Tatsaya listened to what Azazel was saying, and after he finished saying all that Tatsaya said, in simple terms, you just want to laze around without the fear of war with the two factions, while also potentially forming a channel to research on the sacred gear holders among the other two factions. Not a bad idea if I say so myself. Tatsaya then turned serious and said, but won't it make you the target of the other factions, since the alliance may make them think that you all are scheming to take over the other factions. Azazel nodded his head and then said, yeah, that might pose a problem, so I am thinking of asking the other factions around the world to join the treaty as well, and even if they start to take violent actions, Tatsaya sighed and said, you can still somewhat laze around, since there would already be a lot of leaders with other factions to take on the lead. You really planned a very well. Azazel started laughing and then said, I really like how you can think from the same perspective of me. Yes I am aiming for that, and this will make me still have some power in my hand, while I may also get a lot of work from my shoulders at the end of the day, though the initial days will be a lot more hectic. Tatsaya snorted and said, oh please, I bet that you are planning to shift most of the work to other cadres, don't you? Azazel smiled and said, see you understand me, maybe we are connected by the string of fate. And immediately a glass went flying and hit Azazel on the forehead. Azazel then rubbed the place where he got hit and he said, hey what was that for? Tatsaya only looked at him with a deadpan expression and said, You were sounding very creepy there, so I brought you back to your senses. Azazel glared at him for a while, but soon calmed down and said, Well that is what I am thinking, but it depends on the others, whether they are willing to form the alliance or not. 
After all we have been at stalemate for a long time, so there are chances that it may not go as I plan. Tetsuya nodded and said, even if the leaders agree to this the people of the factions may not like to work with the others, as all of you for who knows why have a superiority complex. Azazel nodded and said, well we will think about it later. He then looked at Tetsuya and asked, so how about you? Tetsuya looked back at Azazel and asked, what? Azazel then said, what are you up for peace? Or war? Tetsuya smiled and said, I am not in favor of either. It does not matter to me whether the whole world perishes in a war or not, as long as the ones I care about are not involved, I do not care whatever happens, but cross the line even slightly, and Tetsuya just stopped at that and smiled at Azazel. Azazel who saw his smile felt a shiver run down his smile and said, you know, you can get a bit scary at times kid. Tetsuya just laughed and said, that I can get, but you don't have to fear till you do something to piss me off. Azazel immediately shook his head and said, there is no way that I am doing that I have yet a lot of things to do in life, I have to research a lot of sacred gears, have to watch a lot of porn, and all that has been made and will be made I. The future and there are a lot of games that I have not yet played out there as well. Tetsuya looked at him with a deadpan expression and said, you do know that the only useful thing that you are planning to do is research sacred gears right? Azazel just shrugged his shoulder and then asked, what about you? What are you planning to do in future? Tetsuya just sat back in a more comfortable position and then said, I just want to live a peaceful life with my family in the future. Azazel looked at him with a puzzled expression and asked, if you just want that what is your power for then, don't you ever think that you can dominate the whole supernatural world? Tetsuya shook his head and said, that will only make me further away from my peaceful life. And do you truly think that the others will not bother you if you don't have absolute power? See even Office and Great Red don't want to dominate the whole world, otherwise do you truly think that you all could survive even a full-powered sneeze from those beings? Azazel just then imagined himself getting killed when either of the dragon gods sneeze at him, and immediately shook his head and said, well, that will be totally unsightly. Tetsuya then looked at Azazel and asked, what about you? Have you not ever thought of settling down somewhere and start a family of your own? Azazel also sat back and then said, I did think of it sometimes, but my list for sacred gears made me unable to settle down somewhere without putting my family in danger, so I eventually gave up on that, but it's not like I regret that at all. Because of that I have experience with all kinds of women, and I am still able to research in the sacred gears without any problems. He then looked at Tetsuya and asked, and what kind of peaceful life are you talking about about for so long? Tetsuya looked at him seriously and then said, wake up, eat, sex and then sleep. Azazel looked at him with a deadpan look on his face, and he then said, you are pretty straightforward. But that is also one of the things that I like about you, and it makes hanging out with you fun. Subtly Azazel immediately remembered something, and he asked, hey what did you do to Kakabiel to make him this broken? We are unable to interrogate him at all. And why is that whenever I ask Vali about this topic, he immediately goes inside his room and ignore me. Tetsuya smiled and said, it is better if you do not know about this. You can get some serious damage. Azazel shrugged his shoulders and said, I have seen a lot in my life, kid. I hardly believe that there will be anything that can give many a serious shock. Tetsuya looked at him for a while and then said, don't blame me. And then sent the memory of the three-way war inside Azazel's head, and just like the others he got sacrificed in a matter of seconds. Tetsuya looked down on Azazel's corpse on the floor and said, he will not be gaining his consciousness back anytime soon. He then picked up his bag and said, thanks for having me at your home and then teleported back to his house, leaving behind an unconscious Azazel. After Tetsuya went home the scene which welcomed him made his eyes pop out. All the girls who came to his house for the house party were touching each other's chests feeling the softness and size of each other. Both the girls and Tetsuya were frozen at their places, but soon Tetsuya regained his senses and said, go ahead, carry on what you all are doing. Just think that I am not here. And then sat down a nearby chair and took out some popcorn from his storage and started intently watching the scene in front of him. Suddenly all the girls from Sona's peerage except for her and Tsubaki fell down on the floor and immediately hugged their bodies and started freaking out. Sona herself was blushing very hard but was not freaking out like the others, while Tsubaki though had a slight blush on her face, tried to show her curves properly to Tetsuya. Suddenly all the girls from Sona's peerage stood up and all of them said in unison, forget whatever you saw. Tetsuya looked at all of them with a serious face and said, not in a million years. All of them blushed at his response, and then Momo pointed her finger at him and said, you should have at least looked away or feel embarrassed about this. Tetsuya looked at her with a deadpan look and said, and why would a guy who is getting this kind of treatment would do that, and as a gentleman, it is my duty to appreciate the beauty that is presented before me to the full extent. 
All of them then blushed on being called beautiful, but suddenly got angry when Tetsuya said, so are you going to continue if not I am going back to sleep. All of them were about to snap at him when suddenly Miyuki came forward and said, forget about these laid back virgins on Isama. Do you want to feel mine with your own hands? When the word virgin came out of her mouth all the girls from Sona's peerage including Sona herself, felt that an arrow pierced through them. All of them then started glaring at Miyuki, and when Miyuki felt their stares she turned around and smirked at them. All of them then started gritting their teeth when all of them noticed Tsubaki moving towards Miyuki's direction. All the girls started to discuss among themselves. What is vice president going to do? I guess she is going to avenge us. Nothing less expected from our vice president she cannot let someone tread upon our pride. KYAA vice president is so cool, but soon all of them got surprised when Tsubaki completely ignored Miyuki and went past her and stood in front of Tetsuya. She looked at Tetsuya for a while and then took his hand, and then started walking away while taking Tetsuya with him. Seeing that all got surprised and Sona asked, where are you going Tsubaki? Tsubaki looked at Sona and said, I am going to erase the status of virgin off my record. And then without bothering for their response started walking away while still pulling Tetsuya along with her. Suddenly four figures obstructed her path and they said, just what do you think you are doing? Tsubaki looked at the four girls who stopped her path and found a four Nekashu, other than Himari, standing in front of her. Tsubaki looked at them with a serious expression and said, just move away from my path. Karen came forward and said, like hell that's going to happen. We still have not got our turn, and you are our trying to get ahead of your senpai. Tsubaki who was still glaring at her and said, I will not repeat again, just move aside. Suddenly all of them heard a voice and then turned their heads to see Sona walking towards them, and then she said, if you are talking about senpai and kauhai, then I guess I will be the senpai for all of you as I know him earlier than you all did. She then looked at Tsubaki and smiled. Tsubaki who saw her smile felt really happy and then said, Sona to think that you will take my C, but before she was able to finish Sona formed a magic circle and blasted Tsubaki away with a stream of water, and then she said, like hell you are getting ahead of me and then immediately tried to take Tetsuya's hand and run away with him, but could not get a hold of it. She then turned away and saw that Tetsuya was not standing there. She then start looking all over the room and saw Asami holding Tetsuya's hand while running away with him. Tetsuya looked at the scene taking place in front of him and thought, they all have gone totally nuts, and why 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 am I enjoying this situation so much? He then calmed down and then thought, looks like I have found a new interest of watching the whole world burn. He then turned his head and saw Asami having a weird grin on her face, and on seeing that he was sure that Asami was imagining herself doing the night activities with him. Suddenly Asami and Tetsuya were attacked from all the directions, but because of Tetsuya's training, Asami easily evaded while also saving Tetsuya as well. She then looked at Tetsuya and then said, don't worry we will be fucking each other the whole night. She then looked at her attackers and said with determination on her face, no matter what. Tetsuya looked at Asami with a deadpan expression and thought, this girl has her priority set. And what's with so much determination? The four Nekashu who attacked Asami came forward, and then Shizuka came forward and then said, so the stupid student is getting ahead of yourself. Asami snorted and then said, you four may be better than me in fighting and magic and all, but I can bet it with my life that you all are nowhere close to my knowledge about sex, and that goes for all the people in the room. Suddenly the whole room fell silent and all of them then started looking at Asami. Suddenly all of them formed a magic circle in their hands, and then all of them said in unison, like hell that matters. And started firing at Asami. Asami who saw all the attacks coming towards her, picked Tetsuya up who was completely carefree, and was simply enjoying the situation happening in the room, and started dodging the attacks, while also making her way towards the door. All of them saw what she was doing and started working harder on making her stop, but at last were unable to. Asami who was now in front of the door, was about to make a victory pose, when suddenly a punch came aiming at her stomach, and made blow away and crash to the wall. All the people in the whole room got shocked and then turned their heads towards the person who attacked Asami, and saw a white-haired lowly standing there with her fist coming out while she was looking down. Kaneko didn't look up and then said in her monotone voice, stop bothering Tetsuya senpai. Tetsuya then looked at Kaneko with a smile on his face and said, Kaneko-chan Kaneko then looked up, and once she did Tetsuya saw a light blush on her face, and then smelled something. He then said, Kaneko-chan are you drunk? Kaneko who looked at Tetsuya and said, Hick what are you saying senpai Hick I am totally fine. Suddenly Ingvold said, Yuck she is drunk she ate a whole box of alcoholic chocolates. Tetsuya looked at her with a deadpan look on his face, and then turned towards Kaneko and was about to say something, but before he was able to Kaneko stumbled on her feet and was about to fall down, but Tetsuya caught her before she was able to. Kaneko then looked at Tetsuya in the eyes and said, Senpai, I am feeling HOT Tetsuya, 
who saw the expression on her face, thought of taking her away soon, but controlled his urges and said, don't worry Kanekachan just rest for a while, and you will be fine soon. Kaneko then shook her head and said, Senpai, will you make kitties with me, NYAA, and at that moment something inside Tatsuya snapped and he said, I don't care whether I will be in the jail tomorrow or not, and was about to walk away. But before he was able to leave the room Kurumi and Ingvald grabbed his shoulders and said, but we do, now give her to me. Tatsuya was then brought back to his senses, and then immediately gave placed Kaneko in Kurumi's hands. All the girls looked at him with a weird expression on their faces, and noticing their gazes, Tatsuya looked back at them and said, I know that I have said this earlier, but I will say it again. I don't regret any of it. All of them kept staring at him for a while, and then Asami approached him and silently took his hand, and again started moving towards the door. Seeing that all of them came back to their senses and again started attacking each other. While this was happening Sona's peerage looked at the scene in front of them with a deadpan look on their faces, and then Momo said, how did any of this started? Suddenly they heard a voice and all of them turned their heads and saw Tatsuya sitting on the sofa with some popcorn in his hands, while watching the scene in front of him. Tatsuya then said, you were spouting G something earlier about looking at you all or something. By the way are you all going to do that again, if not I am going back to my room to sleep. Suddenly all of their lips twitched, but all of them thought, how can a person be so shameless? While the girls were still having their dispute, Tatsuya noticed that there was no chances of them doing anything, and so he went back to his room silently, without making anyone notice him and went to sleep. The next morning when he woke up and came down he was completely freaked out. All the girls were lying on the floor here and there looking just like corpses, and all the furniture in the room was totally devastated. He had some veins popping out on his forehead and he said, wake up girls, it's morning already. But the girls only squirmed in their places with no intention of waking up. Seeing that Tatsuya sighed, but then an idea came to his mind he said, the one who wakes up last will have the smallest breasts. And immediately all of them stood up straight with the first one being Kaneko. All of them blinked their eyes in surprise for a while, and then all of them gave a hateful glare to Tatsuya. Tatsuya just ignored them and then glared back at them and said, I don't know how you do it, but I want my house fixed back like it was within an hour. Do you understand? All of them shivered at his glare, and then immediately nodded their heads and started working on maintaining all the areas that they destroyed last night. After an hour all the girls were breathing heavily and were drenched in sweat. Sona cleaned her glasses and then put them back and said, My respect for the housemaids of the Citri Mansion has now increased by a very great extent. Hearing her the rest of her peerage nodded their heads as well. Suddenly the door of the room opened and revealed Tatsuya coming in there with a tray with some drinks. He then looked around the room and said, nice work girls, I didn't expect that you all would be able to do it within an hour. Here take these iced tea as refreshment. All the girls immediately gathered around Tatsuya and took a glass each from the plate and started gulping down the drink. Tatsuya didn't say anything and let them all relax a bit, and once he noticed that they all caught their breath Tatsuya asked, so what did you learn from all this? All of them didn't even take a second and answered, to never make a ruckus in someone else's house, and maids are the greatest. Tatsuya looked at them with a weird look on his face and said, you are right about the first part, but for the second one don't you know that the ones who are the greatest are not maids, but cat-eared maids. After he said that he gave a fake cough and then looked at Sona and said, on that account are you willing to help me in the restaurant just like the last time, but this time being in maid uniform with cat ears off. Just imagining about that makes my heart flutter. He then grabbed Sona's hand taking her aback by surprise. He then closed the distance between their faces making her face blush even more, and he then looked in her eyes and said, Sona will you do that for me? Sona who was completely flustered by his actions, absentmindedly nodded her head, and seeing her acting like that Tatsuya smiled and kissed her lips. He soon separated himself and said, thank you in advance. And then left the room. After Tatsuya left the room all of them still kept on looking the absent-minded Sona, and then Riya asked, what happened to her? Tsubaki snorted and said, her brain must have been fucked up because all that happened right now. She must be imagining herself being married to Tatsuya, and then living together with him with her two children in a small house, surrounded by the forest or something. At her words Sona came back to reality and said, hey. We have three kids not two at this all of them looked at her with a deadpan expression making her feel embarrassed, and then she covered her face with her hands, and she then said, just let me die. But just as she said that all of them heard a voice, and then they turned around to see Tatsuya sitting on a chair while drinking some iced tea. Tatsuya then said, if you die, what will happen to the three children of ours? Tatsuya said that and then had a small grin on his face, making Sona blush even harder. Suddenly Asami interrupted all of them and said, seriously, right now when we just finished the work. 
All of them then looked at Asami waiting for answers, but Kaneko beat her to that and said, President Riaz has asked to come to the school pool for the annual cleanup. All of the girls then made an O face, and then Sona said, Oh. Yeah the Riaz asked to let the orc do this job, so that they can enjoy the pool after it is cleaned. Tetsuya then said, then why don't we all go there and enjoy the pool as well? I mean it's actually very hot today. All the girls in Sona's peerage nodded and they looked expectantly at Sona waiting for confirmation. Sona was a bit hesitant on the matter because according to the school rules, they were technically not allowed to do so, but feeling the gazes full of expectations on herself, made her decision waver. Feeling the hesitation in Sona's thoughts Tetsuya was about to say something to her, but Tsubaki then came forward and said, just agree to it already, we all have worked up quite a sweat, and the pool will be a great way to get the heat off. I cannot let the opportunity to enchant Tetsuya with my swimsuit pass. I have to make my king agree to it by any means. Sona looked at her queen and then said, but Tsubaki, doing that will be going against the school rules, and as the student council we cannot do that. Tsubaki kept her calm and then said, but before the student council we are also teenagers, and it is a teenager's job to enjoy their time with his friends, right? Just agree you stupid king of mine, you are getting an opportunity as well. Sona who was still confused about what to do was taken out of her thoughts by Tetsuya who said, why don't you agree Sona, they all are willing to do so, and won't Riaz and her peerage will be doing the same as well. Plus he then got silent for a while and then said, I really want to see you wearing a swimsuit. And smiled at her making her blush. Sona then gave a fake cough and said, I guess, I can look over this matter for once, but don't you get habitual to this. All the girls from her peerage nodded in excitement, and then started going towards their homes to get their swimsuit. Tetsuya then walked towards Tsubaki and then stood beside her and said, of course I want to see you in one as well. And gave a slight peck on the lips and then walked away. Tsubaki who was completely stunned by her actions, stood there motionless Maki G Sona, and the the girls of Tetsuya's team look at her with a weird expression on their faces, and Sona asked, what happened to her? Karumi gave a slight chuckle and said, she is now in her own world of living with Tetsuya in a small house surrounded by the forest with their two children in their home. Tsubaki then snapped out of it and then said, hey. We have three kids not two after everyone was ready with their preparations, all of them then gathered at the school and then started walking towards the pool. When they reached the pool the remaining Gremory group was surprised by the, the sudden appearance of the student C-O-U-N-C-I-L except Saji and Tetsaya's group. Tetsaya then looked at Rias, raised his hand and said, Yo Rias looked at him for a while and then looked at Sona and asked, what happened for the student council to be here? Sona hesitated for a bit and said, we came here to enjoy the pool as well. At this statement Rias widened her eyes and said, you want to do something that causes breaking of the rules. Sona shifted her gaze and said, don't misunderstand, I only came here because the others were willing to so I had to tag along with them. At this Tsubaki came forward and said, yes, what Sona is saying is true. She is just tagging along because she we were willing to enjoy the pool. Sona then turned her head and looked at Tsubaki with a grateful gaze which crumbled instantly when Tsubaki said, she asked not going to wear a swimsuit and will sit out of the pool and will only watch over us. She then turned her head and with a smirk on her face said, right president? Sona had various tick marks on her forehead, and she said, yes, what Tsubaki is saying is true, seeing them Tetsuya side and came forward and gave a chop on both Sona's and Tsubaki's head and said, stop teasing Sona. Only I am allowed to do that. And so Tan, try to be honest with yourself. Both of them looked at him with a pout on their faces on seeing which Tetsuya only smiled. Tetsuya then looked at the Gremory group and said, simply said we came here to enjoy the pool once it is clean. Riaz smiled and said, that's alright, the more the merrier. Tetsuya nodded and said, good, now get back to cleaning and do it fast, it is very hot out here. And then placed his stuff down and laid back on a chair. Seeing him the others who came with him except for Asami and Kaneko did the same as well. The Gremory group looked at them with a speechless expression, and then Riaz said, aren't you all going to help? Tetsuya looked at her with a weird look on his face and said, and why would we? Isn't it the orc's job to clean the pool? Hearing his shameless but true answer, Riaz gritted her teeth and said, how much shameless can you get? Tetsuya just smiled and said, hurry up, we don't have the whole day. Riaz glared at him for a while, but soon sighed and said, whatever let's just finish th work soon. Akeno looked at Riaz and said, Riaz, I think that I forgot my swimsuit at home, I will go and fetch it quickly. And immediately made a magic circle and teleported herself without even waiting for Riaz's answer. Akeno suddenly appeared in an alley and the said, Ara Ara, if I knew that Tetsuya Kun was coming, I would have chosen a good swimsuit, well it's not too late anyway. And then came out of the alley and in front of a swimsuit store and went inside. Meanwhile in the school Riaz and the remaining Gremory group were scrubbing the floor of the pool, while Tetsuya was instructing them. 
Move your hands quickly, what kind of knight you are Kiba, use your speed, Ria's scrub the corners as well, and don't lag behind the others. Asami boost your physical abilities and start working faster, Kaneko-chan wear these cat ears first and then start cleaning, and then threw a pair of them towards Kaneko. Kaneko stopped working for a while and stared at the thing which Titsaya threw at her for a while. Suddenly an idea came to her, and then she put the ears in her head and thought, time to use Nico power. She then looked at looked at Titsaya and said, Senpai it is too much work for me NYA, can you please help me NYA, and then made a pose. Titsaya got silent for a while, and then used his magic to clean the pool immediately, and then started using his water magic to fill the pool with water. All the GIRLS and Kiba gathered around Kaneko and said, good job Kaneko-chan. Kaneko who still had the emotionless face said, no problem. And then took off her ears and placed it back on her chair. Titsaya looked at the group and then said, work's done, let's get changed. All of them then looked at the clean and fresh water eye the pool, and then nodded their heads, and then started walking towards the changing room. Suddenly a magic circle appeared and Akeno came out of it and said, I hope that I didn't take long. And then looked at the pool and said, you guys already did the work so fast? Ria shook her head and said, no, Tetsaya just lost to the cats. Which made Akeno confused, but she shrugged it off not caring about it. All the girls then went inside the changing rooms, and then Tetsaya looked at Kiba and said, let's get going. Kiba nodded his head and then went together with Tetsaya. After Tetsaya and Kiba went inside the changing room and both of them started taking off their clothes. Tetsaya felt Kiba intently looking at him. Tetsaya turned around and said, what happened, don't tell me that you suddenly started having feelings towards me. And even if that is true I am really sorry I cannot accept you, first I am totally straight and second, even if by some miracle you turn female, I only see you as my friend. Kiba looked at him with a weird expression on his face and said, dude, you hit your head somewhere or what? There is no way I have feelings for you. Tetsaya sighed and said, I am relieved to hear that, so what is in your mind? Kiba stayed silent for a while and then said, I would like to thank you for the help you offered during the whole this incident. Even if you were not related to it, you still helped me a lot. So I want to thank you for that, and I promise that whenever you need my help, I will gladly help you. Tetsaya just smiled and said, no need to sound over dramatic, I helped you because I didn't want one of my few male friends to die, or worse become a mindless killer. So don't sweat it too much. Kiba who heard him smiled as well and then said, but what I said about help still stands, just ask me, and I am even willing to sacrifice my body for you. Tetsaya looked at him with a weird look on his face and said, that sounds way too gross. Pervert. Kiba twitched his lips but didn't say anything, but soon as if Tetsaya realized something he smiled and said, I know one way that you can offer your body. Kiba looked at the expression on his face and said, did, you suddenly awakened a new desire of making males dress up like cat girls? This time it was Tetsaya's turn to twitch his lips, and CG that Kiba smirked and then said, I have been learning quite a lot from you. Tetsaya snorted and said, yeah yeah whatever now what I was saying was that you can offer your body by sometimes working in the restaurant to attract a lot of female customers there, oh, and since you want to wear cat ears so much we can do that as well, it will only increase the profit. Tetsaya then turned serious and said, and don't underestimate this world, I have faced up against an enemy who can turn others into lowly cat girls with his invention even men as well. Somewhere in a place full of people whose bodies were slightly transparent a person can be seen wearing a lab coat working on something. Suddenly the person sneezed and he said, who the hell is remembering me even after I am dead, did someone find my collection of lowly magazines in my drawer? Suddenly the door was opened and a person came inside and said, Nabirius sama did something happen? The said person shook his head and said, nothing, just thought that someone was remembering me? The one who asked the question shrugged his thoughts on the matter and asked, is the lowly maker ready yet? Nabirius looked at the person and said, not yet, I am still not able to make it work on the souls of the people present here, it just passed through them. He then slumped his shoulders, but soon became determined and said, but, I will not give up, I will definitely complete this device, and make the people acknowledge me databeo. Hearing his determined tone the other person became spirited as well and said, yes, we will make this place, lowly soul world. Suddenly the door was knocked, and then they heard the words which scared the shit out of them, FBI open up suddenly the research facility was broken from various places, and many armed people who heart transparent bodies as well came and pointed their guns at the two people in there, Seeing the armed people surrounding them the device that Nabirius was holding fell from his hand and hot destroyed after crashing on the ground. Seeing their dreams literally shatter in front of them the two people fell on their knees and shouted, Noo! But the armed men didn't care about that, and one of them said, catch them and lock them up. All of them nodded and then restrained the two of them. Kiba looked at Tetsaya in disbelief and then said, stop spouting nonsense there is no way that's true. 
Tetsuya looked at him for a while and then took a box out of his storage and then took the lid off the box to reveal a gun-shaped device. Tetsuya looked at Kiba with a serious expression and said, What you are seeing in front of you is the device which I was talking about. Wanna try it? Seeing the seriousness in Tetsuya's eyes, Kiba knew that Tetsuya wasn't joking around he fell silent for a moment until something clicked in his mind, and he asked, By the way why are you carrying it instead of destroying it? Tetsuya immediately covered the box back and averted his gaze and said, Research purposes. Anyway leave it, we are getting late. Kiba looked at his friend with a deadpan look on his face, but suddenly his gaze shifted and fell on Tetsuya's member, and his lips immediately started twitching, and he thought, why the world is so unfair. After both Tetsuya and Kiba came out of the changing room, and the sight which welcomed Tetsuya made him completely speechless, and the only thought that came to his mind was, somehow this looks even better than they are completely naked. Tetsuya's gaze then traveled through each of his girls making them all blush, and then Tetsuya gave an appreciative nod and said, yup, all of you look absolutely stunning. All of them smiled at his response and then went with each other to enjoy the pool. Suddenly Tetsuya felt a rather soft sensation on his back, and without even turning around he asked, what happened to Keno-san? Akeno gave a few 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 full laugh and then said, ara ara, does Tetsuya kun recognize me so well to know who was behind you without even looking? Tetsuya turned around and shrugged his shoulders and said, Isn't it obvious, we have been around each other for a rather long time either in the club or battles, it is easy for me to recognize your presence when you are around. Akeno just smiled and then said, So Tetsuya-kun, how am I looking? And did a pose which made her curves even more stand out. Tetsuya wanted to say that the what she was wearing could hardly be called a swimsuit, but keeping that to himself he said, Well, I guess this rather suits you. You look very beautiful in it. And gave a smile. Akeno who was expecting Tetsuya to blush or have a lewd look or thoughts about her appearance, was totally surprised when she didn't find either of the two coming from Tetsuya, and instead of making him blush, she started blushing herself on receiving the honest comment from Tetsuya. Tetsuya who saw Akeno spacing out in front of him, waved his hand in front of her eyes, making her snap out of her trance. On seeing that Akeno came back to her senses Tetsuya said, well we should get going and enjoy the pool first, we can talk some time later as well and started walking towards the pool when suddenly Akeno grabbed one of his hands and put it in between her breasts and said, yes, let's go, and started pulling him. Tetsuya who was being pulled by Akeno, didn't mind that and shrugged his shoulders and let himself get dragged by her, and also he was liking the feeling of being enclosed by the softness of Akeno's breasts. On seeing Tetsuya and Akeno coming together towards the pool the Tetsuya's group and some other girls were slightly jealous by her, but let them be. They didn't want to ruin the mood of everyone as they all came to enjoy the pool and decided to deal with it later. Tetsuya and Akeno were about to enter the pool when suddenly Kaneko came towards the two of them and said, Senpai can you teach me how to swim? With an evident blush on her face. Tetsuya then looked towards Akeno who understanding the meaning of the gaze, released his hand and said, Teach her well, but I will have you spend some time with me, L-A-T-E-R. Tetsuya just sighed and nodded his head. He then looked at Kaneko and patted her head and said, sure, let's get going Kaneko-chan. Making the already blushing Kaneko even more flustered, but she still nodded her head. Tetsuya then went with Kaneko towards the shallow end of the pool and started her teaching how to swim while holding her hands. Tetsuya kept looking at her to make sure to not let something happen to her because of his mistake. But for the white-haired Nekashu who noticed Tetsuya gaze continuously at her was feeling very embarrassed by it, but knowing that he was only looking at her out of concern, didn't say anything. When Tetsuya came at the edge of the pool he suddenly stopped making Kaneko crash into him, but he caught her. Tetsuya then looked at Kaneko and said, I think that this much must be enough for now, so shall we take a break? Kaneko looked at Tetsuya and nodded her head. Tetsuya then picked her up, much to her surprise, and then got out of the pool and placed her on the ground. Tetsuya then looked at her once again and patted her head and said, You did well, I think you will be able to swim soon enough. And then started walking away leaving behind a slightly embarrassed Kaneko, Tetsuya then sat on a chair and then gave a deep sigh and said, finally, some chance to rest. There have been a lot going around the town recently. He then stretched his body and then lied down on a chair and closed his eyes. After some time Tetsuya who was just lying down comfortably, suddenly felt someone standing in front of him, and so he opened his eyes to see a red head standing in front of him. Tetsuya looked at the person for a while and then asked, what happened Karen? Need something from me? Karen just smiled and said, would you mind rubbing the suntan on me? And took out a bottle from who knows where. Tetsuya looked at the bottle for a while and then said, sure, lie down Karen continued to smile, and then lied down on her stomach and took off her top and said, be gentle okay in a sultry voice. Tetsuya who heard her voice just smirked and then put the cold liquid directly on her back, making her give out a shriek. 
Tetsuya just smiled and said, don't worry, I will be gentle, and started applying the tan all over her body, making her give out moans of pleasure, which made all the girls around them blush. When Tetsuya was done all the Karen was left unconscious and had a satisfied expression on her face, and seeing that she was sleeping, Tetsuya sighed and tied her top back at her, and covered her body to not let her catch cold. Tetsuya then looked around and saw him surrounded by the girls, all of whom were holding a bottle of suntan. Tetsuya who understood what they all wanted sighed. Kiba had already left the pool and went somewhere to get a drink for himself leaving Tetsuya all by himself. Tetsuya then looked at his group along with Sona, Tsubaki and Asami and said, just lie down and don't make any ruckus about not dealing with someone first, otherwise I am not doing it. All of them sighed but still nodded their heads and then lied down and let Tetsuya do his work, and just like with Karen, all of them had a satisfied expression on their faces and were sleeping blissfully. While Tetsuya was rubbing the oil on their bodies he was surprised as even the girls from Sona's peerage, along with Ria's, Akeno and Kaneko came as well, and since he was doing it for the others, he decided to do it for them as well. Tetsuya who was finally done with his work sat back and looked at the girls. His gaze then landed on Akeno, and then he thought, I guess I should tell her now. While he was in his thoughts, Ria's who was still not asleep, looked at Tetsuya, who was busy thinking something and started dot walking towards him. Tetsuya who noticed someone coming towards him came out of his thoughts and asked, Want something princess? Ria's shook her head and silently sat beside him. Tetsuya didn't gave it much thought and just continued to think about some things that he had to do. Suddenly Ria's looked at Tetsuya and asked, Tetsuya, do you think that I am an irresponsible king? Tetsuya who clearly heard her question didn't hesitate for a bit and said, Yup. Seeing how bluntly and quickly he answered Ria's got disappointed. Tetsuya looked at her and said, you are very irresponsible, and I think I don't need to tell you about all the irresponsible things that you have done, the latest being the management of my territory. He waited for her to respond, and then he saw her nodding her head. Tetsuya nodded as well, your only good traits are that you treat your peerage kindly and have a lot of innate potential, but your bad traits completely turns your situation to negative. You are not a hard worker and very arrogant, and that is what leads you to your downfall. Ria's who heard his words felt like something was piercing her, but she didn't refute it this time. She had thought a lot about what Tetsuya told her previously, and the more she thought about that the more she felt that she was in the wrong. She then gave a sigh and said, do you think I can improve? Tetsuya just smiled and said, only you can answer that question. And stood up and started walking away. Ria's looked at Tetsuya's back and said, where are you going? Tetsuya didn't even turn around and said, washroom and continued to walk. Soon he came in front of the washroom, and he then took out his phone to call someone. After he was done talking he ended the call and started walking back, but suddenly the he encountered Zenovia on his way and said, where were you all this time? Zenovia turned around and saw Tetsuya standing in front of her and said, oh Tetsuya, it was my first time wearing a swimsuit, so it took longer than I expected to wear it. So how do I look? Tetsuya looked at her from top to bottom and said, you look gorgeous in it, but don't you think that it is slightly on the revealing side for someone who was a follower of the church, not so long ago, but thinking about the outfit that you wore as an exorcist, I think this one is more normal. Zenovia nodded her head and said, I just wanted to try the things that I wanted, not something based on what the others wanted me to do, something that the church taught is while serving under the Lord. Tetsuya nodded and thought, I learned something new about the ways of the church. Tetsuya looked at her and said, well, it is natural to have desires. She then walked closer to Tetsuya, making him a bit confused by her actions, and then she said, Tetsuya, there is something that I want your help with. Tetsuya who now somewhat understood what she wanted to ask for nodded his head and said, first tell me what you want, and then I will think about it. Zenovia nodded and said, I want to have your children. Tetsuya who heard the answer he was expecting looked at her with a neutral face and then said, and who filled you head with such idiocy? Zenovia was a bit surprised why his comment and said, no, it is not something that someone else told me about, I wanted to do this of my own free will. She then paused for a while and then said, just like I told you earlier, while I was working for the church, we were not allowed to do things that we desired, and we simply locked all those desires inside our hearts. But now when I am given the chance to act according to my desires I want to Tetsuya interrupted her and said, you want to experience something that only a girl can and decided to give birth to a child. Hearing him Zenovia looked at him with a diligent expression on her face and nodded her head. Seeing the sincerity on her face Tetsuya sighed and said, I don't know whether to praise you for your sincerity or hit you for your idiocy. And started massaging his temples. He then looked at Zenovia and said, did you even think about what your actions might lead to? Seeing that no response was coming from her his brows were twitching and he then said, first of all, let's presume you somehow got pregnant, do you think that you will be able to enjoy your school life which you have just came to experience in that situation? 
This made her shocked, and she then started thinking about what might happen if you do get pregnant. Tatsaya didn't wait for her and then said, Second, you are asking someone whom you have not met even for a week to have children with you. Are you really that stupid, what if the person didn't have a good personality, and would not have even helped you to not even take care of the child? And don't tell me that you were planning to take care of the child on your own? At this Zenovia didn't respond and only looked in Tatsaya's eyes. Tatsaya sighed and said, so you were planning that without even considering for your partner's feelings? Zenovia immediately shook her head and said, no, it's not like that if you were to say that you were alright with taking care of the child along with me, then I would have done so, but if not then I was planning Takiji care of it myself. Tatsaya then said, of course I will take care of the child and the mother after all, I will never have a child with someone whom I am not in love with, and I can easily say that right now I have no feelings for you like that, I only consider you my friend for now. At this Zenovia got a bit depressed and slumped her shoulders, and seeing that Tatsaya patted her head and said, don't treat either yourself or you partner as a breeding stock. Once you find a person that you like you will come to a stage together when you both will want to have a child, it should not be because of you wanting to try something that a girl does. Zenovia looked at Tatsaya with a confused expression and asked, what does that mean? Tatsaya just smiled and ruffled her hair and said, you will understand one day. Now let's go, you don't want to let the opportunity to enjoy with the others at the pool go waste, right? And then started walking towards the pool. Zenovia who was looking at Tatsaya's back, touched her hair where he patted her for a while, and then started walking towards the pool, thinking of understanding what Tatsaya told her later. After all of them were done playing around and relaxing all of them decided to go back to their home as it was getting quite late. Tatsaya and his group decided to stop by a few places before going back as the girls wanted to hang out for a bit longer with the others. Tatsaya who himself was quite tired from all the things that have been happening, complied easily and was alone on his way back home. He have been casually walking on the road while simply enjoying the calm around him. He then stared in the sky and thought, this week must have been the most stressful one I ever had after coming to this world, all the things are occurring back to back without any huge gap in between them, first the exorcists, then Kakabiel, and now I think it is the time for the open house and the peace treaty after that. Seriously this is too much for me, and why the hell all of these things have to take place in Kuo, they can choose any other popular location to do their stuff. Suddenly Tatsaya got alert as his instincts started to warn him, he got in a defensive stance to look out for any attack that was aimed at him, but what Tatsaya noticed was only a magic circle that appeared under him. Tatsaya could have easily got away from the circle, but after feeling the amount of power that circle was giving, and also the formation of a very strong barrier around him, Tatsaya got a bit curious, and decided to meet the person who was inviting him. Suddenly the light coming from the circle started glowing brighter and brighter, and soon Tatsaya vanished from the spot, and everything in the surrounding turned back to normal. Tatsaya who was suddenly teleported from the Kuo town, appeared in a place which Tatsaya found to be endless. The whole space around him was colored differently, and he thought that it was kind of beautiful on its own. Suddenly he felt that the atmosphere around him was trying to crush him, so without wasting any time he formed a barrier around him. After forming the barrier he started to look around to find the person who invited him, but was not able to find anyone. He then decided to sense the area around him to search for any life signals, but just as he did that he felt an enormous amount of energy coming towards him. This was the second time Tatsaya thought that the being coming towards him was powerful, the first one being office, and then suddenly something clicked his mind, and he understood who invited him and where he was at. He then looked around once again and then said, so this is the infamous dimensional gap, huh? He then removed some of the limiters on his body and then said, and you must be the one who invited me here right? And then turned around to see a huge red western dragon with a large horn on his snout, and golden eyes. The dragon who was moving towards Tatsaya, suddenly stopped on his tracks when he noticed a power that Tatsaya was releasing, and also got ready for any attacks that might come his way. The dragon the looked at Tatsaya and said, Indeed, I am the one who called you here, I am Great Red, and this is my home, the dimensional gap. Tatsaya looked at the dragon curiously for a while and then asked, And what might be the reason for the dragon of dragons to call me here, I don't think that I have done anything to earn the privilege to meet you. The dragon looked at Tatsaya for a while trying to gauge his strength, but the only thing that it was able to perceive was the human in front of it was dangerous. The dragon then said, I called you here because I was curious? At this Tatsaya made a confused expression on his face and asked, curious? The dragon nodded its head and said, yeah, I am curious, why am I not able to read you? Tatsaya felt silent for a while, and was thinking what the hell did the dragon ask him just now? Not being able to understand what the dragon meant Tatsaya said, and what do you mean by reading me? be a bit more clear. The dragon then said, what I mean to say is, why am I not able to read your mind or your dreams? 
Though Tetsuya understood what the dragon was trying to ask, but still didn't know what was the answer to the question. Tetsuya looked at dragon with a questioning gaze and then asked, and why should you be able to read my mind? The dragon looked at the human in front of him for a while and then thought, is this human an idiot or what? Tetsuya who clearly heard what the dragon was thinking had some tick marks on his forehead and then said, you are quite a right one to think that I am an idiot, even after you called me here without my permission. The dragon's eyes widened a bit and it asked, you you were able to read my thoughts? How this is impossible? Even the person who was supposed to have the best mind reading abilities was not able to read my thoughts, so how does a human like you were able to read my thoughts? Tetsuya looked at the dragon with an expressionless face and then said, fuck you, that's how? The dragon who heard the answer to his question became a bit pissed, but for living over millions of years, it compassed itself because of its experience, and the dangerous feeling that Tetsuya was giving was a reason as well. The dragon then said, can you be a bit more serious and answer my questions? Tetsuya just shrugged his shoulders and said, how am I supposed to know why you are not able to hear my thoughts, and I was able to hear your thoughts because I was able to. Great Red then said, you do know that it doesn't answer any of my questions, right? Tetsuya simply shrugged his shoulders and said, like I care about that? The dragon who seemed to have getting more and more pissed and asked, you know you are a very rude person. Tetsuya simply smiled and said, thanks, I am very proud of it myself. The dragon started to release his aura in order to make the human in front of him scared a bit, but to its surprise, Tetsuya was completely fine by the pressure that the dragon was releasing. Tetsuya looked at the dragon with a bored expression and said, if you are done with that, retract your aura, it will not make any difference. The dragon got even more curious about Tetsuya and did as he told. Tetsuya then nodded and said, good, how about you answer some of my questions, since we are not able to find the answers to any of yours? The dragon thought for a while and then said, ask away, there is nothing better to do anyway. Tetsuya nodded and asked, why does Rufus want to kick you out of here? Dragon looked at him for a while and then said, well that is an interesting question. You do know that both Office and I were beings that were originally created in the dimensional gap, right? Tetsuya nodded his head and said, yeah I know that. The dragon nodded and said, you see the first one out of us to exist was Office, and she was the only one live in the gap, because at that time the only concept that the world had was infinite as nothing other than the void existed at her time. But slowly and slowly the life began to evolve on various realms other than the gap, and soon beings capable of thinking started to appear on the surface of various realms, giving the concept of thought and dream, and because of the influence of those thoughts and dream my existence came into existence, as I embodies the concept of the dream. The dragon fell silent for a while and then said, you know the aura you give out is not of a person of any realm I know of? Who are you really? Tetsuya looked at the dragon for a while completely speechless when suddenly an idea came in his mind and he said, my identity? I the supreme being of reincarnation, the name is Truck Kun. After Tetsuya said those words Great Red stared at the human in front of it in silence and said, quit joking and tell me who you really are. There is no way that you are Truck Kun. He never reincarnated himself, he only do it for others, and there is also the fact that you don't have his aura. Also I banned anyone sent by him to reincarnate in this universe. Tetsuya looked at the dragon in front of him in surprise and asked, you banned him from reincarnating others in this universe? Why? Great Red gave out an annoyed groan and said, many of the people he sent here to reincarnate were trying to take over my body, and since they are all souls, it gets very annoying to deal with them, so I simply sealed off the dimension for others to come over here. Tetsuya who heard what the dragon just said got in a deep thought, if the dimension is sealed, how the hell was I able to reincarnate in this universe, don't tell the one who sent me here is even a higher level being than the legendary truck. Suddenly a paper appeared out of nowhere and landed in Tetsuya's hands. Tetsuya then looked at the paper carefully and found out that it was a message from the being itself. Hey Tetsuya, how have you been, the wish giver here? Hope you are enjoying there, I just saw your interaction with the dragon there, and I was laughing my ass off at that, and yeah, I am a higher level entity than that damn truck, seriously he makes my work so much difficult, I have to organize another set of documents just for the people he sent to another worlds. Well let's leave it at that, make sure to not let the dragon know of your origin, it cannot read your mind because of my powers, but the aura you have, can still be seen by such an old being, make up some excuse or something. Bai Tetsuya then simply put the paper in his storage and looked directly in the dragon's eyes. The dragon looked back at Tetsuya waiting for him to answer. Both of them kept staring at each other for a while, and then Tetsuya said, stop staring, it's getting creepy. Which made the dragon slump its head dramatically. The dragon looked back at the human and said, you human, answer me first, and stop screwing around. 
Tetsuya looked at the dragon with an expressionless face and said, How would I know I have only seen been to three realms till now, Earth, Underworld and Takamagahara, how am I supposed to know where I belong from, I have been living in Earth till now. If someone as old as you cannot tell, how the hell will I know? The dragon who heard Tetsuya's answer thought for a bit and said, That seems justifiable how can a someone like you know if even I don't know, and I literally can see through the minds of all except yours of course. Tetsuya inwardly sighed and then said, yeah yeah, well does it really matter I think that it must be some kind of mutation that my aura must be different. The dragon nodded his head and said, it might be possible, well just leave it at that. So where was I ah? Like I was saying that my creation took place after that of office, but the fact is that office was not here at the time of my creation. Though I am a bit thankful for that because there might be a chance that office could have destroyed me even before I could have been created. Well, since I got in the dimensional gap I started roaming around here and there so, my power was not stagnant at the location, and also because of the some characteristics of the void here, which even I am not able to explain, my presence was not detected by office at all. But soon, when she came back to the gap and saw me she thought that I invaded her home in the time that she was not here, I even explained her that I was born here, but since she was not able to sense my power in the gap during the time she was not here, she didn't believe me, but she still let me live here at that time. We both were living here without even bothering each other or so I thought, apparently my constant drives around the cap cause a lot of disturbances in the gap which annoyed her a lot, and soon she started fighting over the possession over the gap, but since I was stronger than her, she was not able to defeat me, so I stayed in the gap. I even told her that I have no problem living together with her, but she said that she was not able to get her silence here anymore. Tetsuya who was now sitting over the dragon's head, heard the whole story carefully and then said, then the whole problem with her originated from a single misunderstanding. The dragon nodded its head and said, yeah. Tetsuya thought for a while and asked, do you ever tried talking to her, I mean other than the serious talk, like talking to her like friends or family. At this the dragon fell silent and then after a while said, no, I don't think that I ever did that, she never have thoughts and do most of the things on a whim. And there is also the fact that I cannot hear her thoughts as her being the embodiment of infinite have some perks of their own. Tetsuya sat back comfortably on the head and said, well I think if you have done that you two could have lived together. She is just lonely, I have met her a lot of times, and all the times our interactions have been a lot of fun. Both Tetsuya and Great Red then fell silent. Tetsuya then caressed on the dragon's scale and said, you know your scales are very soft and comfortable, don't you think that they are bad for defense? The dragon shook its head and said, no, despite they are soft, they are still unbreakable up to a very high extent, though I think that you might be able to break it at your full power. Tetsuya just nodded and then asked, don't you get bored living here all the time? The dragon sighed and said, well it's a bit boring, but it cannot be helped, if I step in the other mortal realms for a long time, the beings there will start having various problems, this is something that I am jealous of office, she is able to step into other realms without bothering others. Whereas for me that is not possible my presence will hamper their senses, and many problems will arise for them, only once in a while when there is dimensional instability that I am able to step in the realms, without causing any problems. Tetsuya widened his eyes and said, I didn't think that a being as powerful as you will care about other mortals. The dragon snorted and said, huh, who cares about them, they can all die, and I will not even bat an eye. I only refrain from harming them because they are the only source of my entertainment. Tetsuya looked at the dragon with amazement and asked, how? The dragon then said, you see the dreams that these mortals have are very fun to watch and interfere to, you will cry out because of laughing so much on our my how weird the dreams can get. Not to mention the so-called wet dreams they have, they are even weirder than their normal dreams. Tetsuya looked at the dragon with a deadpan expression and then said, I am changing your title, from now on you will be the dragon of wet dreams, pervert. Great Red who heard the new title that Tetsuya just gave her said, Hey don't even dare call me that, it is all your mortals fault for imagining those kinds of things, I only watch them. Tetsuya who still had a neutral expression said, And that's why you are a pervert to peep on others. The dragon who heard Tetsuya became more annoyed and said, You are in no position to call me a pervert when you yourself act like one with cat girls and little girls. Tetsuya shook his head and said, I am not a pervert, the only things I like are fluffy and cute. The dragon remained silent for a while and then said, that's the same damn thing you bastard. Tetsuya who was not floating in front of the dragon, was blown away by the wind coming out of its mouth said, whoa whoa whoa, calm down there, and how the hell do you know that I like loli, I mean cute and fluffy things. You just said, that you can't read my mind. The dragon looked at him with a deadpan look and said, of course I cannot read your mind, but it doesn't mean that I can't read the minds of others, and since you do it in front of everyone I have seen everything. Tetsuya who heard that thought, there is really no such thing as privacy in this world. 
Tetsuya then said, well whatever it was nice talking to you but I must get going now. At this the dragon got surprised and said, huh, what's the hurry, stay a bit longer it's been so long since I get to talk to someone who is not pissing himself in my presence, or is challenging me to a fight or even worse, trying to take me under control. Tetsuya waved his hand and said, I would love to keep you company, but it is getting quite late already, the others must be worried about me. At this the dragon got depressed and slumped his head and said, I understand just try to come here from time to time, it can get really boring here, since the only thing that I can do is watch over things in a sad tone. Tetsuya looked at the dragon for a while and then asked, do you want to try living in the human world? The dragon looked at Tetsuya with an annoyed expression on its face and said, listen here I just said, that I cannot step in those Tetsuya cut her speech and said, that's not what I asked for, what I asked is whether you want to live or not. The dragon got more annoyed and said in an agitated tone, of course I want to live there, I want to try the different foods and entertainment there, I want to try all those things that do in those dreams of theirs on my own, I mean it's just imagine yourself watching others copulate, but you are not even able to help yourself, that's how I feel here. Tetsuya looked at the dragon with whitened eyes and said, you got over dramatic there, and what's with that torture of an example, that's just plain cruel. Anyways if you want to live in that world I can let you do that. The dragon blinked in surprise, but soon narrowed them and said, you are not planning on sealing me in some sort of sacred gear or something right? Tetsuya shook his head and said, nah, that way you will be sealed for an even longer time, I mean who would be able to control your power, and I don't have any need of a sacred gear, even if it's your power. So do you want to go? The dragon looked at Tetsuya for a while, judging whether what Tetsuya is saying is true or not. Finally sighing the dragon said, fine, but don't try anything that can lead to serious circumstances, even if I cannot perceive your power, there is no way that even you can take me down easily. Tetsuya nodded and said, okay, now turn into human. The dragon looked at him and said, why? Tetsuya looked at the dragon as if it was an idiot and said, what you want me to put a leash on you and say that you are my new pet dog, of course, how will you live in that world, if not in a human form? The dragon nodded and then suddenly its body started glowing. After the dragon's body started glowing brighter and brighter, Tetsuya took out sunglasses from his storage and put them on and looked at the dragon's direction. Great Red's body started getting smaller and smaller to the point that it was just about Tetsuya's height. The body then started changing its form from a four-legged dragon to a more humanoid form. The light then started to get dimmer and dimmer, and soon it died down and revealed Great Red's human form. Tetsuya then took off his sunglasses to look more clearly at the human form and was completely surprised by what he saw. In front of him was a girl who looked close to his age having scarlet hair which reaches down to her shoulder blades. The girl had golden eyes with vertically slitted pupils with pronounced sharp teeth. This coupled with her being completely naked in front of him which revealed her ample chest which in no way can be considered average, made Tetsuya completely stunned. The dragon who had checked her body looked at Tetsuya and found him to be motionless. The girl smirked and said, Ah, is the lolican stunned by my beautiful body? And emphasized her body and more by making poses. Tetsuya who snapped out of trance because of this nodded his head and said, yes, you look truly beautiful, in that form I was completely stunned by your appearance. But I think that you should wear some clothes first. This was now the dragon god's turn to become stunned by Tetsuya's honest answer, but still she came out of her trance and nodded her head. She then snapped her fingers, and suddenly her naked body got covered by a black one-piece dress, which somehow made her look even more sexy in Tetsuya's view. The dragon looked at Tetsuya and asked, is this fine? Tetsuya nodded his head and said, yup, you look absolutely gorgeous in it. Tetsuya then became a bit curious and asked, hey were you genderless as well, like officer were you a female from the start? Red looked at Tetsuya and said, nope I was genderless from the start I can take any gender I want. Tetsuya then asked, then why did you take a female form? Red shrugged her shoulder and said, no reason, since office took a female form, I took one as well. Besides you were a male here so I thought that being a female would suit me better. She then paused for a while and then asked, or would you have preferred if I would have been a lowly? Tetsuya shook his head and said, no, you look beautiful as you are now. But why does me being a male matters for you to be a female? Red looked at him as if he was an idiot and said, of course I would be a female, I said so earlier didn't I, that I want to try everything that I watch in dreams, so I want to try sex as well. And who can be my partner other than you? Tetsuya blinked his eyes in surprise and then said, wait wait wait, you chose female just so you can have sex with me? If you want to do that you can do it with someone else, there are a lot of males out there. Or you can have either turned a male as well. 
Red still have him a look like he was an idiot and said, I just told you that my power and not completely under control, do you think that if I were a male and were to do it with some girl, can they even survive one thrust from me if I were to lose control? Tetsuya then imagined a couple having sex when suddenly the girl blasted into pieces because of the man's thrust. This made Tetsuya shudder and he said, that would totally be a no-go. But still why me? Red shrugged her shoulders and said, what are you getting surprised for? At the end of the day I am still a dragon, of course I will only choose someone who is strong and capable, and who would be more worthy for all powered me besides you, whose limit even the great me cannot tell. Also there is the fact that you are the only male that I know of currently, and I hardly believe that there will be someone stronger than you. Tetsuya looked at the girl for a while, and then sighed while scratching the back of his head and said, look here, I am not doing this so as to have sex with you, I am just doing this on a whim, you don't have to do anything in return. Also I am not someone who is going to do it with someone I don't love. The dragon just shrugged her shoulder and said, you mean that you are not in love with me yet. Relax, we can take things slowly I have a lot of time so don't worry, I won't force you, after all if the things go just as you said then I will be able to live freely in a mortal realm, and that is something that is more than I can even ask for. There is no way that I will do something to my benefactor. Tetsuya smiled at her and said, well let's just end it at that, so how strong are you now compared to your dragon form? The girls closed her eyes and started to sense her powers, and after she was done she opened them and said, well I only have a third of my power in this form, but don't worry it should be enough to face any problems in that realm. I am still twice as strong than those two heavenly lizards combined. Tetsuya chuckled at her answer and then said, well let's get your body able to step in the mortal world. Tetsuya then came closer to Great Red and started moving his hands towards her and placed it on top of her head. The girl looked at Tetsuya with confusion when suddenly she felt something enter her body. Tetsuya started to channel his energy to her and said, I am channeling some of my power towards you, so don't be impatient. But she completely ignored what he said, and the only voice that came out of her mouth was, A h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h s o g o o d. Tetsuya looked at the girl in front of her, and the expression which she was making made him hard immediately, but he still controlled his urge and worked on what he was doing while trying with all his might to give in to his instincts. When he was done both the girl and the boy were breathing heavily, the girl because of pleasure and the boy because of ignoring his pleasure. Tetsuya looked at her and asked, what was that? And why the hell was I being attracted to you? The girl looked at Tetsuya with a mischievous smile on her face and said, oh nothing, don't forget I am a dragon and a god at that, so my aura will attract the opposite sex just like other dragons. Though I think that mine is a bit stronger. Tetsuya simply nodded his head and thought, I will have to control both myself and her aura, otherwise she can even be the, the first person to get pregnant out of the others, and I have to do something about that aura of hers. I don't want others constantly coming to court her. He thought for a while and then formed a bracelet in his hand and said, wear this, it will prevent your aura from leaking to some extent, while also stabilizing your uncontrolled power a bit as well. The girl nodded and then put on the bracelet in her hand and looked at it for a while, and then smiled and said, thanks. She then looked at Tetsuya for a while and then said, Hey why don't you give me a name to call me by, I don't think Great Red will be something that you would want to call me in public. Tetsuya nodded as his, and he thought the same as well, and then started thinking for a name for her, and after thinking for a while he said, How about Raya, it means a lady who is like a dream. The dragon now named Raya, muttered her name for a while, and then smiled at Tetsuya, making him completely mesmerized and said, Thank you I will cherish this name for all my life. Tetsuya soon snapped out, and the only thing that came to his mind was, I can't confirm whether her aura has suppressed or not, but I think that both of us will have a long journey ahead of us. Tetsuya then sighed and said, so shall we get going? At this Raya's eyes started shining and she said, yeah, let's go immediately I want to try out a lot of things out there. Tetsuya just chuckled and was about to make a portal, but soon stopped and said, wait? Won't it be a problem if the Great Red suddenly disappeared from the dimensional gap? Raya thought for a while and then used her magic, suddenly a huge red dragon appeared in front of them. Tetsuya looked at the dragon for a while and asked, is that a clone? Raya shook her head and said, no, it is the outer layer of my scales, they are still mostly indestructible, and I also filled them with magic, so no one will suspect it, and the gap will move the body itself. Tetsuya nodded his head eye understanding, and then looked back at her and asked, but will you be fine without your outer scales? Raya patted her chest with her fist making her breast jiggle and then said, don't worry there are a lot of layers of scales under that, and my scales will grow back in time so there is no problem. Tetsuya nodded and then formed a portal to Kuo town, and then moved his hand towards Raya and said, so shall we get going? Raya immediately took Tetsuya's hand and said, hell yeah, I am going to the mortal world now. 
Tetsuya smiled and then moved to the portal along with her, and both of them then disappeared from the dimensional gap, leaving behind the hollow body of Great Red. After Tetsuya and Raya left the dimensional gap, both of them appeared at the spot from where Tetsuya was transported. Both of them landed on the ground, and Tetsuya looked up at the sky and said, Oh boy it's very late, the others must be severely pissed by now. He then turned his sight towards the dragon god who was looking around her as if to confirm something. Tetsuya looked at her for a while and then asked, Hey what happened to you? Raya looked at Tetsuya with some tears in her eyes and said, I can finally step in the mortal realm without causing any problems. And hugged Tetsuya tightly. Tetsuya was a bit surprised by her actions stood silently for a while, but soon hugged her back. After hugging each other for a while, Raya separated herself from Tetsuya and asked, But how did you manage to let me out of the gap? No one was able to do it before without causing any problems, so how? Tetsuya just shrugged his shoulders and said, It is actually very simple. You told me that the only time that you were able to come to the mortal realm was the time when there was some dimensional instability, right? Raya nodded her head while looking intently at Tetsuya waiting for the explanation. Tetsuya just grinned and said, So I did just that, I made a very thin layer around your body, in which very small-scale dimensional cracks are occurring and restoring themselves, constantly making the region around you completely disoriented. But you don't have to worry about anything as the cracks are very small, and the layer is very thin, you will suffer from no damage at all, though I connected the layer directly to your energy pool, to let it draw energy directly from your body, but it only takes a bit that you won't have a problem during normal day-to-day -day work. Raya looked at Tetsuya with an expression which said, What the hell are you saying? To which Tetsuya replied with an expression which said, Isn't that a normal thing to do? Raya's lips twitched and she said, There is no way that's normal connecting spells with someone else's mana pool is very difficult, and it causes a major backlash to the caster itself, and a layer of continuous small dimensional cracks, how the hell is that even possible to do? Tetsuya simply tilted his head and said, Huh, it's pretty simple just spread the space creation and space distortion magic particles unevenly on the layer, and let them do their own work they will continue to their work, and will simply travel to different places doing the same thing again. Raya was looking at Tetsuya with widened eyes and said, And how is it possible to form a very thin layer, to not even be noticed by the person who is covered in the layer, not break by uneven spreading of the magic particles, and before that what the hell are space creation and destruction particles, aren't both the same thing? Tetsuya was about to explain it to her, but she raised her hand motioning him to stop. She then gave a tired sigh and then said, Forget it, I am not interested in your over-the-top magic simple explanation. This time Tetsuya was the one whose brows were twitching, but he compassed himself and then said, Anyways let's get going back to my home, the others must be worried. Tetsuya was about to teleport but soon stopped and said, Well let's go. And started walking towards his home. Raya looked at him with a confused expression and then asked, Isn't teleporting faster than walking? Tetsuya turned around and said, Yeah, it is but you won't be able to see around the town if we do that, right? And smiled. Raya was stunned by his answer, and then smiled and then as if the soul of a child in her, her eyes started sparkling, and she immediately latched onto Tetsuya and said, Then what are we waiting for? Let's get going. Tetsuya smiled and then said, Yes let's go. And started walking, but suddenly he felt a soft sensation on his hand, and turned his head with curious expression on his face, only to find his hand in between Raya's breasts. Tetsuya stood there for a while looking at Raya for an explanation, but she only looked back at him with an expression which said, What are we waiting for? Tetsuya sighed and then said, Why are you holding my arm like that? Raya looked back at him without any change in her expression and said, Hmm is there a problem with it? Tetsuya nodded his head and said, It is too intimate for people who are not a couple. Raya waved her hand and said, Don't sweat on the small details, and let's get going. Tetsuya just sighed and easily freed his hand and said, Yes, let's go and started walking. Behind him Raya also started walking and muttered, so he noticed huh, it is not going to be easy to be intimate with him well whatever I came here to enjoy anyway, might as well enjoy this as well, it is not going to get boring anytime soon. Tetsuya who was walking ahead of Raya, didn't heard what she said as he was thinking of other things, and he was also quite tired because of the hectic day. Both of them soon reached in front of Tetsuya's house, and before entering Tetsuya looked at Raya and said, whatever happens don't fell offended or attack the others. Raya looked at Tetsuya with a questioning look, but soon she realized what he was talking about and nodded his head. Tetsuya then put the key and opened the door, and just as he did that he was immediately tackled by a blur which he caught without falling down. He then lifted the person up which revealed to be Miyuki looking at Tetsuya with a worried expression. Miyuki who was still in Tetsuya's hands, started checking him for any injuries and asked, Ani-sama, are you alright, why are you so late, did someone attack you, do you want me to slice his body into tiny pieces? 
Tetsuya looked at Miyuki with a wry smile on his face and said, Calm down Miyuki I am fine I am not injured at all, and I was also not attacked. Miyuki nodded her head still feeling worried about Tetsuya, but still sighed in relief. Seeing that Miyuki had calmed down a bit Tetsuya put her down, and then saw others standing behind her, but all of them were in defensive positions. Suddenly Miyuki realized something as well and jumped back and got in a defensive stance as well. Tetsuya then sighed on seeing their actions, and suddenly a red-headed woman came in front and stood beside Tetsuya. The girl had an amused grin on her face, and she said, Ho, oh, I have seen how all of them trained with my own eyes, but to think that they were able to sense my power, I am quite impressed with it. Though I doubt that they are able to sense my true power, but well it is quite good for them. As expected of my Tetsuya. Your team is very strong. Just as Raya said my Tetsuya all of them widened their eyes and looked at Tetsuya who looked at the they with a neutral expression and shook his head in denial. Getting the answer from Tetsuya, Miyuki came forward and said, Hey redhead bitch, were you the one who tried to seduce Ani Isama, making him come home late in the process? Tetsuya looked at Miyuki and thought, I know that she likes me, but to insult the strongest being in the world, well second strongest now, like this on the face, if anyone else were to see it while knowing Raya's identity, they would certainly faint from fear. Tetsuya was about to intervene when suddenly a magic circle appeared in the room, and three figures appeared out of it. Suddenly one of the figures immediately jumped at Tetsuya and said, Tetsuya Naya I missed you. Tetsuya caught the black-haired Nekashu easily and hugged her and gave her a peck on the lips and said, Kuroka, I missed you as well. How have you been? Kuroka returned the kiss as well and smiled at Tetsuya and said, I have been good, just missed you a lot and why a dot, and kissed him again. Tetsuya returned the kiss and then asked, so why the sudden visit? Kuroka who was still smiling said, well office NYA said something that it is here NYA dot with a confused expression on her face. Tetsuya and Kuroka then turned their heads and saw office standing in front of Raya looking directly in her eyes while Raya was doing the same. Everyone else other than Tetsuya was confused about what they were doing, and then the third person that came just now moved towards Tetsuya. Tetsuya looked at the person who came closer to him and smiled, Le Fay, good to see you again. And patted her head. The blonde-haired witch smiled on receiving the head pat and then said, I am happy to meet you again Tetsuya-san. Tetsuya just smiled at her and continued to pay her head, not noticing the tense atmosphere that was building around the two girls, who continued to stare at each other. Miyuki then looked at Tetsuya and asked, Ani-sama who actually is that redhead? At her question all the others turned their head and looked at Tetsuya intently waiting for answers. Tetsuya gave a tired sigh and then said, the person standing in front of office is the great red, the dragon of wet dreams. Everyone was completely speechless by the, the suddenly revelation, and all looked at the red head with fear evident in their eyes. While this was happening the said red head was fuming with anger, and soon she snapped and punched Tetsuya, who simply evaded it. The girl looked at Tetsuya with anger and said, don't you dare call me that you lolican Tetsuya just snorted and said, I already told you that I am not a lolican. Raya then pointed her finger at Tetsuya and said, then what the hell are you doing? Tetsuya then turned his gaze downwards, while all the others looked at him, and found him to be patting both Office and Le Fay, who had a blissful expression on her face, while Office was still expressionless, but was still feeling happy on the inside. Tetsuya then slowly lifted his head and looked at Raya and said, just seeing that whether they are safe from your attack or not. I am totally not patting them because they are too cute. With a neutral expression on his face. All of them who heard his answer twitched their lips and thought at the same time, Lolican. Tetsuya who heard what all of them thought through his telepathy, internally snorted and thought, I regret nothing. After everyone got a bit calm because of the revelation all of them were sitting around a table, while some girls were cooking the dinner. Office was sitting on Tetsuya's lap while facing Raya sitting on front of her continuously staring at each other. The other girls who were not currently cooking, were a bit tensed as they thought that the two dragon gods could suddenly lash out each other, and were hoping for it not happen. After all who would like to get caught up between the fight of the dragon gods? Tetsuya who noticed a tense atmosphere around him caressed Office's hair to get her attention. Office then looked up to look at Tetsuya's face. Tetsuya looked back at her and asked, you should not stay at her like that, the others are getting tensed because of the tension between you two. Office then turned her head and looked at others only to see helpless smiles on their faces. Not understanding what the smiles meant, she again looked up and tilted her head and said, but they are smiling. Tetsuya who saw her doing that got very excited but still controlled himself and with a smile on his face said, yes they are smiling, but they are not smiling because they are happy. They are smiling because well how shall I explain this yes, you can say this as they are smiling, because they don't want to show that they are scared. You can see that their smiles are a bit different, right? Office then looked at the others once again, and then noticed their smiles carefully for a while, and then nodded her head. 
She then looked at Tetsuya and said, they scared? Tetsuya just chuckled at her question and nodded his head. Office nodded as well and then said, don't worry, not in the mood to fight. These were the words that she thought were the best to let them feel a bit safe. All of them looked at Office and then started chuckling. Raya who was looking at the scene taking place in front of her smiled and said, you have changed, Office. All of them then fell silent and then once again started looking intently at the dragon gods. Office looked at Raya and said, how are you here Baka Red? Raya looked back at Office and said, first of all my name is Raya. And then paused for a while to let her fellow dragon god digest the information. Office tilted her head and said, you are not Baka Red? Raya's head suddenly crashed with the table and she said, no, I am the Great Red, but from now on my name is Raya. Office who now understood what she meant nodded her head and said, why are you here Bakaya making Raya fell down dramatically once again. Raya then sat straight and said, forget it, I am here because I want to see the mortal world by myself and experience a lot of things here. Office remained silent for a while and then said, but you were not able to leave my home? Raya nodded her head and said, yup, I was not able to leave the gap, but because of my Tetsaya I was able to come here. When she said my Tetsaya both offices and Kuroka's ears twitched. Kuroka wanted to glare at the red head, but knowing her identity, she refrained from doing that. On the other hand office felt a bit uncomfortable and said, you cannot take Tetsaya. And hugged him. At this everyone got surprised with the action that office did, but still two people had different reactions than the others. Raya who saw what Office did had a mischievous grin on her face, while Tetsaya just smiled at what Office did. Tetsaya hugged her back and said, don't worry Office-chan, she can't take me. Office looked at Tetsaya and after seeing his smiling face for a while nodded and stopped hugging him. Tetsaya just patted her head and then looked at Raya with a cold glare and said, and you stop spouting things that others will misunderstand, we are not in a relationship yet, so don't address me as my Tetsaya. Understood? Raya who saw Tetsaya's glare was not scared by it, but still nodded her head and said, fine fine. Anyway office office looked at Raya when she heard her call and said, what? While subconsciously there was a bit anger in her voice. Raya smiled and said, you can live in the dimensional gap if you want. I will not be there for quite a long time, so I won't be disturbing you. Office looked at her for a while and then asked, so where will you live from now on? Raya looked at her with a neutral expression on her face and said, where? Isn't it obvious that I will live here from now on? At this everyone else's except for Tetsaya's eyes widened in surprise. All of them then looked at Tetsaya waiting for answer. Tetsaya looked at others and said, she will be living with us, after all we cannot let the other factions know that the strongest being in the world has disappeared from the gap. So this is the only option for us. All of them thought for a while and then nodded their heads except for Office who was silently looking at Raya. Raya who noticed her gaze smirked and asked, what? Jealous of me? Office remained silent for a while and then said, I will stay here as well. All of them got shocked by her answer, and then Lefei asked, why do you want to live here Office-sama? Office looked at Lefei, and then pointed her finger at Raya and said, SH will take Tetsaya. Just like how she took my silence. Making the others shocked once again. Soon Raya broke out laughing, making the others look at her. After she stopped laughing, she looked at Office and said, don't worry Office, I am not going to take him for myself. Rather than that I will be sharing him with others. Office looked at her for a while and then said, sharing for what? After listening her question Raya was about to explain her what she meant, but before she was able to Tetsaya intervened and said, hey guys, I think the dinner is ready. He then looked at Raya and gave a menacing glare, and sent a telepathic message to her which said, don't dot you. Dare dot corrupt daughter dot innocence. Seeing this glare all of them except for Office who was in his lap got scared and put a hand on their mouths. Office who saw their reactions got confused and turned her head towards Tetsaya, who made a 180 degrees change in her expression and smiled at Office. Office looked at him for a while and then asked, why are they doing that? Tetsaya continued to smile and said, my don't know? Maybe they feel a bit sick. Right? And turned his head towards others with a smile on his face. But the people other than Office who saw his smile shivered in fear and hurriedly nodded their heads. Tetsaya then looked back at Office and said, see, they are a bit sick. That's all. Come on let's go and have something to eat, I will even get you a chocolate after the meal. Office who heard the item that she will get immediately nodded her head. Tetsaya chuckled at her actions and then carried her to the dining room. After Tetsaya was able to protect Office's innocence, all of them were sitting together while having dinner. But all of the girls were staring at Office who was sitting in Tetsaya's lap and was being fed by him. Tetsaya looked at her with a helpless expression and asked, Office-chan don't you think it would be better if you eat by your own, I mean that way you would be able to eat easily. Seriously, being stared continuously by the others while eating is not a pleasant experience, especially when they all look at me as if I am some sort of pervert. 
Oh Office Chan is looking so cut. Office looked back at Tetsuya and said, more comfortable here and easy to eat. She then opened her mouth for Tetsuya to feed her. Tetsuya just gave a tired sigh and then put some food in her mouth. He then picked something up for himself and then ate it, but the others were still looking him at him intently. Noticing that they were not going to stop looking anytime soon, Tetsuya decided to enjoy this moment to the fullest. He was already being looked by piercing gazes, and any more could not hurt him further. Besides what he was thinking to do made will be much more blissfully than their gazes. Tetsuya poked off his cheek making her turn her head and look at Tetsuya. Tetsuya then bent a bit and whispered something in her ear. After Office heard what Tetsuya was saying she nodded her head and took a spoon in her hand. All the other girls who saw that thought that Tetsuya somehow managed to convince her to eat by herself, but what she did next left all of them speechless. Office took some soup in her spoon and moved it towards Tetsuya's mouth and said, A-H-H-H and Tetsuya, who saw her asking to feed him, just smiled and opened his mouth and ate the food with a satisfied smile on his face. The others started giving more hateful gaze to the two of them, in the hope of making them stop, but the two of them completely ignored them, and silently are while feeding each other, with Tetsuya having a bright smile on his face, and Office feeling happy inside. Seeing that nothing was working on the two of them one of the girls resolved herself and said, open wide Tetsuya NYAA Tetsuya looked at Kuroka who was holding on her spoon, and was asking him to eat with a smile on her face. Seeing no problem with it, Tetsuya are from Kuroka's spoon making her happy. Seeing that all the girls on the table now looked at Kuroka with a hateful gaze except Lafay, to which Kuroka replied with a prideful smile on her face and puffing out her chest. All of them continued to grit their teeth, but the next thing made them all snap. Tetsuya took and moved his spoon towards Kuroka's direction and said, Kuroka, A-H-H-H and Kuroka looked at Tetsuya with a look of surprise in her eyes, which immediately turned into a happy smile, and she immediately put the spoon in her mouth. She then looked at Tetsuya and said, thanks Tetsuya NYAA that was very delicious NYAA dot. Seeing that all the others were about to feed him as well, but Office interrupted them and asked, why did you feed him? And looked at Kuroka with an innocent expression on her face. Kuroka just smiled and said, to show that I like him Office Naya. It is a sign of affection. Office was still confused continued to look at her, and seeing that Kuroka asked, then why did you feed him? Office still looked at her with a neutral expression on her face said, to return the favor for sitting in his lap. All of them then looked at Tetsuya with a questioning look on their faces, while Tetsuya only averted his gaze. All of them then looked at Office, and then Miyuki said, then do you like sitting on his lap? Office only nodded her head in confirmation. Miyuki smiled and said, then you can eye that you fed him to show that you like being near him. Office who heard what Miyuki said remained silent and thought for a while. She then took her spoon and moved it towards Kuroka's direction and said, A-H-H and Kuroka looked at her with a questioning gaze, but soon their doubt was cleared by Tetsuya who said, she is trying to say that she likes being near you. And patted Office's head. Kuroka and the others smiled, and then Kuroka ate from O-Office. After that Office took turn to feed each of the girls while and they did the same as well. All this happened while Raya was completely left out by the others, and none of them was even looking at her making her twitch her lips, and look at the scene in front of her with an annoyed glare. Tetsuya who was fed by all the girls noticed her glare inside. He then took his spoon and moved it towards her and said, you are going to be the part of the group from now on, so I guess there is no harm in doing something like this. Raya looked at the spoon in front of her for a while, and then simply put it in her mouth without saying anything. She then turned her head and said, thanks, I guess. All of them then looked at her, and all of THEM except Office had an amused smile on their faces. All of them started teasing her making her blush from embarrassment which led to bickering among the girls. Tetsuya and Office who were now sitting silently were looking at the girls bickering among themselves. Tetsuya had a smile on his face and he thought, who could guess that there are two of the world's strongest beings and two terrorists in this group of lively girls. It seems like now they are not hesitant of Raya, well that's a plus on its own. Suddenly he felt a tug on his shirt, and he looked down to see Office looking at her. Tetsuya just smiled and said, what happened Office Jan? Office asked, why are you smiling while looking at them? Tetsuya just patted her head and said, well, I am just happy seeing my loved ones are enjoying and are happy. Don't you think so as well? Office thought for a while and nodded her head and said, yes, I am enjoying this as well. She then fell silent for a while and then asked, Tetsuya do you like me as well? Tetsuya who heard her question fell silent for a while and then hugged her and said, is that even a question to ask, I absolutely love you a lot. Office who heard the answer felt happy from inside and unconsciously her lips curled up in a smile, though it was not noticed by others except Tetsuya as she was in his embrace. Tetsuya then noticed that the others were silent and looked at them, and found them to be looking at him as well. Tetsuya looked at them with a questioning gaze and seeing that all of them sighed. 
Hamari then said, you do know that you can get arrested for how you are behaving, right? Tetsuya looked at her for a while and then smirked making all of them confused. Seeing the confused look on their faces Tetsuya chuckled and said, no one can do that, office is completely legal, all of them then fell silent and didn't know how to retort to what Tetsuya said. Knowing what they were thinking Tetsuya said, don't think much about it, I know I am absolutely right here. Hearing what he said all of their brows then twitched. Suddenly office again tugged his shirt and said, sweets? Tetsuya who understood what she meant looked at Asia and said, Asia, can you bring some desserts for everyone? And as if nothing happened earlier Asia gave a beautiful smile and said, of course. And then went to the kitchen while humming. Seeing her leave some of the girls followed her to help her in the kitchen. Riot then looked at Office and said, Office, you should keep your distance from this guy, he is very bad. Office tilted her head in confusion and said, but I like being near Tetsuya. He is good. He even helped me in achieving my silence by throwing out Baka Red from my home. Tetsuya who heard that smiled and said, yeah. Tell her office. Seeing both of them riot witched her lips and said, at least, you can take a mature form, so that people don't look at the both of you weirdly. At this office became confused and asked, you mean big like the others. Raya thought for a while and then said, well in a way yeah, I mean at least look a little older. Office then looked at Tetsuya with any change in her expression. Seeing her looking intently at him he patted her head and said, I don't mind however you look like, I like Office it doesn't matter whether you are young or old. Office who heard that nodded and was about to change her appearance, but before she was able to the others came back with sweets and placed them on the table. This time Office didn't ask Tetsuya to feed her and immediately took a spoon and started eating her cake. Seeing her like that the others smiled and then started eating their cake as well while talking to each other. While talking Tetsuya accidentally took a piece from Office's cake which Office thought that he was about to feed her and opened her mouth. But the spoon just passed by her making her turn her head and saw Tetsuya put it in his mouth. Seeing him put the cake in his mouth Office moved towards him and placed her lips on his making him, as well as the others stopped because of the shock. Office then snatched the cake from his mouth and said, my cake and again started eating while leaving the others completely shocked, though Tetsuya was feeling rather happy by the event. After Office was able to snatch her cake from Tetsuya while leaving the others shocked. All of them decided to leave the matter and went to sleep. Though this time Tetsuya was enveloped by all his girls with the addition of Kuroka and Office, who was protecting him from riot. But the said attacker was left to sleep alone in another room making her slightly pissed, and she decided to take revenge on them later. The next day when they woke up Tetsuya felt a lot of weight on his body, and even though he was reluctant, he still opened his eyes. But after opening them he was completely surprised to see that there was complete darkness. He then tried to move his limbs only to find difficulty in doing so. Suddenly he realized what happened and gave a tired sigh. He then used his psychic powers to slowly move the bodies lying on him away, and then slipped out of the girl's grasps. He then slowly placed the girls back on bed and smiled at them, but then he noticed that office was not there. He then left the room and got refreshed and got ready for his morning training and went downstairs and on his way he saw both Office and Raya talking to each other. Seeing that they were talking a bit seriously he decided to leave them alone and left the house for his training. After Tetsuya was done taking a shower after his training to wash off the sweat he came out and saw some of the girls preparing the breakfast while the others were simply fooling around. Seeing that all of them were doing something he went to check his restaurant to do some of the paperwork that have been piling up because of the recent events. He went through the work and sighed seeing how the number of invitations for various events that were present there. These were some of the things that he didn't like about his business. After he was done with quite a lot of them, he went back and sat down with the others to have his breakfast. While eating he felt a tug on his shirt and knowing who was doing that he turned his head with a smile on his face and asked, what happened office? Office kept on looking at his face for a while with her usual expressionless face. Tetsuya also stared at her for a while with a confused expression on his face and was about to use his telekinesis to know what she was thinking. But before he was able to office tilted her head and asked, do you want to copulate with me? Clank clank suddenly the sound of lot of spoons falling from the hands of others was heard. All of them stared at office with a what the hell did you just said expression on their faces, while Lefei had a slight blush on her cheeks because of embarrassment. Tetsuya stared at her for a while with a completely shocked expression on his face, and his thoughts were completely in a mess. What the hell just happened? No 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 I do know what happened, and that's not the problem. The problem here is what the hell should I do, the offer is very tempting, but this will make me look like a scum in the eyes of others. Though I don't give a shit about what others think, and there is also the fact that I like her and she is legal as well so no problems regarding that. He was then going to open his mouth to say something, but just as he did he sensed the others glaring at him. He didn't even had to turn his head, and he could feel that the others were glaring at him. 
He then closed his mouth once again and thought, let's just leave all the temptations to the side for now, and thy k about it logically. She was completely innocent till yesterday, and there is no way that she would have said something like this. It means that someone must have given her information about these things. But the question is who? Suddenly a realization hit him, and he immediately turned his head and looked at Traya who had a mischievous grin on her face. Tetsaya gave her a glare to which she just snorted and continued to smirk. Tetsaya want to punch her and wipe that grin of her face, but he calmed down and controlled himself. He then began thinking, but suddenly Office said, you don't want to? With a bit of sadness in her voice though her face was still expressionless. Tetsaya who got hit by the sudden attack, was not able to think further and said, there is no way that I don't want to. His sudden outburst made all the people present in the room surprised, but once they came back to realization the other girls only sighed with Lefei having a deep blush on her face, and Office had a small smile on her face. Suddenly the doorbell rang and all of them became normal once again. Tetsaya who was feeling very awkward, decided to go and check who was on the door and quickly left. Once Tetsaya opened the door he saw Kaneko standing there with her usual cold expression on her face, which turned into a small smile when she saw Tetsaya. Tetsaya smiled as well and said, Good morning Kaneko-chan, what brought you here so early i the morning? Kaneko then took out a notebook out of nowhere and said, Miyuki's notebook got mixed up in my stuff, and since we had assignment to complete, I thought that she might be troubled. Tetsaya just smiled and said, Thank you for coming all the way here to just return that. Why don't you join us for the breakfast if you don't mind? Kaneko who heard the question was about to deny, but suddenly her stomach growled, earning a small chuckle from Tetsaya, while she just blushed in embarrassment. Kaneko looked at Tetsaya with a blush on her face and said, Then I guess I will take you up on the offer. Tetsaya just nodded and let her in and closed the door, while Kaneko went towards the room where the others were present. Tetsaya suddenly thought that he was forgetting something, but soon remembered what when he saw the horrified expression on Kaneko's face. Crap, Kuroka was here as well. Was all he thought and immediately rushed towards the others. Once he reached there he saw both Kaneko and Kuroka having a shocked expression oh. Their faces and seeing that the room was completely quiet he sighed and said, why don't all of you sit down first, and then we can talk. All of them looked at him for a while and finally accepting his suggestion. Kaneko was no exception of that, even though she didn't had a good impression of Kuroka, but she decided to trust Tetsaya and her friends, and took a seat. All of them then sat around the table, and the room was completely quiet, but still the one who had the most complex feelings in the room was Kaneko. On one hand she was facing her sister who left her all those years ago, and now she saw some black-haired loli sitting in Tetsaya's lap while looking at others. Who is she, how does she have the rights to sit in Senpai's lap? Office who noticed her gaze at her said, my seat which made most of the girls in the room twitch their lips. After Office made everyone clear about her seat all of them got serious once again, and both the sisters were now ready to confront each other. Kaneko looked at Kuroka for a while and then said, Wani-sama, what are you doing here? Kuroka only showed a playful smile and said, I am here to visit my mate Tetsayanaya. Kaneko's lips twitched when she heard that, and this was not left unnoticed by Kuroka. Kaneko sighed and said, can you be a bit more serious? Kuroka acted to be hurt by her comment and said, you think I am joking here Naya? Well you will have the proof in a few months when you will become the aunt of my kittens Naya. And looked away. Hearing her answer all the girls immediately looked at Tetsaya, who was not even bothered by what Kuroka said, and was happily eating cake along with office. Seeing that most of the girls sighed except for Kaneko who gave a glare to office to which she replied with a victorious smile on her face. Kaneko was about to lash out at her, but soon turned her head when she felt her surroundings getting cold. She saw Miyuki releasing a lot of her magic power, and had ice formed around her. Miyuki then looked at Kuroka and said, Ara, Kuroka-san you should know that there are some matters that you should not joke about, right? With a friendly smile on her face. And suddenly Kuroka jumped from her seat, and everyone saw a huge ice spike where she was sitting. Seeing the ice spike most of the girls there had cold sweat on their foreheads, and Kuroka immediately grabbed her butt, which would have been penetrated if not for her jumping away. She looked at Miyuki with a smile with her lips twitching, and Sei said, Miyuki Naya, you should not get angry at jokes Naya. We are friends Naya. Miyuki also kept her smile on her face and said, make a joke like that again, and all of us will be mourning on our friend's death. With the same smile on her face. Hearing that all of them looked at Miyuki and thought at the same time, fucking sadist. Miyuki then looked at Kaneko and said, Oh, Kaneko-chan sorry for interruption. Please continue. And then turned back to her normal mode. Kaneko looked at her friend for a while and then nodded and said, Why did you left me one Isama? Before Kuroka can answer Tetsaya interrupted them and said, Oh wait a minute. He then took out the journal that he got in the Nibiria's territory and placed it on the table. He then looked at Kaneko and said, You sisters can sit together and go through that journal. 
I guess most of your questions will be answered from that. Both of them looked at the journal and then at Tatsaya, and at Tatsaya D asked, what is that? Tatsaya just smiled and said, it is the diary of Alolican. Hearing his answer all of them looked at him with a dumbfounded expression, but it immediately changed into the ones of trying hard to hold their laugh when they heard a voice. What will they know by reading your diary? Tatsaya's lips twitched immediately and said, I am not a lolican. I only like cute, fluffy and beautiful. And looked at Raya who was looking at him with a smirk on her face. Raya then sighed and said, well whatever. Tatsaya just ignored her and looked at Kaneko and said, go and read that you will know why she did that back then. He then looked at Kuroka and said, you can use it as a proof to clear your name as a stray as well. And smiled. Kuroka who now understood what it was immediately jumped on Tatsaya and and said in a joyful tone, Tatsaya Naya I love you Naya. And hugged him while pushing his face in between her breasts. Tatsaya who was enjoying the feeling of the softness on his face, had a smile on his face, but soon decided to push her away, as he was having problem to breathe. But before he was able to do that Kuroka was immediately thrown away by Office, who was sandwiched in between the two. She then looked at Tatsaya and stared at him for a while before asking, do you like her boobs? Hearing that all the attention was now on Tatsaya who didn't know how to answer the dragon god's question. While this was going on Kaneko was going through the journal given by Tatsaya and looked at Kuroka who was rubbing her head after coming out of the crater formed by her when she was thrown by office. She then looked at Kaneko and when she found her looking at her as well, she just gave an apologetic smile and walked towards her. She was about to hug her, but Kaneko stopped her. Seeing what Kaneko did made Kuroka slightly disappointed, but she didn't showed it on her face and said, Sorry Shira Naya, I hope that didn't made you feel uncomfortable Naya. All of them then looked back at the sisters curiously waiting for her response. Suddenly all of them were surprised when they saw Kaneko punching Kuroka's stomach with all her power, and even though Kuroka didn't move her face still had a painful expression. Some of the girls were going to intervene between them, but Tetsuya raised his hand and made them stop. Kaneko then lifted her head and with tears in her eyes asked, why didn't you tell me about this before? Why didn't you take me with you? Do you know how sad I was for all those years? Kuroka just looked at Kaneko with a pained expression on her face and immediately hugged her. Kaneko who felt Kuroka hugging her, tried to free her out of her grasp, but was unable to do so. She then heard Kuroka crying and then stopped. Kuroka who now didn't feel any resistance from her sister, hugged her tighter and said, I am sorry Shirin. I am sorry. 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 Kuroka kept on apologizing without any care and hearing her Kaneko started to cry harder. Seeing the two of them the others started to feel sad for them as well. Tetsaya who saw how the situation was in the room sighed and said, let's leave the two alone for a while. They will be able to sort out their feelings easier. And then stood up along with office and left the room, and the others followed him soon. All of them were waiting silently for the sister to come out of the room and were looking at the door intently. Soon they saw the door opening and both the sisters coming out with this time Kaneko having her cat ears on her head. Seeing the two along with Kaneko's ears out Tatsaya smiled and said, so everything got cleared between you two, huh? Both Kuroka and Kaneko smiled at that Kuroka said, thank you very much Tatsaya Naya. I don't know how can I ever repay you Naya. Tatsaya just shrugged his shoulder and said, just let me enjoy you tails and ears in return. Hearing that Kuroka made a mischievous smile and said, of course I don't mind Naya, but you do know that you have to take responsibility for that, right Naya? Tatsaya who heard the just gave a smile in return and said something to her telepathically making her blush and have a happy expression on her face. Kaneko then came closer to Tatsaya and said, Senpai, did you know about me and my sister from the beginning? Tatsaya looked at Kaneko with a neutral expression and said, yeah. Seeing no change in his expression Kaneko's ears twitched which made Tatsaya's brow twitch as well because of how cute Kaneko looked at that time. Kaneko then did a pout adding more damage and said, then you should have told me so, I hate you senpai. And looked away. Tatsaya just gave a wry smile and said, I cannot do that, it should have been Kuroka herself to tell you about all this. Kaneko then looked at Tatsaya and stared at him for a while and then said, I am very grateful for the senpai. Tatsaya just waved his hand and said, you don't need to mind that, I am your senpai after all. It is my duty to help my cute cowhai. Kaneko looked at him for a while and then bowed her head and said, I ww will let yy you touch my e ears for a while in return. And started twitching her ears. Tatsaya who saw the two white ears moving to and fro in front of him, unconsciously moved his hand and started rubbing them with a satisfied smile on his face, while Kaneko was making small moans because of the pleasure. Seeing the smile on Tatsaya's face the other Nekashu took out their ears and tails as well, and then sat around Tatsaya, letting him drown in fluffiness. The others who were left behind and were forced to watch them, were looking at the other girls hatefully, except for Office who didn't know what was happening. 
After a while when Tetsuya was completely satisfied he let the others go who were taking deep breaths to calm themselves. Kaneko then looked at Tetsuya and said, why why you will have to take our, our responsibility for the senpai. Tetsuya who heard that immediately hugged Kaneko and said, then from now on you are my kitty. Kaneko who was being hugged by Tetsuya was in a bliss and had a happy expression on her face. She then looked at Office and gave a victorious smirk to her. Office who saw the smirk didn't know why, but somehow she felt angry by that. She then pulled Tetsuya's sleeve making him focus on her. Seeing that Tetsuya was now looking at her she put both her hands in her head imitating the cat ears, and while tilting her head said, NYAA Tetsuya was then left motionless, and a stream of blood was coming out of his nose, which made all of them shocked as this was the first time that they saw Tetsuya having a nose bleed. Raya immediately put a serious expression on her face and said, see it all of you, I am hurt to say this, but looks like Office is the last boss among us. All of them who heard her statement nodded their head and decided to make sure to not let Office get ahead of them. Office then looked at Kaneko, and with a small smile said, I win. The next day Tetsuya who was sleeping along with his girls, woke up when he heard his phone ringing. He got up and moved the girls away without waking them up, and then looked at his phone. Seeing the person who was calling him he smiled and took the call. After he was done speaking on the phone, he woke up the others who reluctantly had to wake up because of Tetsuya yelling at them. Tetsuya looked at the girls and said, don't forget that today is the open house get ready or we will be late. He then looked at Kuroka and threw a bracelet towards her and said, that will prevent your energy from leaking. You can visit your sister if you want to. Kuroka who heard his explanation looked at the bracelet with shining eyes and nodded her head and said, thank you Tetsuya NYAA Tetsuya only nodded and then said, get ready and go to school, I have to pick up someone first, so go ahead of me. This statement made all of them snap out of their tardiness, and they started looking at Tetsuya intently and asked at the same time, who is it? Tetsuya looked at them with neutral expression and said, a subordinate of mine. Hearing his answer all of them narrowed their eyes, and Kurumi asked, is it a girl? Tetsuya only nodded and said, before your mind falls into the gutter, you all should know that she is already married and have a daughter close to her age. All of them then sighed in relief and smiled at him trying to show that they didn't doubt him. Tetsuya only shook his head and then left the room to take a bath. After he was done taking a bath he wore his uniform and then took out his car and left for the station. After he picked up the person who called him this morning, Tetsuya was on his way to school along with her. The lady looked at him and asked, you sure have grown quite handsome in the time we didn't met. Tetsuya just shrugged his shoulder and said, look who is talking. The first time we met your whole body was covered in wounds and you looked like you have been starved for years. The lady just put her hand on her mouth and said, fufu fufu fu, 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 well what can I say, it is all because of you that I was able to live my life once again, I would have died there if not for you. Tetsuya smiled and said, well don't mention it, I got quite a reliable person to manage my stores in Kyoto. That is enough for me. You don't have to feel grateful for that. The lady just smiled and said, so how is your sex life going, any progress or are you still Tetsuya's lips twitched and he said, don't you think that your question is quite inappropriate to ask someone so casually. The lady just chuckled and said, ara ara, don't mind such things you can freely talk to me about that, I am just like your mother. Tetsuya snorted and said, there is no way a mother will ask her child about his or her sex life. Tetsuya then sighed and said, so how is it going with that fallen masochist? The lady had a slight blush on her cheeks, and she said, well it's better than before, we can meet more often compared to the time before when our family got separated. And I get to try new stuff on his from time to time now. Ahh just thinking about it is making me hot. Tetsuya looked at her with a weird look on his face and said, like mother like daughter, both of you have the same qualities, no she has inherited her father's qualities as well. At this the lady got quiet and asked, do you think that she will hate me for not being near her for all this time? Tetsuya shrugged his shoulders and said, who knows, but I can guarantee that your family will be back together sooner or later. So you don't have to stress too much. The lady just smiled at him and then said, so how does my daughter been and does she look? Tetsuya just took out his phone and showed the image to her. The lady looked at the photo for a while and then said, she looks just like me. Tetsuya nodded and said, yeah, just her chest is even larger than yours. The lady just laughed and said, well good for her I guess. Tetsuya nodded and then stopped his car and said, so we are here, I will show you the way to her class, and then go back to mine. The lady shook her head and said, you can go, I will find the class on my own, I also have to prepare myself mentally before meeting her. Tetsuya stared at her for a while and then said, as you wish, but if you are unable to find her just give me a call. The lady looked at him with a questioning gaze and then asked, won't you get disturbed by that? Isn't it the open house today? Tetsuya looked at the school building and stared at it for a while and then said, there will be no problem with that, it's not like I will be troubled by it. 
You should know that I have quite an authority in the school. He said and then locked his car and then parted with the lady. Both the lady and Tatsaya were walking towards the school gate, and Tatsaya noticed that no one from the student council was standing there. He then looked at his watch and saw that the school was going to start in a few minutes, which explained why no one was standing in front of the gate. Tatsaya on his way decided to make the lady beside him a bit familiar with the school before he goes his own way. Both of them then went inside the building and saw a lot of people standing there in the hall, and just when both of them entered all the parents and students looked towards them, and the while hall fell silent. This made both Tatsaya and the lady confused, and both of them started looking at the surroundings, but once they noticed the gazes that were drawn on both of them, Tatsaya sighed while the lady just chuckled. The lady looked at Tatsaya and whispered, aren't you quite popular? Tatsaya looked at the lady and said, says the one who is being stared at by all these males. If that masochist come to know about this all these men would be slaughtered. The lady just chuckled and said, what can I say, he is quite protective of me. Tatsaya sighed and then looked back at the men with a cold glare, making all of them immediately look away, while the girls only got more excited about him. Tatsaya ignored their gazes and then walked with the lady and was talking with her. While both of them were climbing on the stairs suddenly a person came in his way making both of them startled. Both of them stopped and the person in front of them stopped as well. When the girl who was standing in front of Tatsaya looked at him she smiled and said, Ara Ara, Tatsaya Khan what a coincidence to meet you here. Who is the lad why? She then turned her head and looked at the lady walking beside Tatsaya, and after looking at her for a while the girl became speechless. Tatsaya who felt that the things were getting quite awkward said, Shall we go to the terrace Akeno, Shuri-san? Both the ladies silently nodded their heads, while both of them had some tears in their eyes. Tatsaya sighed and then started walking along with the mother and daughter towards the terrace. Once all of them were at terrace Akeno immediately hugged her mother and cried loudly and seeing that Shuri did the same as well. Tatsaya stood a but away from the mother and daughter, and formed a barrier around them, so that their voice does not leak out, while also added a time dilation in it, so as to let the time inside the barrier be slower, as they would get late if he didn't do that. Once both the mother and the daughter stopped crying Tatsaya moved towards the two of them, and offered both of them a handkerchief to clean their faces. After both were done with that Akeno looked at Shuri and said, How are you still alive, I thought that you were killed back then. Shuri just gave a helpless smile and said, instead of being killed I was taken in as a prisoner by the ones who came to attack me in order to get information on the fallen. She then turned her gaze at Tatsaya and said, but seeing that I didn't have any information that was useful for them after all the torture they did to me, they decided to kill me, but I was somehow able to get away from them, but still was followed by them. If not for him being there I would have died. Akeno then looked at Tatsaya waiting for his explanation, and on seeing that Tatsaya said, I have some relationship with the Shinto and the Yaokai faction, and was acting as a guard for the head of the Yaokai faction, while we were making some deals with the Himajimas. But I got very bored standing out and work as guard, so I left my post and let the others who came with us do the guarding, and started looking around the shrine. And to my luck I met a lady who was wearing tattered clothes, and her body was full of wounds well rest can you ask from your mother. Akeno nodded and then asked, but why didn't you contacted me if you were alive? Why you didn't try to look for me? At this Shuri looked at Tatsaya with a glare and said, well after I was rescued by Tatsaya Tatsaya Chan, he offered me to work under him and manage his restaurants in Kyoto, while he promised me to look for my daughter, and he did so as well, but the amount of work that I have to manage there is simply too much to let me take leaves. Tatsaya just shrugged his shoulders and said, you have to work to earn your pay, and by no means your pay is low, is it Shuri-san? Shuri sighed and said, that is the only reason that I didn't leave my job. If not for it helping me to buy new toys to use at night, I would have already left. Tatsaya smiled and said, don't forget the protection that you are getting against those who still oppose you even after your banishment. Otherwise you would be back in the same situation. Shuri snorted and said, I truly want to deny that, but I know that it is true. Honestly I don't know how were you able to control those bastards from the family? Tatsaya just smiled and said, making a male see his little brother being cut over and over again, will make them fear a bit, and regarding the females, they all are obedient to the clan head. Seeing his smile both the girls shivered a bit and said at the same time, sadist Tatsaya looked at them with a dumbfounded expression on his face and said, you two are the last people that I want to call me sadist. Both of them just chuckled and Akeno said, don't worry Tatsaya kun, it only adds more to your charm. Tatsaya just waved his hand and said, yeah yeah whatever, let's get going to the class or we will be late. Tatsaya then dispelled the barrier around them and left for his class, leaving the other two behind. Akeno looked at her mother and with a smile on her face asked, so shall we get going? I will introduce you to my friends later. Shuri smiled mischievously and said, so you like Tatsaya-chan, huh? At this Akeno blushed a bit and said, ara ara, looks like Akasan caught me. 
Shuri nodded and said, well don't worry I have quite a good opinion of him. Just hurry up and let me play with my grandchildren soon. Akeno just chuckled and said, well who knows your wish might be granted soon. Ahh I am feeling hot just from thinking about the affair. Shuri nodded at her daughter and said, looks like you have been raised well, don't worry I will teach you all my ways of the bed. And after that both of them started chuckling. Meanwhile Tetsuya who heard what they were talking about through his telepathy, shivered a bit and said, crazy mother and daughter. Like hell I am into the ways of that masochist fallen. He then sighed and a small smile appeared on his face and said, well Atlas they were able to meet each other again. And then entered his classroom. When Tetsuya entered the class all the eyes were on him. All the students and those who came from their home to see them along with the teacher present in the class, were looking at him, and knittying their gazes Tetsuya did a small bow and said, sorry for being late sensei, there was a lady who was not able to find her daughter's class, so I was helping her. The teacher nodded his head and with a smile on his face said, no problem Tetsuya-kun, just take your seat we were just about to start the activity. Tetsuya nodded and then looked at the parents and bowed and said, sorry for this disturbance. And then went to his seat and sat down. The teacher looked at all the students in the class, and then with a nod said, Today in the class you all are going to make a sculpture with the paper match that we have prepared for you all. You can make whatever you like and put all the imagination that you possess in your work. The students who were sitting in the first rows stood up and started to distribute the paper match to the students in their respective rows. Tetsuya looked at his match for a while thinking what to make, and soon an idea came to his mind, and he immediately started to work on his sculpture. While Tetsuya was busy making a sculpture the girls from his group who were present in his class looked at him and thought at the same time, Heh, I will make a sculpture of Tetsuya, since I am sure that he is going to make a sculpture of mine as well, though he will make one for the others as well, but that doesn't matter, he will make one of mine, and that's what important. Tetsuya who was unaware of the thoughts that the girls were having was totally engrossed in making his sculpture, and was not even bothered to look at others. One by one the others were showing their sculptures to the teachers and their parents, and were getting praises, but suddenly the girls started making an uproar, making all the people present in the room focus on the crowd gathered around some students. Hamari, Asia and Kagura who were done with their Tetsuya sculpture, became the center of attention as the sculpture was made very well. It really does look like Tetsuya Kanya, those cold eyes that can make you shiver at one glance ahhh I can't take it anymore. And the said girl fainted with a stream of blood coming out of her nose. Chi, even his sculpture looks better than me, how the hell am I going to get a girlfriend? Yeah dude this is very unfair. Hey Himari-san, I am willing to pay for this sculpture will you sell it to me for 5000 yen? No if you are selling it then give it to me for 7000. 10,000, 12,000, 15,000, and the price kept on rising suddenly Tetsuya stood up from his seat and said, done. Hearing him all the girls looked at him and some of them asked, hey Tetsuya-kun what did you make? Yeah, show us. It must be something great. Tetsuya just smiled and said, well I don't know if this would be good or not, but I was curious about this for a quite some time, so please don't make fun of me. The three girls from the group had a smile on their faces and thought, heh, these girls will be left with jealousy, once they will see the sculptures of us made by Tetsuya. Tetsuya then smiled and took out the sculpture that he had made from behind him, and showed it to others, leaving all of them even his group completely speechless. What Tetsuya showed them was a chunk version of himself with a smile on his face, but that was not the thing that made them speechless, the thing with his sculpture was that he made wolf-like ears and tail on his body, while the sculpture's head was tilted cutely, making it look absolutely adorable. Tetsuya who was looking at his classmates waiting for their comments, but saw that none of them were saying something. Tetsuya was about to ask them when suddenly all the girls along with the ones standing among the parents, fainted with satisfied smiles while having a nosebleed. Heck even some males fainted as well. Dude, I don't know why, but my heartbeat increased for a while there. Yeah, I know the same happened to me. Both of them then looked at each other and slapped each other with all their might and said in unison, no, we are completely straight. All of the ones then started waking up, and all the girls looked hungrily at Tetsuya's direction, and one of them said, Tetsuya-kun that kind of thing does not suit you, give it to me I will take care of it. Don't listen to her Tetsuya-kun give it to me, that kind of thing will be wasted on her. You girls are very young to handle such stuff. Boy give it to this lady, here. Said someone from among the parents. Give it to me and I will let you have some fun huh, look what you speak you hag. Hoy, mind your town's little girl. Shut up hag, why the hell will he give this to you? Heh, you wanna have it the tough way? Please maintain the order of the class, we don't want to have violence now do we? Shut up sensei, can't you see the matter is getting heated up, go go, you can win this, beat her up, tear up her clothes till there is nothing left. You are recording all this right? Don't worry dude, I cannot miss a chance to see a violent strip show. Haha <laughs> we will have a lot of fun I the evening. Ha sensei what are you doing here? 
Shut up and focus on recording. Tetsuya looked at the scene of chaos in front of him and had a sweat drop. Some ladies were having a battle royal without any care for decency, while the men and the boys were busy recording this event. The remaining girls were looking at the said males with a disgusted expression. Tetsuya sighed and looked at his group along with Asami and Zenovia and said, let's get out of this class. All of them didn't say anything and just nodded and left the room along with him. After all of them left the class they soon meet up with rest of Tetsuya's group, and now they were all standing under a shade with Akeno and Ria's admiring each other's sculptures. I couldn't expect Ani-sama to make this. Yeah, I thought that he would make something like a sculpture of all of us, or something like that. Hey, the teacher literally said to make anything that comes to your mind, and this have been bothering me for quite a while, how would I have looked if I have animal features? Besides I didn't have enough match to make a sculpture of all of you. The girls only nodded and then looked back at the sculpture and said, well whatever this looks way better than any of our sculptures would have looked like. Yeah, it's kind of a first time to see him in such a state. Suddenly they all noticed a huge crowd running towards the gymnasium while something about a magical girl photo shoot. They all looked at each other and said in unison, she is here. All of them then hurriedly started running towards the gymnasium, and once they entered they saw a twin-tailed magical girl doing various poses standing on the stage, while the boys kept on taking her pictures. Suddenly Saji came on the stage and said, hey all of you stop this at once, and go back to your classes. Hey why are you here? Yeah, this is just a photo shoot. I am here on the behalf of the student council, and I have been asked to maintain the order here. Stop being a stick in the mud, man. Suddenly the atmosphere around them turned cold, and all of them heard a voice which sent a shiver down their spines, Oi, can't you hear what he said properly or are all of you deaf? Besides who gave you the rights to to take pictures of my girl? All of them then turned around and saw Tetsaya walking towards them with his hands in his pockets while looking coldly at them. All of them gulped and immediately fell on their knees and said, We are sorry about that. Tetsaya didn't release the pressure around them and said, listen here you bastards, I am giving you a total of 15 seconds to delete each and every picture that you have taken, and after those 15 seconds if I found any pictures of her, then Tetsaya didn't said anything after that, but that was enough to make them immediately start deleting the photos. After 15 seconds were up Tetsaya used his telepathy to read each of their minds, and once he was done checking them he nodded and said, now scram. And immediately all of them ran away. Tetsaya then looked at the magical girl and who was jumping towards him. Tetsaya caught her and smiled at her to which she smiled as well. But soon Tetsaya grabbed both her cheeks and stretched them with a bit of his strength and said, Nice to meet you Sarah, I missed you a lot. Now do you mind telling me what was that you were intention while doing poses which showed your panties to those purrs? Serafal who's had her tears coming out of her eyes looked at Tetsaya, who had no intention of leaving her cheeks anytime soon. Suddenly Sona came in the gymnasium and said, Wani Sama and Tetsaya. Tetsaya and Serafal looked towards Sona, and for a moment Tetsaya lost his grip on her cheeks, and taking advantage of that moment, Serafal immediately rushed towards Sona's direction, and his behind her back and said, So Tan, Tetsaya-chan is being mean to me. Sona shifted her spectacles and said, It must be your fault, because Tetsaya dotes on you a lot, even after how you usually act. Ugh, that hurts so Tan. No I didn't do anything. Huh, who was the one posing in front of those pervs? Hey I was only doing my job as a magical girl. Serafal tried to protest, but Tetsaya immediately glared at her and said, they were literally taking part pictures of your panties, there, and you are telling me that it is not your fault. Serafal immediately tried to hide behind Sona, but Sona had already moved away from her spot and was standing with Ria's and the others. Serafal tried to run towards them, but Tetsaya grabbed her shoulder and said, looks like I have to teach you a lesson about decency, I have no problems with you wearing a magical girl dress all the time, but you have to show some decency while you are at public. Tetsaya then dragged her towards a corner and started lecturing her, while Serafal was sitting in a seza while listening to Tetsaya. All the others were looking at the scene with amusement, and Sona said, if someone were to tell that a Mayu is being lectured on decency by a human, they will surely not believe it. She then paused for a while and said, but can't he make her stop wearing her magical girl costume in public? Hamari then said, that dress is her trademark Tetsaya would not do something that will make her change her originality. Sona sighed and said, I don't know whether to be happy about Tetsaya's nature or sad about one Isama's behavior. Sinan showed a mischievous smile and said, but you love that part of your sister as well, right? Sona started to blush and was about to retort, but before she was able to Serafal interrupted her and said, of course she likes magical girl costume that's why Serafal then waved her wand around Sona, and a few glitters came out of it, and immediately Sona's dress changed to a magical girl's as well. Haha <laughs> I brought one for Sotan as well. Tetsaya who saw Sona in a magical girl costume, nodded his head and looked at Serafal and said, nice job Serah. And showed a thumbs up. 
Seraphil looked at him for a while, and then turned away with a pout on her face, Tetsaya looked at her and gave a sigh. He then pulled her towards himself and gave a kiss to her. Seraphil immediately got back to her cheerful mood and kissed him back, and then separated herself from his embrace. All the girls standing there looked at Seraphil with a jealous expression, but suddenly Sona said, Hey how am I supposed to go out while wearing this? Tetsaya just smiled and said, Don't worry about the just say that it is one of my hobbies, and I made you wear this. Sona looked at Tetsaya and said, That will not solve my problems at all, Seraphil just smiled and said, Just say that I love my 1e-chan so much that I want to wear the same thing as her. Sona looked at Tetsaya and said, Fine this is your hobby, and you mad im wear this, let's go. Seraphil's face immediately became desperate, Hey what is wrong with saying that you love your 1e-chan? Sona glared at Seraphil and said, I would rather die than say something like that. Seraphil immediately jumped in Tetsaya's embrace and started crying, Tetsaya-chan, so Tan is being mean to me. Tetsaya looked at Sona with a blaming gaze and said, look what you did, you made her cry. He then looked at Seraphil and patted her head and said, there there, don't cry. Sona only shifted her glasses and said, HMPH, rather than wasting your time while crying, just change my clothes. Seraphil looked at Sona with an innocent expression on her face and said, I can't. All the girls looked at her with a dumbfounded expression and said, huh. Sona soon came back to her senses and said, what do you mean you can't? Seraphil still looked at her innocently and said, I mean if you want to put on something else, you have to take off the clothes you are wearing, and since you didn't take them off I already destroyed them and put the dress on you. All the girls who now headed her answer looked at Sona to see what would she do next. Sona then started panicking and slowly shifted her gaze towards Tetsaya, and with a smile in her face said, you should be knowing something to help me right my dear boyfriend. Tetsaya smiled and said, of course I can help you my beloved girlfriend. Sona then started to smile and was about to ask him to turn her clothes back to normal, but before she was able to Tetsaya interrupted her and said, just do the same pose that Sarah does and say I am the magical girl so tan. With a smile on his face. Sona immediately became shocked, and the rest of them started looking at her with an amused expression on their faces. Tetsaya continued to smile and said, hurry up, I am waiting. Sona who saw his expression gritted her teeth and thought, he is not joking. Sona clenched her fists and was about to do the pose, but Tetsaya interrupted her and said, oh and show a smile on your face as well. Sona who heard his request glared at him and thought, this damn bastard. Sona then smiled which kept on twitching because of irritation, and then started doing the poses that Seraphol does and said, I I I am the MM magical girl SS Sotan. With a very bright red blush on her face. Tetsaya just smiled and hugged her and said, su cute. Sona who was being hugged by him, started blushing more intensely and started pushing him away, but was not able to move him even an inch. She finally gave up after a while and said, now can you turn my clothes back to normal, I did what you said. Tetsaya just smiled mischievously and said, who said that you have to do this just once. Hearing that Sona froze up while Seraphol had stars in her eyes. The rest of the girls only looked at Sona with pity. After Sona was finally able to make Tetsaya satisfied he changed her clothes back to normal, while also storing her while performance on his phone. Sona who was now seen crying because of embarrassment was in Tetsaya's embrace and was being comforted by him. Tetsaya who has now started to feel a bit guilty for making Sona act like that, smiled wryly and asked, So Tan, I said I am sorry about that. But Sona kept on crying and asked, If you are sorry then why did you kept on doing that? Tetsaya just patted her head and said, you were just looking so cute that time that I couldn't help myself. That's all your fault for being so cute. Sona blushed at that and looked up and said, Baka. Tetsaya just smiled and wiped away her tears and said, you look quite funny with those puffy eyes of yours. Hearing that Sona got embarrassed once again and looked away with a pout on her face, making him laugh. Hearing him laughing Sona sighed and said, are you free right now, I have to introduce you to someone. Tetsaya looked at her with a confused expression and said, who? At this Sona averted her eyes and started playing with her fingers, my parents want to meet you and want to see how my fiancé is. Hearing that all of them got surprised, but before Tetsaya could respond Seraphil interrupted and said, you mean mam and dad are here? Sona looked at her sister and nodded her head making her sister tear up and said, you are so mean so tan you tell our parents about the open house, but not to me. Sona just adjusted her glasses and said, of course, I will tell them after all it is the parents who are mostly expected to come to the open house. Seraphil shook her head and said, no 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 so tan you should tell about your sister about all this, just like when you were young following me while calling 1e-chan 1e-chan, you should be just like you used to. Sona just sighed at her sister's antics and said, leaving that, Tetsaya will you come? Tetsaya just smiled and said, well yeah, I will have to do it sooner or later, so let's do it. 
Sona then looked at Seraphol and asked, Have you told them about our relationship with Tetsuya? Seraphol just nodded and said, Yeah, I already showed them the video of the game between you two and my relationship with him. Sona sighed and said, So that's how they come to know about him. One Isama didn't you promise that we will inform them together? Seraphol just snorted and said, If I were to leave that to So Tan, then we would have had a child before our marriage. That's how shy you are to tell them about him. Hearing that Sona became red from embarrassment. Tetsuya looked at Sona and said, So you feel ashamed to tell others about me, huh? Looks like I am not up to your expectations. Hearing that Sona started to panic and looked at Tetsuya and said, There is no way that you are not up to my expectations. It's just Sona became silent and covered her face with her hands. Tetsuya removed her hands from her face and said, He so tan is very shy. Sona remained silent for a while and then said, I hate you. Tetsuya hugged her and said, Love you too. Tetsuya was then separated from the Sona by the rest of his girls who pulled him back and looked at Sona and Seraphol, and Mayuki said, Now now before we meet them, there are some things that we should make clear, right? Hearing that Sona and Seraphol became serious and nodded and Sona said, Of course, we know the term of the agreement. Seraphol then said, We will not ask to become his first wife, as that position is already for Kurumi-chan. Hearing that the rest of the girls nodded but Miyuki snapped and said, Oi oi you should say, Miyuki-chan. But Tetsuya retorted and said, Sorry Mayuki, but that place is for Kurumi, and you know it. Mayuki looked at Tetsuya with a pout and said, Fine on Isama. But the second place is mine. Tetsuya nodded and then said, Well let's get going then. All of them then nodded and started walking towards the main building. Riaz who was walking beside Akeno looked at her and said, Akeno why are you being so silent all of a sudden? Akeno who was lost in her thoughts snaps out of it and said, Ara I was just making plans on how to cause an affair. Hearing that Ria's only sighed and continued to walk with everyone. Soon all of them were in the main building and were walking around to find Sona's family. Suddenly all of them heard a voice and turned around, oh, Isami. All of them turned around to see a group of people standing there and seeing them all of their lips twitched. In front of them was a group of eight individuals. Two men with red hair, one man with brown hair, one man with black hair and two ladies with black hair, but different hairstyles and one lady with brown hair. There was also a boy with them which looked around the student's age with brown hair, and seeing him Tetsuya immediately recognized him. All of them then walked towards the group and all of them bowed in front of them. Asami looked at the man who called her and said, Hey dad. One of the red-haired men who had a small beard looked at Riaz and said, So this is where you were huh, Riaz? Riaz nodded and said, Yes, father. Hearing that some of the girls in the group got surprised and looked at the man in front of them. Asami who was shocked by the information, looked towards the man with whitened eyes and said, Prez's father. The man looked at Asami and said, So you are Asami Hayuadu. I am Ria's father. He then looked at the others and with a smile on his face said, Thanks for taking care of my daughter. All of them nodded, and then Tetsuya looked towards the boy and said, Long time no see Asa. Hearing that all the attention got on the two boys and suddenly Asa realized something and said, Ah oh, if I remember correctly you are Shiba or something, we went to the same school before, right? Tetsuya just smiled and said, Yeah, I am honored that you remember me from that long ago. He then looked at Issei and Asami's parents and said, Nice to meet you as well Mr. and Mrs. Hayuadu. Both the parents just smiled and said, Nice to meet you again. Tetsuya-kun. Asami then went towards her mother and then whispered something to her, and seeing that her face immediately brightened up and said, Ara, so you were the boy Asami told us about Asami's boyfriend, who is quite popular among the ladies. Hearing that all of them looked at the girls standing behind Tetsuya and just nodded their heads. Tetsuya just smiled and said, Well what can I say? I am quite loved. Issei looked at the girls standing behind him and thought, Damn he even have his harem. Looks like it is easy to get girls in a school like this. Why didn't I get accepted here? Hearing his name the two black haired man and woman who were apparently Sona's parents came forward and started looking at him. Tetsuya looked at the two of them and with a bow said, Nice to meet you Mr. and Mrs. Shitori. Hearing him calling the two of them by their fake names both the parents got surprised, but soon calmed down and smiled and said, Nice meeting you Tetsuya-kun. My daughter have told quite a bit about you. Said the man. Tetsuya continued to smile and said, I hope that all of them were good things. The man just smiled and said, Yeah, in fact, I even stopped bothering to listen to what she was saying after a while. It looked like you had no flaws at all. Except the aura around him started to get a bit dark, and he said, looks like you are in quite a lot of relationships. While he continued to smile. Tetsuya just smiled as well and said, yeah, like I said, I am quite loved, and I am truly grateful for that. The man was about to ask something more, but her wife hit her head and said, darling don't you think that it is not a place where we should talk about such topics. 
The man who was hit by her wife pointed her finger at Tetsuya and said, but how can I expect someone who is having so many affairs to keep my daughters happy after he marries them? Hearing him all the parents and Issei got shocked and started looking around ready to apologize to the others for the disturbance, but stopped when they noticed that none of them were bothered by it and were confused. But soon the devils looked at Tetsuya who nodded his head, confirming that he had already formed a soundproof barrier around them. Tetsuya then looked at Sona's father and said, I don't think that this place is very appropriate for such chats, so why don't we go to my home and continue our talk there? Sona's father just grumbled and said, very well, but don't expect that I will let you have my daughters so easily. Tetsuya just nodded and said, try all you want. Making the black-haired man more pissed while her wife and Shuri just chuckled. He then looked at others and said, Mr. and Mrs. Hayuadu, why not accompany us as well, I mean we all have the similar situations, right? Both the parents then looked at Asami and nodded their head when they saw her blushing. Tetsuya then looked at Serzich's and his father and asked, and what about you Serzich's if both you and your father are not busy, so why not come to my home, and we all can have a nice long chat with others over a drink. Serzich's just smiled and looked at his father who nodded in response. Shuri who was not asked by him came to his side and tapped on his shoulder and said, what about me boss am I not invited? And chuckled. Tetsuya noticed how she tried to tease him by calling him boss in front of others. He smiled and said, of course you and Akeno are invited, after all you have a vacation for a week to spend with her. So you will be staying in the house if you have not made plans to stay with Akeno already. Shuri just smiled and said, well I was planning on staying with her, but can't she stay with me in your house? Hearing what Shuri said made Akeno brighten up, and she showed a thumbs up to her mother and thought, good job Akasan Tetsuya, who didn't find any problem with it, just nodded and then looked at the others and said, sorry for all that, shall we get going then? All the parents looked at each other and nodded and started following him. Meanwhile Issei was already dragged by his two old friends on their spy spot. After all of them were at Tetsuya's home, all of them were surprised on seeing how big his house was, Asami's parents were quite shocked on seeing it as they normally don't see a house this big. While the devils were slightly surprised by it as they have already experienced living in castles, but since they knew the fact that Tetsuya was an orphan, but still had such a house made her surprised. Shuri looked at the house and said, Tetsuya-chan can I buy such a house from the salary you give me? Tetsuya just smiled and said, maybe who knows, but I can guarantee that a house half the size of this will be no problem for you with half a year's salary of yours. Hearing that Shuri started thinking about something and said, looks like my job is not that bad, half the size with half a year's salary is quite a good offer. Tetsuya nodded and said, yeah it is, so make sure to do the work that is being piling up while you are on the vacation diligently. He said that and Shuri's brow immediately twitched and she said, you know I cannot enjoy my holidays if you keep reminding me about that. Tetsuya just chuckled and said, well as your boss I have to keep reminding you not to slack off. Hearing that Shuri looked away and thought, he is having revenge for earlier. Tetsuya then invited all of them inside and then made them sit in the drawing room where they started to watch the video clips that they have recorded. Tetsuya placed some bottles of alcohol in front of them, making the men extremely happy with the quality of the drink, while the women just sighed on seeing the antics of the men after they were under the effect of alcohol. Tetsuya's clone and the girls then went inside to prepare food for all of them, while Tetsuya was sitting in front of his would-to-be in-laws. Tetsuya looked at them for a while, and then both the men asked at the same time, do you truly love our daughters, or are you just playing around? Tetsuya looked at both of them sincerely and said, I truly love your daughters a lot, and I promise you not let any of them feel unhappy at any point of their life. At this the Citri head snorted and said, and what if we were to ask you to leave the rest of your lovers aside, or choose one over the other? Just as he said that a lot of noise of plates being shattered came from the kitchen. Tetsuya smiled wryly and said, don't worry girls everything is fine here. Tetsuya looked at the Citri head and said, a word of advice from me father-in-law. Do keep your voice down a bit for your own safety. He was about to say something, but suddenly he felt the aura of the girls they were releasing unconsciously coming from the kitchen and gulped his saliva bad, nodded his head. Tetsuya just smiled and said, about what you said before, no I am not going to break up with any of them till they themselves tell me that they are fed up with me. Do you have any problem with that? The Citri head nodded and said, even if I don't have a problem how can I expect that you will not just forget about my daughters if some new women came around. Tetsuya sighed and said, you can ask them this yourself, but I have never neglected any of them. Any of them have never complained about that, and I try to spend time with all of them. They are as precious to me as they are to you. Mr. Hayuadu then asked, and are you able to save them from any danger? Because concerning your looks and their beauty, they are bound to get in some sort of trouble by either yours or their admirers. 
Tetsuya just smiled at this question and said, Oh, don't worry about that Mr. Hayuadu. Firstly I think they are strong enough to handle around those pests, but if by chance there were to appear a cockroach who is very unwilling to die, then let's just say that you would not like to hear the details. He said and showed a kind smile, making all four of them shiver up a bit. Mr. Hayuadu then asked, Then what about taking care of all of them in future? Can you take care of all their needs and the need of the children you will have in future? Tetsuya smiled and said, that must be the last thing that you should worry about Mr. Hayuadu. My business is quite good, and you can rest assured that your daughter will not have any trouble in the future. If you any doubts we can go together to my office and I can let you have a look on how my business is coming along. Hearing that Mr. Hayuadu looked at him for a while and then his wife elbowed him from the side and said, don't you think that this is quite enough for you to ask, I don't think that he is a bad child, and Asami loves him, what's more do you want? Just accept it already. Mr. Hayuadu sighed and then a smile appeared on his face and he said, well I guess my Asami will be in your care son. Tetsuya just smiled and said, thanks a lot and I promise that I won't let you down father. Mr. Hayuadu nodded his head and then looked the Citri couple and said, well what about your decision Mr. and Mrs. Shitori? Mrs. Shitori just smiled and said, do both of you mind if we ask something to him in private? The Hayuadu couple looked at each other and then at the Shitaris, and then with a smile, nodded and left the room, and went back to the drawing room where Serzichas and Ziodicus were sitting. Just as they left the room Tutsaya immediately formed a barrier around the room, and Mr. Citri started releasing his aura in order to pressure Tutsaya. Tutsaya who felt the huge aura that the Citri head was releasing, smiled and then released a bit of his aura which immediately overpowered Citri's, and he started panting. Tutsaya looked at him and said, satisfied with my power. The devil looked up with difficulty, but was not able to say anything. Seeing that his wife got surprised and immediately said, Now now Tetsaya kun there is no reason to go that far, right? Tetsaya just nodded and stopped releasing his aura. He then looked at the panting Citri and offered him a bottle of water, which he gulped down in one go. He looked at Tetsaya with an amazed expression and said, You are packing quite a strength there. Tetsaya just waved his hand and said, Don't flatter me now. He then turned serious and said, I once again ask you to give me chance to marry your daughters. I promise you that I will never let any harm come in their way and will take good care of them in future. And bowed his head. Seeing him bow his head the Citri head sighed and said, raise your head. He then looked at Tetsaya with a smile on his face and said, I will let you marry my daughters, but make them sad even once, and you will have to deal with the whole Citri territory. Tetsaya just smiled and thought, if only you were to know the exact level of my power, then you would have not even thought of saying something like that. He then nodded and said, don't worry they will never be sad, in fact I promise to make them even more happier than their father ever made them. Hearing that Lady Citri just chuckled while her husband just glared at Tetsaya and said, you have quite the mouth son Tetsaya continued to smile and said, thanks a lot father. While both of them kept glaring at each other. After all the matters were settled and all of them were having a nice meal together suddenly Ziodicus looked at Tetsaya and said, Hey Tetsaya can mind if we have a little chat somewhere more privately? Tetsaya looked at Serzichas who looked back at him with a confused expression on his face. Tetsaya looked at Ziodicus and said, Sure why not Mr. Grammary? He then looked the others and said, Please excuse us for a while. And both of them then left the room and went to the drawing drawing room and sat down facing to each other. Both of them had a smile on their faces when suddenly Ziodicus put a barrier around them, on noticing which Tetsaya narrowed his eyes and asked, so what is it that you want to ask, to not only let a sound barrier, but also an entrance barrier places around us. Ziodicus just laughed and then said, you see Tetsaya kun a few days ago we received a notice from the Shinto faction about the rights that the Gremory had over this town being taken from them because of bad management. Tetsaya nodded and said, yeah, the territory was very poorly managed by her, so I had to take this decision. Ziodicus just smiled and said, I apologize on her behalf, but don't you think that everyone should get a second chance to overcome their mistakes? Tetsaya nodded his head and said, yes, I do believe in that ideology. Hearing that Ziodicus's smile widened and he was about to say something, but Tetsaya interrupted him and said, that's why I am giving myself a second chance to govern this territory. And showed a smile. Seeing his smile Ziodicus's lips twitched and he said, you have quite the sense of humor don't you, well let's get straight to the point here, what do you want in exchange to giving the rights of town to the Gremories? Tetsaya shook his head and said, sorry, I am not doing trade here. Ziodicus's smile disappeared from his face and he said, listen here, you are just a human, you should be happy that a devil much less a devil belonging to a high class family, is making deals with you. Tetsaya who saw the look on his face, also became expressionless and looked at him. Seeing the human's expression change Ziodicus widened his eyes and asked, what, you want to say something? Tetsaya just smiled and said, I seeing you I cannot help but say those three magical words. 
He then paused for a while and then lifted his fist. Fuck off asshole and showed the middle finger to the devil. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.